forward and chapter one of a glimpse of india this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org a glimpse of india being a collection of extracts from the letters of dr clara a swain first medical missionary to india of the women's foreign missionary society of the methodist episcopal church in america forward it was with extreme reluctance that the writer of these letters was persuaded to allow them to be made public her family and personal friends have carefully preserved them with the thought there might at some time be a call for their publication and the author has yielded to the entreaties of her friends to let the general public have a share in the pleasure of those who have so delightedly enjoyed them in private circles a favorable opportunity has occurred for them to be reread extracts made from the originals and arranged for publication it will readily be noticed that dr swain was devoted to her work not only as a profession but as a means of carrying the light and life of the gospel into the darkened homes of those to whom she ministered the contrast between the first and second part of her book is marked in the one she found a people ready to accept physical aid and not wholly unacquainted with the customs of foreigners and the religious ideas of the missionaries already among them in the other she was among a people who with regard to christianity were as barren in mind as are the waste deserts of their native province it required courage to enter upon work of any kind amid such uncongenial surroundings and unsympathetic people but the need was great and there were strong indications that the master had work for her to do among them who can doubt that this was god's own plan one may sow another may water but faith receives the assurance that god will give the increase c l r h part one barili india eighteen seventy to eighteen eighty five chapter one outward journey new york october thirty eighteen sixty nine my dear sister i am very glad to report my safe arrival in new york after my much dreaded journey i reached the city about noon and made my way to the mission rooms without difficulty where i met dr durbin and dr harris the missionary secretaries who gave me a hearty welcome and offered me any assistance i might need in packing or other arrangements dr terry took me to his home where i am to remain until we sail and i found mrs butler there waiting to receive me she wished me to go to passaic to spend the sabbath with her but i excused myself as i preferred to go to brooklyn however to my great annoyance the expressman failed to bring my trunk so i was disappointed about going to mr c s as i had intended i considered the detention of my baggage providential when at the breakfast table this morning dr terry told me that a love feast the one hundred and third anniversary was to be held to-day at the john street church and i must not fail to go i thought at first that my untidy condition would detain me but i could not afford to lose so rare an opportunity so i decided to go hoping that the exercises would be so interesting that no one would notice me perhaps you will remember that the john street church was the first methodist episcopal church in america 
it was organized with five or six members and they struggled through many difficulties in trying to erect their building but it was finally completed in 1766 it has been rebuilt once since that time it is a plain neat building and is called the stranger's church reverend mr corbett is the pastor the love feast was beyond description i can only say that it was glorious there were a great many old people present some of whom gave very clear and wonderful testimonies they sang old methodist hymns and shouted just as people used to when we were children i was greatly blessed and profited and could not help thinking what a precious place to spend my last sabbath in america among these fathers and mothers in israel and in the church which is the mother of all the branches of the methodist episcopal church of this great nation the president of dickinson college addressed the people at the close of the love feast he is a man of culture and deep piety his sermon was very appropriate for the occasion and seemed to come home to many who were greatly blessed and occasionally made the old church ring with their glory and hallelujahs in the afternoon there was a reunion of all the former pastors of the church and the aged ministers of the city it was interesting to listen to their experiences there was one minister present ninety-five years old whose testimony for christ was very encouraging for young christians it was a rare treat indeed and one which i do not expect to enjoy again in this world i trust that i may be counted worthy to attend the great reunion in the better land not only of ministers and people of our own church but of those of all nations who have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb monday morning dr harris tells me that he has engaged our passage on the steamer nevada which will sail wednesday morning november third bound for liverpool i shall finish my packing to-day in order to have one day of rest before sailing i have not yet seen miss thoburn my travelling companion she was expected on saturday and is probably at some hotel in the city or with friends i may not have time to write more than one letter wednesday morning and as i promised to write to dr green that letter will be for all of you liverpool england november seventeenth here i am safely landed in liverpool as well and happy as can be expected after a twelve days rocking and rolling on the ever restless ocean the weather was fine all the way and our gallant ship did its part nobly miss thoburn and i had a pleasant stateroom with two berths and everything provided for our comfort we left new york at half past two in the afternoon and after we had lost sight of the city we went down to our room to make all necessary arrangements intending to go on deck again and stay until we were out of sight of land but this pleasure was denied us we had not been on deck long before we were glad to hurry back to our room and make ourselves as comfortable as circumstances would permit there is no sickness to be compared to sea-sickness i will not try to describe it experience only can make one understand and appreciate it in all its phases the captain was disgusted with us he said if the voyage were two or three days longer he should be tempted to throw us overboard that he seldom had such a smooth and beautiful voyage and he did not see how any one could be seasick we were on deck every day but two going up early in the morning with our pillows and blankets and staying all day our meals were brought up to us and the captain was very kind and tried to tempt us with a variety of food we found some very pleasant people among the passengers 
Reverend Dr. Smith and Wife of Chicago, Editor of the Baptist Standard, Dr. Reed and Daughter of New York, and Dr. Newton of Brooklyn, one of the physicians in charge of the eye infirmary. He and his wife were going to Europe on their wedding tour. I found that Mrs. Newton was educated at the seminary in Canandaigua and was acquainted with many of my old friends. We had a very pleasant time talking about people, as Cousin Louis says. When we arrived in Liverpool, these friends asked us to go to the hotel with them, which we were very glad to do, as we found no one at the dock to meet us as we had expected. We arrived on Sunday, and the gentleman who had been requested to meet us did not receive the letter until Monday, so we were obliged to attend to our baggage ourselves. I had my two trunks and six boxes to look after, and the thought of having them all opened and examined was not pleasant, but the custom house officer accepted my statement as to the contents of my trunks, and after looking over my lists, passed them without giving us much trouble we had not been long at the hotel when mrs kelly sister to mrs butler of america called and invited us to her home to remain until the time of our sailing and we are now in her delightful home seventeenth this morning we received information that no steamer on which we could obtain passage to alexandria would live here for at least ten days so our stay in england will be thus prolonged we have decided to go to london to-morrow and spend a few days in seeing the sights of that great metropolis london november eighteenth how little did we think one year ago that this state would find me in this great city we arrived at half past two this afternoon and found dr and mrs smith our steamer friends pleasantly situated in a private boarding-house where they had also secured rooms for us they invited us to share their sitting-room and order our dinner with theirs and we already begin to feel quite at home nineteenth we were delighted with our journey yesterday the farming country is beautiful the farms look like finely cultivated gardens bordered with well-kept hedges and occasionally we caught a glimpse of a large house surrounded with trees and flowers which looked like a home of wealth and comfort we began our sightseeing this morning making our first visit to the tower where we spent two or three hours among the relics of the past we were admitted to three of the towers and were shown the place where lady jane grey was executed while there a company of highlanders came near and played a mournful dirge upon their bagpipes so weird that it was almost painful the jewel tower and st john's chapel each had interest for us leaving the tower we drove to the museum and spent the rest of the day there where we saw so much to interest us that we were filled with regret that our time was so limited twentieth to-day we visited the houses of parliament the buildings are rich and massive and there was much to admire you have no doubt read much better descriptions of the notable places in london than i can give you this afternoon we have been to city road chapel where mr wesley saw so many of those to whom he preached brought to christ everything about the place is held sacred the same pulpit is there which he used and it stands in the same place but i believe it has been lowered a little do you know that dr goodfellow a returned missionary who spoke at our farewell meeting presented me with a frame made from the wood of this pulpit dr durbin's picture was to have been put in the frame but it was not finished so it will be sent to me standing by the graves of wesley bunyan dr watts adam clark and others 
i felt like renewing my consecration and asking god to give me that love for his cause that spirit of self-denial which caused wesley to give up all that was dear to him for christ's sake how god blessed the labors of those earnest workers and gave them souls for their hire and how much better the world is to-day because they lived and labored for the salvation of souls twenty second i have about come to the conclusion that it is quite impossible to go out sightseeing all day and try to write my journal letter in the evening i am so tired to-night that i can scarcely think we expected to attend mr spurgeon's church yesterday morning but hearing that he was quite ill at his home we went to westminster abbey where we listened to a fine sermon from dean stanley and in the afternoon at st james hall we heard newman hall his subject was repentance and he made a most earnest appeal to the unconverted and to those who had grown weary in the work for christ the evening found us at city road chapel where we also heard an excellent sermon twenty third to-day we visited the crystal palace a charming place made beautiful with plants and flowers surpassing in color and variety any collection i have ever seen it would seem easy to be good in the midst of such surroundings a few hours stay among the tombs of england's kings poets and historians and a walk through the old cloisters where the monks used to walk and repeat their prayers ended our sight-seeing these cloisters are all that remain of the old abbey we returned to our rooms with grateful hearts for this unexpected and delightful visit to london liverpool november twenty sixth we returned to liverpool wednesday evening and are again guests in mrs kelly's pleasant home we have been down to see the steamer on which our passage is engaged and find that it is a small coal steamer with only one cabin for ladies in which are four berths everything looks clean and comfortable we have each purchased a steamer chair rug and a few other things for our comfort on the voyage we were told that the steamer would sail on saturday and that it would take seventeen days to reach alexandria only one lady besides ourselves has engaged passage mrs kelly and her family have made their visit so pleasant that it seems almost like leaving home again saturday twenty seventh mrs kelly's son accompanied us to the steamer this morning the officers are very kind and gentlemanly there is no stewardess or doctor a few gentlemen have come on board among them a young clergyman of the church of england who is going to india to officiate as chaplain in an up-country station he was accompanied by an elderly gentleman who seemed rather anxious about him and asked us to pay him some attention in a friendly way the lady who was to share our cabin has given up her passage mediterranean sea december tenth this is the first time i have taken up my pen since we left liverpool contrary to our expectations our steamer did not sail until monday the twenty eighth so we went on shore on sunday and attended church we have had a rough voyage so far but to-day the sea is more quiet and we are feeling better in the bay of biscay the waves washed over the deck and broke the skylight in so that the water poured into our cabin and we were deluged fortunately the things that we had taken out of our trunks for daily use had been placed in the vacant berths so they escaped a wetting but whatever was on the floor was thoroughly soaked our small ship rolled and tumbled but proved victorious over the great waves to-day we are gliding smoothly along and are really enjoying the sea we caught a glimpse of the snowy tops of mountains on the spanish coast 
and on the seventh we passed gibraltar the lion of the mediterranean fifteenth we have seen such lovely sunsets of late miss thoburn says they are worth our long journey seeing them gives us such pleasure early this morning we steamed into the harbor of malta and as soon as the ladder was lowered over the side of the steamer men rushed up on deck to show their wares there were various kinds of merchandise beautiful maltese and italian laces and the most exquisite jewelry we looked longingly toward the town and wondered if it would be safe for us to go on shore and presently the captain came up and assured us that we would have nothing to fear he engaged a boat and helped us down the shaky ladder and wished us a pleasant time we were met at the landing by an official guide who took us up a street which was all stairs with houses on each side all the supplies for the people on these hilly streets are carried up by hand the streets were full of beggars who caused us much annoyance until the guide drove them away we visited st john's cathedral the government buildings the armory and the palace gardens oleanders poinsettias and geraniums grow here very luxuriantly and are like small trees the making of lace and jewelry are the chief industries alexandria november twenty first we left malta on the evening of the fifteenth and arrived here early this morning as we have some hours to spare we are going for a drive through the city one of our steamer friends invited us to drive and we went quite a distance to see pompey's pillar and the obelisk called cleopatra's needle so the time has passed quite pleasantly while we are waiting for the train for suez steamer krishna red sea december twenty fifth while you are i trust sweetly sleeping we are floating down the red sea beneath a scorching sun fanned by arabian breezes i cannot realize that this hot day is christmas it seems too hot for the fourth of july even we left alexandria on the twenty first and crossed the country by rail to suez you will see on the map the part of the country of egypt through which we passed we crossed three of the branches of the nile the soil is very fertile and well cultivated though the farming is done in a very crude and ancient style we saw men ploughing with a long stick for a plough and a cow and a camel yoked together the people are very poor and miserable living in little huts of stone or mud we are told that they raise large crops but they are obliged to pay such heavy taxes that it keeps them very poor we saw large cotton and wheat fields and palm and orange groves loaded with ripe fruit which looked very tempting we arrived at suez at seven o'clock in the evening and were immediately surrounded by a crowd of arabs all anxious to get hold of our luggage the gentlemen in our company were obliged to attend to their own business and we stood among this crowd for nearly an hour trying to hinder them from taking our parcels one of the gentlemen came to our relief as soon as he could adjust his own affairs and took us to an english hotel where we met two young ladies who were sent out as missionaries to india by the united presbyterian board there were four of them who left new york the saturday before we sailed two of whom were appointed to egypt these ladies had just come from cairo in company with reverend mr ewing who lives there he was the first american gentleman we had met since leaving england and we soon made his acquaintance and were proud to introduce him to the english gentlemen of our company mr e seemed pleased to see us and regretted that we could not visit cairo we americans had supper by ourselves and after supper 
mr e proposed that we charter a boat and go down the suez canal which opens into the bay about two miles from the city it was nearly nine o'clock when we started the evening was delightful and so light that we could almost see to read mr e and our english friends discussed the question whether the canal would be a success or not and the former gentleman was very sure it would be while the others shook their heads doubtfully we saw some of the machinery which had been used in digging the canal it is very quiet along the shores now the houses which had been occupied by workmen are vacant and everything is at a standstill the company has used all its money and nothing can be done until another appropriation is made it is a grand work and has already given employment to hundreds of poor natives i believe that the building of railroads and canals and manufacturing establishments will do much to aid civilization the country is overflowing with people who are lazy and indolent and who will lie or steal to get a mere subsistence while some would work if they could get employment and were encouraged and taught i cannot help thinking that good practical business men who can teach these people would be most successful to us the great want in egypt seemed to be something for the people to do and we thought the same in malta we reached the canal and after sailing down it a short distance pronounced it a success and all joined in three cheers i wish i could describe to you the beauty of the scene as we sat in our boat just at the entrance to the canal the water was calm and as smooth as glass not a wave or ripple except what was caused by the slight motion of our boat at our right we could see in the distance the lofty barren mountains and the valley where it is said the children of israel camped before crossing the red sea the sight of the mountains suggested many thoughts and reminded us of their historical relation after seeing something of the country and the customs of the people we could imagine in a slight degree the appearance of such a multitude in their camp and we fancied we could see the women with their kneading troughs and cooking utensils upon their shoulders the women still carry the burdens we see them in the fields watching the cattle and the herds of sheep it was two o'clock when we returned to the hotel mr e left for cairo in the morning and we came on board the steamer krishna here we found mr ballantyne and wife the cousin of miss d whom she told me about just before i left home mr b goes to bombay to engage in the cotton trade and his wife is anxious to take up missionary work they are both young and very pleasant and companionable there is also a missionary and his family returning to india from scotland he is employed by the american board and has been in india eighteen years he gives us many words of encouragement i cannot tell you how glad we are to meet so many good people our company numbers eight and we have one end of the table to ourselves which is very desirable the rest of the passengers are english most of them officers and their wives we have had the christmas service read and no doubt we shall have a sumptuous dinner it is so warm i must put this away for the present end of forward and chapter one recording by Shanna Sayer, Fresno, California. Chapter 2 of A Glimpse of India from the Letters of Dr. Clara A. Swain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 2 Arrival in India, Bareilly, India, January 25, 1870 my dear sister when i laid my letter aside on christmas day i did not think that so many weeks would pass before i should be able to write again the latter part of our voyage was very rough 
and i was too sick to write and i had five sick ones to look after besides myself as there was no stewardess or ship doctor i cannot bear to think of the sea it treated me so badly we were met at bombay by rev mr bowen a missionary who took us to lunch and arranged for our journey up country we were detained at nagpur over a week waiting for our trunks mr thoburn who met us there was obliged to leave us in order to reach bareilly in time for the conference our trunks came at last and we left nagpur on the evening of the seventeenth of january in one of those delightful dak garis which mr coffin describes so perfectly in his book a new way around the world we appreciated his experience more fully when one of the horses lay down in the road and the men tried for an hour to get it up when they succeeded they left us alone in the conveyance while they went back three miles for another pair of horses all around us in the jungles we could see fires built by the natives to keep tigers away from their huts we made ourselves as comfortable as possible with blankets and shawls closed the doors of the conveyance and lay down for a nap weary and i fear a little discouraged but sleep came to our relief and when we awakened the men had returned with fresh horses and were hard at work trying to make them go we reached the government rest house at jabalpur toward night the next day just in time to miss the train fearing this might happen mr thoburn had made arrangements with the european family to entertain us and we were cordially welcomed in their home as there was no train we could take until the next day we had time to rest and visit the city many of the wealthy business men live on the main street the houses are gorgeous some of them two stories high painted with a great variety of colors and ornamented with pictures of idols and temples and queer-looking animals the merchants and grain sellers do all their business out on the verandas in front of their buildings they keep their goods piled up on the veranda and sit by them waiting for customers we passed several shops where men were making ornaments for the nose ears ankles and toes they would hardly be called jewelry as they are made of various materials some of silver some of lead and some of a very thin material of different colors which looked like glass the leaden rings for the ankles were very heavy it would be hard for some of us to raise our feet with such a weight attached to them in addition to these anklets the women wear an ornament on the big toe which looks as if it might be painful we saw men beating brass and making it into plates and drinking vessels and others making brown earthen vessels to hold water their methods of manufacture are very simple as well as their way of living we travelled by rail to Kanpur, which is one hundred and eighty miles from Barili here we left the cars and took a dak gari again but i am happy to say that the horses were more civilized and seemed to know their duty and two or three men could make them start but we had a great difficulty in getting anything to eat for there was only one rest house on this route and it was almost impossible to make the men understand what we wanted however by pointing and making various signs we succeeded in getting some tea and the bread used by the natives it was six o'clock in the morning and we had a hard day's travel before us and we wanted some food to take with us but did not succeed in getting any so we were obliged to fast until we reached barili when we arrived at the river ganges we left the gari and were carried across the river in small dhulis carried on men's shoulders 
the bridge of boats seemed rather unstable but we were taken safely over and were not sorry to find garis ready for us we saw men and women bathing in this their sacred river and met many more on their way to it many things that we saw on our way up country touched our hearts and led us to pray earnestly that god would make us useful to these people in teaching them of the true god and how to lead better lives we reached Parili about five o'clock in the morning january twentieth and were warmly welcomed by the missionaries by whom we were to be entertained and after a refreshing bath a few hours rest and a comfortable meal we were ready to meet those who had been anxious for our arrival the annual conference was in session and all the missionaries of our church in india were in bareilly with their families and we were soon introduced to them by our hostess the women shook hands with us and kissed us and all seemed to talk at once as soon as i could get a hearing i asked if there were any letters and five were brought to me life seems different to me already and i appreciate more than ever everything that is good and noble the words of love and good wishes and the many assurances in my letters that i am faithfully remembered in prayer are a great comfort to me and now that i have been brought in safety to india where i am to work for the master i feel the need of the prayers of my friends more than ever as i begin to realize what is before me and the expectations of the people concerning my work my faith and courage almost fail me january twenty sixth eighteen seventy conference is over and nearly all of the missionaries have left for their respective stations all seeming eager to get back to their work sunday could hardly be called a day of rest at eight o'clock in the morning occurred the conference love feast all the services were held in the orphanage schoolroom which is used as a chapel and at this early hour the room was full the testimonies were given in english and in hindustani some of the missionaries appearing to use the latter as fluently as the natives themselves though we could not understand what was said in the native tongue the happy faces of the christians who spoke and of the orphan girls who testified of christ's love for them and his saving power gave ample evidence that they understood the spirit of christianity the singing was all in hindustani and the hymns were certainly sung with spirit a hymn book was handed to me but though i knew the tune the words of the hymn were beyond me occasionally there would be short earnest prayers and a few verses of a hymn would be sung to a native tune in a most enthusiastic manner truly it was a blessed beginning of the sacred day eleven o'clock was the hour for the hindustani preaching service and the chapel was crowded bishop kingsley preached in english his words being interpreted by one of the missionaries we could understand every word of this simple but excellent sermon then followed the communion service and after that the native sunday school the opening exercises were conducted in the chapel then the classes retired to the small rooms coming together again at the closing hour there was a special service in the afternoon for the older girls of the orphanage which i did not attend as i wanted to rest a little before the evening service this was an english service and besides the missionaries quite a number of the english residents of bareilly were present notice having been sent around the station that bishop kingsley would preach weariness was forgotten as we listened to the forceful eloquent sermon uplifting in its simplicity convincing in its earnestness i could have listened for a much longer time 
a light supper was served at six thirty and then occurred the social missionary service of prayer and praise just the family of our father's children talking together of his loving dealings with them and of the sweetness of his presence and his care over them through the year just past i did not wonder that it was hard to close such a meeting though the hour was late conference week is the only time in the year when the missionaries are likely to meet one another some live in isolated stations where there are few or no europeans and even if there are european residents the missionaries are so occupied with their own work that there is not much time for social life so these annual gatherings are precious privileges in more senses than one we enjoyed the conference sessions very much we were formally introduced at the monday morning session and as the bishop gave us the hand of welcome the conference rose to greet us we were asked if we would say a few words but we did not detain the conference long with our speeches the missionary ladies met every afternoon to talk over their work and to estimate for the work of the coming year and these meetings were preceded by a delightful prayer service which was indeed a time of refreshing the conference adjourned on tuesday and miss thoburn and i received our appointments miss thoburn to educational work in lucknow and i to medical work in bareilly it would have been pleasant for us to be in one station but the needs of the work had to be considered my medical work really began the day of my arrival when i came out of my room in the morning i found a company of native christian women and girls eagerly awaiting the appearance of the doctor miss sahiba and with the aid of a good missionary sister i was able to understand their words of welcome and find out what i could do to help them as i had no medicines with me i procured a few simple remedies for their ailments from mrs thomas who has quite a little dispensary for she has been obliged to care for the sick in the mission compounds and the christian village as well as the girls in the orphanage i had fourteen patients that first day february fifth my dear m this is my third sabbath in bareilly the first sabbath bishop kingsley who was here for the conference ordained six native preachers the service was very impressive we were told that some of these men were obliged to give up their wives and children and all their friends when they became christians as then they break their caste and it frequently happens that a woman will turn against her husband or son when they change their religion last sabbath we had services in hindustani most of the congregation were natives and they all sat on the floor in the chapel and listened with great attention the sunday school exercises lasted until noon and there was preaching at four o'clock this is the regular order of exercises through the year i have just returned from sunday school and am glad to say that i have a class a few of the older girls in the orphanage understand english and mrs thomas has given them to me to be taught i understand scarcely a word of the church services so this sunday class is quite a boon to me i cannot say that i am disappointed in india i find it much as i expected except that the country is more beautiful i have a pleasant home here and find things very comfortable mrs t says that a number of girls are ready for my medical class and i am anxious to begin with them but may be obliged to wait some time yet for my boxes of books and charts it takes a long time to get things up from bombay i can scarcely realize that the ground is covered with snow at home while it is so warm and delightful here the peach trees are in bloom and so are the strawberry vines and the mango trees just now we have guavas oranges limes and a fruit called pomelo which resembles an orange and looks like a pumpkin growing on a tree 
this is their season for vegetables and we are having peas string beans lettuce cabbage and beets rice is much used here and we have it cooked in a variety of appetizing ways the mutton is good and we have beef fowls and fish occasionally mr t keeps cows so we have milk for our tea and coffee and the cook makes a fresh pat of butter every morning the cows in india give very little milk some people keep goats and buffaloes the latter give much more milk than cows and their milk is rich in butter the two mission houses and grounds are very pretty and pleasant the houses are one story high built chiefly of sun-dried brick plastered over and whitewashed and have tiled roofs they have wide verandas which add to the beauty and comfort of the house very little wood is used in building the floors are brick and are covered with coarse matting over which are cotton floor cloths stamped in neat patterns there is a fireplace in my room and on the mantelpiece stands my favorite vase filled with beautiful roses and sweet jasmine the gardener brings me fresh flowers every other morning tuesday seventh it is near sunset and as i look out through my open door i see dark-faced men dressed in white and different colors going home from their daily work some on foot and some in small conveyances drawn by a pony or a more pretentious one drawn by a pair of trotting bullocks the wealthier natives are usually carried in palanquins or in dhulis on men's shoulders there is a great variety of vehicles all strange to a foreign eye elephants are used considerably for riding and camels for carrying burdens we see them passing every day quite a number of native gentlemen have called to pay their respects as they say some of them have told me that they appreciate my having left my native land and all my friends to come here to care for their women who can never see a physician of the other sex i have had several invitations to visit some of their houses one day i was asked to see a sick person in the home of one of the richest natives in the city and when i came away the gentleman of the house handed me a gold piece worth eight dollars the news had quickly spread abroad that the lady doctor had come from america to treat the sick and that she would visit them in their homes or any sick ones might come to the mission house where they would receive attention and get medicine free of charge and men women and children came with ailments real and ailments fancied coughs and fevers being the chief troubles when i go to the city mrs thomas or a native christian woman who understands english accompanies me to act as interpreter one of my first visits was to the house of a hindu gentleman who had been among the first to call and pay his respects to me his family consisted of a wife and one child a boy six years old the pride of his parents and the joy of the household the servants were always ready to do what he asked and his every wish was gratified we were cordially received and after the usual ceremony of offering pan or bitter leaf and various sweet meats which etiquette required us to taste i turned my attention to my patient whose illness proved to be the result of a long-standing disease which in due time would yield to proper medical and hygienic treatment she seemed quite happy at the thought of being well again some time and both she and her husband assured me that my directions in regard to diet and the taking of the medicine regularly should be carefully observed i was much interested in the appearance of this native lady she was shy and modest richly dressed and seemed quite intelligent she had always lived in seclusion knowing almost nothing of life outside her own home she asked many questions about our dress our customs and our religious faith 
her husband has an office under government and is much more liberal in his views than are most brahmans he is teaching his wife to read and said he would like her to learn needlework if we could send someone to teach her which we will gladly do you may like a description of this native house on entering we passed through a small apartment used as a stable for the horse and cows and through a doorway which led from this into a square open court on two sides of which were open verandas with sleeping rooms back of them one of these verandas with its apartments seemed to be occupied by the servants and the other served as the sitting and dining room of the family a thick cotton rug lay on the floor and there were two small mats three chairs and a small table the gentleman received us and asked us to be seated and he then brought his wife and introduced her telling her to shake hands with us and bringing forward a chair motioned to her to be seated it is i believe unusual for a native woman to sit on a chair in the presence of her husband this honour being accorded only to the mother of sons in this case it showed a happy relation existing between husband and wife for the woman sat with uncovered face and showed no embarrassment even in the company of strangers we have visited other zananas and are invariably offered pan which i must describe to you a betel leaf which is pungent in itself is washed and on it is laid a little tobacco a morsel of lime some broken bits of the beetle or areca nut some cardamoms and one or two other aromatic spices and then the leaf is folded over into a three-cornered shape and fastened together with a small thorn it makes quite a mouthful pan is used by all classes of natives and by all ages as a digestive after meals the chewing of it gives a very unpleasant red colour to the mouth and lips but that does not detract from the pleasure enjoyed by the user it is always offered to visitors and we accept it but take it away with us and find a way to dispose of it End of chapter two recording by shena ser fresno california chapter three of a glimpse of india from the letters of dr clara a swain this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter three a favorable introduction february eighteen eighteen seventy my dear sister i enjoy my visits to the orphanage and am never happier than when surrounded by the little brown faces i enclosed the picture of a little orphan who has lately come and is waiting for someone to adopt her she is a bright little thing and is beginning to learn to adapt herself to school life this famine has brought in a great many homeless waifs the expense of supporting a girl in the orphanage is thirty dollars a year and she remains here until she is capable of becoming a teacher or bible reader or she marries the girls are taught to work and make themselves useful as well as to study much attention is given to bible study and it is pleasant to see what interest even the little ones take in it and how quickly they memorize i think if some of our good people at home could see these little destitute ones it would not be long before they would all be adopted by patrons in america the children gather around me and kiss my hand and get hold of my dress as if they feared that i would leave them they are very loving and affectionate every morning a little company of them in charge of a teacher or an older girl come to my room for medicine some with sore eyes some with a touch of fever or a cold some with a cough or sore throat 
all these little ailments are attended to but the little ones are in no hurry to leave and they frequently have something to tell which amuses and interests me february twentieth my boxes containing my library medicines charts and skeleton have arrived they were six weeks coming from bombay by train and by ox cart it seems like a fresh breeze from home to see and open them my trunk which a gentleman mistook for his was sent off to some place in the punjab but it has been returned to bareilly so i have now all my belongings and shall soon begin my class work there are fourteen girls in the orphanage whom mrs thomas has taken great pains to teach both in english and hindustani with a view to their studying medicine should the mission succeed in securing someone from america to instruct them there are three married women who were taught in the orphanage who wish to join the class so i shall have seventeen pupils twenty fifth i have had a number of patients from the city and a few from the christian village across the way this morning and i was asked to go over to the village to see a woman who was not able to come to the bungalow i found her lying upon her cot a string bed without either mat or sheet under her on the mud floor beneath the bed were some coals and hot ashes to keep her warm not a bad idea for such a chilly morning especially when one is suffering from a malarial chill it is interesting to see how these people make the best of their limited means and yet are comparatively comfortable a string bed a drinking vessel a large brass plate an iron plate on which they bake their unleavened cakes and the vessel in which they cook their rice or vegetables often comprise the whole of their earthly possessions you can see how much less trouble it is to them to move from one place to another than for us they bundle their goods together put them on the bed and the man or woman carries the load off on his or her head while the family follow on behind i often meet such a procession when i am on my way to the city i am learning a little every day of the language and customs of the people and the more i learn and mingle with them the more i see of the difficulties i have to cope with march sixth on the first of this month i began my medical class with fourteen girls from the orphanage and three married women two or three of the girls understand english very well so that one interprets for me as i give the lessons in my own language at present we take anatomy physiology and materia medica we meet every morning at six o'clock in one of the classrooms of the orphanage school building and spend from one to two hours on the lesson the skeleton which you remember astonished the liverpool custom house officer so much when he opened the box hangs near me one of the girls when she first saw the skeleton exclaimed oh miss sahiba how will this woman rise in the resurrection with her flesh in america and her bones in india i leave you to answer this question in your next letter two of the class are appointed each week to look after the sick girls in the orphanage and to accompany me when i go to the city and to the christian village some of them are very capable and will i trust in time make very clever doctors others will make good nurses and more careful mothers for having the knowledge gained here tenth just in front of the mission bungalow is a pretty little summer house in shape like the temple of jupiter in rome but of more perishable material covered with trailing vines we take our early breakfast a cup of tea and slice of toast here every morning before going to our work this is a necessity as we have a late breakfast after the morning work is over it was cool and pleasant this morning and after teaching my class and attending to the patients who had come to the bungalow i drove to the city to visit some patients in their homes mrs thomas and one of my class girls went with me 
after driving quite a distance through the main bazaar we turned into a narrow crooked street and came to the house where my patient lives it is not to be wondered at that there should be sickness in such unsanitary surroundings the woman is very ill and i fear will not recover she is young and has one child a boy about three years old her willingness to submit to treatment and take the medicines prescribed for her makes her case a more hopeful one than many that come under my care although a shut in she appears to be more intelligent than many of her class our next visit was to a high caste hindu family consisting of a man and his wife and five married sons the mother is a chronic invalid i fancy she has enough to do in trying to keep her five daughters-in-law in submission for they all seem to have ideas of their own each of them has her separate apartments and cooks for herself and husband there are no children in either of these young families we have made several visits to this house and the mother has taken quite a fancy to me so much so that her sympathies are really touched because i have no husband to-day she asked me if i would marry a hindu gentleman and said if i would she would find a husband for me she says that i am not bad-looking and she cannot see why i did not marry in my own country my answer was not a satisfactory one to her and she continued to wonder some of the young women are learning to read and to sing our hymns but the mother is not willing that we should teach anything that would disturb their faith or hers she is a very bigoted hindu and her rule is paramount in the home notwithstanding her severity she has some admirable qualities and her sons show her much respect on our way home we were called into a house to see a young mohammedan woman who had been growing deaf gradually for some time on questioning her i found that she had a very severe attack of earache about a year ago and that she had at that time applied some medicine on cotton to both ears examination of the ears showed a little ball of cotton encrusted with wax against the drum of each ear so that sound was perfectly obstructed these were soon removed and a more grateful woman it would be difficult to find she insisted on our taking pan and sweet meats this being all she could offer as she is a poor woman we reached home quite ready for our eleven o'clock breakfast a great sorrow has come to us mr and mrs scott and their two little girls were camping out in the district when elma the eldest about four years old was taken suddenly ill with diphtheria they brought her into barili at once and everything possible was done to relieve her but medicine seemed to have no effect and she passed away after a few hours her death is a great grief to the parents and to us all little ali is scarcely old enough to realize her loss only as she misses her playmate this is the first one among my patients whom i have not been able to benefit april eighteenth since i wrote you last barili has been honored with a visit from the lieutenant governor of the northwest provinces sir william muir who with lady muir was on his way to naini tal which is the seat of government for these provinces during the hot season the governor held a durbar or reception for the native chiefs of the rohilkand district and lady muir invited mrs thomas and me to be present and sit with her on the dais thinking that it would be a fine opportunity for me to be made known to the elite of the district as all the government officials native as well as european were present it was a pretty sight to look upon the fine-looking mohammedan and hindu gentlemen were attired in gold embroidered robes of satin or velvet royal purple bright blue green 
and even scarlet making a brilliant display while the delicate colors of their turbans added a touch of daintiness to the costumes each was presented in turn to the governor who made a pleasant remark as he received their salutation and then followed his official address in the course of which he said that the women of barili and the adjoining towns in their time of need would now have the advantage of a physician who could enter their homes which up to this time had been closed to the medical profession of the other sex then turning toward me he mentioned my name and said that he hoped that when the women and children in the families of the gentlemen now before him needed medical attention they would not fail to call in the lady doctor the nawab of rampore a mohammedan had come to bareilly to meet the lieutenant governor he arrived in a golden carriage drawn by fine horses with outriders followed by a retinue of horsemen state officials and servants the whole making a brilliant royal procession the next day sir william visited the native college and addressed the students and we were also invited to attend on this occasion the address was in hindustani and i did not understand it only as mrs thomas occasionally interpreted a sentence to me in the afternoon sir william and the nawab of rampore with his staff visited the girls orphanage the nawab seemed pleased with what he saw and heard especially with the intelligent replies of the medical class as i questioned them on the bones and muscles of the human body he said he did not know that girls could learn so much when he returned to his tent he sent a thousand rupees as a present for the orphanage lady muir called on us at the bungalow and invited mrs thomas and me to accompany her to the city to visit a widowed rani the rani told us that she had just returned from a pilgrimage to benares the sacred city of the hindus she is very devout in her way she treated us with much respect and as we were leaving a large brass tray of gold and silver coin was presented to us which offering we were expected simply to touch as we made our salam on the floor near by where we sat were trays of fresh fruit peaches figs melons and other fruits and at evening these were sent to our bungalow as a mark of respect we afterward visited the house of a wealthy mohammedan gentleman where we found two hundred and fifty women and children fifty of whom belonged to his household the rest were pupils of the mohammedan schools of the city who had been gathered here to be examined by lady muir we heard some of them read and lady muir questioned them a little and then distributed some gifts and gave them a nice little talk both sir william and lady muir are so thoroughly good and just toward all classes that their words are considered almost sacred it will be a great help to my work among native families to have been introduced by them in this way i must not omit to say that these schools in the city were all organized by this mohammedan gentleman who is deputy commissioner of the barili district twenty first the heat is intense and we can only go out morning and evening unless really obliged to this has been my lot a few times of late i have had a serious case which has caused me great anxiety for several days the patient is the wife of our bengali preacher who also teaches in the mission school she is only eighteen years of age one of the loveliest women i have ever met the day after the birth of her child she was taken with fever which continued for five days and seemed beyond control i worked over her faithfully and to-day she is more comfortable and i think she will recover i dare not leave her to a native nurse so i take the whole care of her myself except such little attention as her husband can give while i am visiting other patients 
calls for medical attention increase in number daily and nearly every day i go to the city both morning and evening i visit regularly in fifteen different zananas it is a trial to me not to be able to talk with the women instead of speaking through an interpreter i suppose in a way this first year will be my hardest year in india i have to study the diseases peculiar to the climate and country and their treatment keeping in mind the mode of life of the people which is not always favorable to the recovery of a patient end of chapter three recording by shena sayre fresno california chapter four of a glimpse of india from the letters of dr clara a swain this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter four first hot season barili april twenty five eighteen seventy my dear sister the hot season began about the first of this month and is now well upon us the hot winds blow from about ten o'clock in the forenoon till four or five o'clock in the afternoon and it is very unpleasant to be out of doors during this time but with the arrangements we have for cooling the house the wind proves a wonderful help fragrant grass mats are fitted into the open doors on the side from which the wind comes and these are kept wet so that the wind blowing through them cools the atmosphere and seems like a fresh mountain breeze and with the punkhas or fans swinging over us from the ceiling we are made quite comfortable all our work is done in the early morning of course and after breakfast we sleep on our dressing gowns and rest for an hour then write letters and i take this time to prepare my lesson for the medical class which i organized soon after my boxes arrived even these hot days are not quite long enough for all that i plan to accomplish interruptions come frequently for the native people do not mind the heat as we do and they think of something they wish to consult us about or someone is taken sick suddenly and their quiet is broken in upon yesterday a woman was led into my room by her ayah she had ophthalmia and both her eyes were so badly swollen that she could not open them after two hours treatment i sent her home rejoicing both eyes open and the pain nearly gone this is the month for cholera smallpox ophthalmia and other eye troubles occasioned by dust and the heat and glare and i have many patients to attend to in the evening i go to the city when needed or take a drive with mrs thomas through cantonments and out into the country these drives are very refreshing and just what we need after being shut in for so many hours in america we would prefer a brisk walk but in this climate one cannot walk far without getting very tired my walking is done in the early morning as i go among the sick in the compound in the christian village a number of patients came to the bungalow this morning and it was very late before i got through with them all and with my class which takes nearly two hours as i teach the lesson through an interpreter the doubt entertained by some whether native women would come to the mission house for medical aid is entirely removed they seem glad to come not only those of the poorer and middle classes but some from the most respectable and high caste families have come to us we greatly need a hospital and i scarcely know how to get along without one if our work continues to increase we could care for many more if we had a suitable place for patients to remain with us and it would also save much of our time and strength 
hospitals especially for women and children are much needed in india and if properly conducted might do much for their social and religious improvement as well as for the relief of their physical suffering in talking with a native gentleman a few days ago he remarked such homes for the sick are just what we need native ladies would not hesitate to go to a hospital superintended by a lady physician and i am anxious that the first one should be in barili was not this encouraging may eighth we have just received the sad and startling news of bishop kingsley's death at beirut of heart trouble the date of his death was not mentioned but it was probably more than six weeks ago dr bannister was with him so much news of this kind has come to us of late that we ask ourselves who next bishop kingsley's wise and gentle administration at the conference and his strong and earnest sympathy and valuable counsel endeared him to the missionaries and his sudden translation has cast a gloom over us all his great interest in our work led the missionaries to expect much from his report at home of the needs of the mission but god's ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts than our thoughts july twentieth the rainy season began about a month ago the first few showers were very refreshing after so many weeks of intense heat the scorched brown lawns are now a beautiful green and all nature seems to have sprung suddenly into new life i have never seen it rain as it does here it comes in torrents one day as i was coming home from the city i was caught in a rainstorm and the carriage box was soon filled with water and i found myself in an impromptu footpath shoes and stockings as well it was a warm day still my wetting resulted in an attack of rheumatism which laid me aside for a time the rain comes down heavily for a few hours then the sun shines and it is hot and steamy just the kind of weather which makes one feel that even a grasshopper is a burden the rainy season lasts until the end of september which is considered the most unhealthy month of the season because of decaying vegetation creating malaria barili is noted for malarial fever the side streets in the city and many of the native houses are so unsanitary that it is a marvel that any escape fever many europeans especially the families of government officials spend the hot and rainy seasons in the mountains the station looks quite forlorn so many houses are closed and so few people are out for a drive in the evening my work goes on as usual as my practice increases i find my room in the mission house quite too small and inconvenient for the morning clinics and the homes of the poor where i am called to attend the sick are so utterly destitute of comforts of any kind that what little i can do for them seems of very little use i long for a clean comfortable place near me to offer them our need of a hospital grows each day more urgent but where can we purchase suitable grounds on which to build and will the society furnish the necessary means are questions to be considered october twenty eighth my dear dr green i must write you a few words this morning to tell you how much i enjoy your letters whenever you want to do a real missionary work just write me a good long letter i never knew the value of letters until i came to india we are seeing good results from our visits in the zananas a bengali woman who has been a patient of mine for some time asked us to bring her a bible in her own language and she is so much interested in reading it that she says she does not like to do anything else the last time we went to see her she whispered to mrs thomas 
i like that book so much and i want you to explain it to me and tell me more about your religion we expect her and her sister-in-law a widow to visit us this evening she sent me word that they would come in a closed carriage at nine o'clock i shall send all the men servants away from the house as these are poor the women and must not be seen outside of their home we hope and trust that these women are truly seeking the truth another patient said to us i wish there was only one religion in india then we could all eat together without breaking our caste the women often give us food and sweetmeats but they would not eat a morsel of their own food with us nor allow us to touch one of their dishes or drinking vessels the bengali woman who asked for a bible is intelligent and if she becomes a christian she will be capable of doing something for others but there are many who do not quickly comprehend our teaching and others are indifferent if you were to look into my room you would see the tiniest baby on my lounge which i have had here for a week it was so feeble and puny that i had no hope for its life the mother was very ill and had no nourishment for it and we have kept it alive by giving a few drops of milk at a time and now it really seems that it will live i promised the mother that i would adopt the baby if she did not get well but both she and the baby are now in a hopeful condition i need not tell you how much i want to see you and how many times i wish for you when i return from my sick patients how it would cheer me to find you in my room waiting to hear the result of my visits and give me some advice i cannot tell you how hard it is to practice medicine here alone december twenty sixth eighteen seventy my dear sister as the year draws to a close i am interested in looking back over the months of service for the master and i feel grateful to god for what has been accomplished while many have been relieved from suffering we have the hope that some among our patients have become thoughtful about their eternal interests i find that in this my first year in india i have visited seventy different families in the city and adjacent villages with two hundred and fifty visits in the homes of my patients besides prescribing for twelve hundred and twenty-five patients at the mission house in many of the families we have read the bible and other religious books and have conversed freely with the women some of whom are learning to read it has been impossible to give regular instruction in all the zananas where we have been asked to teach as our number of helpers is so limited so we have followed the plan of reading a portion of scripture and explaining it in the presence of the family of each patient as we had time and opportunity in this way we have succeeded in interesting the women and opening the way for friendly talk and inducing some to learn to read and think for themselves barili january eighth eighteen seventy one my dear sister your letter of june eighth reached me after a three months journey and the one dated august twenty eighth has come to-day quite unexpectedly as this is not home mail day home letters are very welcome no matter how often they come i am trying to arrange my work so that i can go to lucknow to attend the annual conference on the twelfth of this month we are having delightful weather the roses and other flowers are in full bloom and the orange and lemon trees are laden with ripe fruit i have been to the english church this evening and heard an excellent sermon when i get hungry for a sermon i go there for our services are all in hindustani and i do not yet understand that language Barili is a military station with several regiments quartered here 
and there are also many civilians so the chaplain usually has a good congregation the reverend william taylor is now in lucknow you have heard of his marvelous success in australia and ceylon he is holding meetings in lucknow which are well attended by the natives he preaches through an interpreter and has such a simple way of explaining the scriptures that the people seem to have little difficulty in comprehending his meaning there have been several conversions mr taylor intends to remain in india two years preaching in the different stations so we shall have him here in bareilly some time christmas was a very enjoyable day we did not have snow for a sleigh ride but there was keen sharp air and plenty of dust there was a morning service and then came the festivities i had a number of presents from my patients chiefly trays containing nuts oranges raisins pomegranates native sweetmeats and trays with boxes of white grapes the natives do not of course observe the day but they understand that it is a holiday with us our servants expect presents from us as much as do children in america and it is the custom among europeans in this country to give those who serve them new garments or money to use as they like there was a christmas tree in the orphanage schoolroom the evening before and at eleven o'clock christmas morning we had hindustani service for the native christians and christmas cards and little books were given to the sunday school children january twentieth our conference in lucknow on the eighth was a season of much interest miss thoburn and i had not met during the year and we were glad to be together again we had a good visit and of course had an experience meeting telling each other of our trials and troubles just as you and i used to do we had some pleasant things to rehearse as well reverend mr taylor was at the conference and gave several very inspiring sermons mrs mesmore writes me that the work begun by him in lucknow continues the conversion of a leader of the brahmo somaj has created great excitement among his people he is an educated man and has great influence among his sect six months ago he secured the closing of all the zananas in lucknow against the missionaries and now he is the first to open his own to them the work is chiefly among eurasians many of whom are educated and speak both english and hindustani which is a great advantage as they do not have to wait to learn the language before they can take up christian work february twenty second mr taylor has spent a week with us and held meetings in the orphanage and the christian village several girls in the orphanage were converted and many members of the native church were greatly blessed under his preaching he also had meetings in the home of a eurasian gentleman who with his whole family was converted mr taylor is a second saint paul he says he fully believes in the pauline method of doing the lord's work going from house to house and gathering the family together and talking to them about jesus not christianity methodism or any other ism but just telling them what they must do to be saved i could not help thinking as i heard him preach and explain the scriptures what a glorious thing it is to be taught of the spirit and to be a child of god his two years in india will no doubt result in the salvation of many souls march seventeenth my work in the city increases in interest i notice quite a desire for improvement many more of the women being anxious to learn to read and sew and some earnestly inquiring about our religion and asking me to explain it to them 
we had a very interesting visit yesterday in one of the zananas where there was a young married woman a girl about ten years old and two quite old women the young woman had been ill for some time and two weeks ago she sent for me we have become quite well acquainted by this time and i ventured to ask her about her idols and manner of worship then i told them about the god we worship it was good to see how interested the two old women were as my companion explained the way of salvation one of them said you speak good words just what i have been longing to hear they seemed quite disappointed when i said to them that i should be away for a short time but i told them that mrs sheehy who was with me would come to see them and would bring books to read to them and would tell them more about our religion nearly every day we have some interesting visits mrs sheehy who now accompanies me in my visits to the city is a european woman who was born and educated in india and she understands the language and customs of the natives she is an earnest christian and a true missionary at heart so my work is much more satisfactory to me since she has been with me april thirtieth it is the custom here for native gentlemen to call on foreigners to pay their respects and i have had a number of such callers they do not allow their wives to come to see us for they live in seclusion but when we go to their houses the gentleman receives us and does the honors at first the woman sits on a mat in a corner while her husband is with us she keeps her face covered and seems more like a shy kitten than a human being but after a few visits she loses some of her shyness and when we are alone sits on a chair or stool and uncovers her face and talks freely with us i take special pains to tell the husbands about our customs and that i think it is a great pity that they keep their wives and daughters in such ignorance always shut up in their houses and never allowed to see the beauties of nature i can see a change in the feelings of some of these men and have persuaded two of them whose wives have been my patients to allow their wives to visit me the poor things were very uneasy everything was so new to them and they were so much afraid that some man would make his appearance the husbands walked the veranda all the while the women were within lest some one should come or get a glimpse of the women through the blinds though they were tightly closed the women went from one room to another and asked questions like little children about everything they saw we took great pains to show them our needlework and to explain the pictures and books to them it is quite an accomplishment to be able to entertain native ladies nicely some of them are very simple-hearted and lovely and one feels like taking them to one's heart as one would a little child while they have the stature of an adult they really seem like children june tenth you will be glad to know that i have an arrangement which makes my work a little easier because i can have some of my cases which need special supervision near me there is a small house in the compound which was built some years ago for the native pastor but which has not been occupied of late and mr thomas has had it put in good order and has placed it at my disposal to use for patients who are brought to me from out stations there are three rooms in it which will serve our purpose nicely and who should come this morning to occupy the first room but abraham and sarah abraham is a converted jew a merchant who on one of his trips from damascus heard the gospel preached in india and accepted christianity sarah his wife is the daughter of a native minister who was formerly a hindu idolater 
she is ill with fever and her husband will remain here with her until she recovers she is a bright young woman and has a fairly good education and is doing good work as a bible woman in the village where they live twelve miles from barili i have had several new patients at the mission house this morning some of them interesting cases this is a busy time with us all and every moment of my time seems occupied end of chapter four recording by shena sayer fresno california chapter five of a glimpse of india from the letters of dr clara a swain this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter five a visit to the hills almora september ninth my dear sister i left barili on the tenth of august for almora and was nearly a week in getting here although the distance is only ninety-six miles i came to help care for one of our missionaries who came to the mountains in search of health for a time he seemed to improve but about the last of july he began to fail and he begged mrs thomas with whom he was boarding to send for me thinking that i might help him i took one of my servants with me about thirty miles then sent him back with my conveyance and trusted myself completely to the natives travelling all night in a dolly carried by four men at a time changing the men every eight miles it took three horses and thirty-five men to carry me sixty miles we were thirty-one hours getting to the foot of the mountains there i found fresh men sent down from naini tal by the missionaries with a letter directing me how to proceed on my journey i reached naini tal all right and received a hearty welcome from some of our missionary ladies who are spending the season there naini tal is eight thousand five hundred feet above sea level it derives its name from the goddess of the lake naini and is a favorite summer resort the scenery is fine the trees are covered with ferns and mosses of every shade of green it is said that there are one hundred and twenty varieties of ferns growing in the station i was detained two days by the heavy rain but was at last able to move on this time in quite another style of conveyance it resembles a chair with a canopy and has a pole on each side with a sort of harness at each end which goes across the shoulders of the men who carry it four men carry it at a time and besides these carriers i had a man to carry my trunk on his back another with my roll of bedding on his head and the third carrying a satchel while a servant whom mrs thomas had sent to escort me walked beside my conveyance i could not help laughing as i looked at my caravan though it was no laughing matter to set off in this way for a journey of twenty-four miles through the mountains some of the ladies thought it very brave of me to start off alone but i had no particular fear as i knew that other ladies had taken the journey alone with perfect safety the first day we marched twelve miles and reached the government rest house just at evening it is a lone bungalow standing on a hill with a dozen native huts near it the men had arrived before me and had made a fire in one of the rooms and spread my bedding out to dry and presently the cook came in with the roasted chicken and hot potatoes so with the lunch which one of the ladies had given me i fared sumptuously i tried to shake off all fear and enjoy the mountain scenery around me but i could not forget how powerless i was with not a white person within miles and not even a christian native near me so far as i knew 
after dismissing the servants for the night i committed myself to the tender shepherd who watches his flock by day and by night and lay down not to sleep but to think such a feeling of desolation i never before experienced the first dawn of the morning was heartily welcomed and i was not long in making myself ready for another day's journey at seven o'clock we started on our way travelling through such beautiful mountain scenery that my delight quite overcame my fear we did not meet with any adventures except that a cow which had travelled some distance just ahead of us fell over the precipice and went rolling and tumbling down until she reached the bottom we were some distance from her when she fell and supposed she would be killed but to our surprise she got upon her feet and looked up at us most wistfully the men were greatly pleased and said much in her praise they consider the cow a sacred animal and pay her great respect we reached the second rest house at noon and found that two of mrs thomas servants had been sent to meet me with a lunch they said that fresh men would meet me at different points and that if we hurried we could reach almora before night so after a short rest we again set out i found mr elliot prostrated and too far gone to need much medical assistance he lived only two weeks after i came he was a young man of considerable talent and was beloved by all the missionaries two years ago he came out to india for his health and was so much benefited by the sea voyage that when he reached calcutta he was to all appearance well in lucknow he met our missionaries and became interested in the work and joined the mission doing good service until the beginning of the hot season when he began to lose his appetite and grew weak every day later he was out in a heavy rain and took cold which settled on his lungs and ended in quick consumption he is buried in a quiet little cemetery near the mission houses almora is entirely surrounded by mountains not a spot of level ground in sight only as it has been made so most of the mountains are treeless and are terraced from summit to base these narrow terraces are cultivated and wheat rice and other grains and some vegetables are grown the mountains look like great walled staircases with here and there a little hut nestling upon them we get a fine view of the snowy range from here which looks near but is a hundred or more miles away i wish i could give you a description that would cause you to see them imagine if you can a dozen or more mountains of silver reaching nearly to the heavens piercing the gold and crimson clouds of an eastern sky and glistening in the rays of the sun some are cone-shaped and some pyramidal in shape the hindus bow down and worship them when they come in sight of them and indeed i do not wonder at it the first good view i had of them my admiration amounted almost to worship the hill people are much stronger and more active than the people of the plains and they live more comfortably their houses are built of stone and many have little gardens which gives them a home-like appearance the women do not live in seclusion the state of society in india is such that zanana life seems preferable for respectable native women it is really not safe for them to go out alone the london mission occupies almora as a mission station their missionary the rev mr budden has been here thirty years he has a small native church a boys school and a leper asylum and his eldest daughter has an orphanage for girls a number of whom are children of lepers many of them are bright children but they bear the marks of the disease from the doorway where i am writing i see men and women coming to the little temple below us to worship it is the temple of the god shiva the destroyer 
the poor creatures seem very earnest in their devotions i will enclose a silver fern which i picked from the walls of this ancient temple we have had many pleasant rambles over these mountains have been to the top of simtola haridunga and kalamiti this last name means black earth and haridunga means the diamond mountain we had a search for diamonds there and on simtola and found some fine specimens of clear crystal quartz but are not so sure about the diamonds we leave here on the twelfth for naini tal on our way to the plains there are five of us and we shall need sixty men to carry us and our luggage we will march five miles and then camp for the night we are anticipating a pleasant journey travelling slowly and gathering ferns and flowers and picnicking by the way we have each a large book made of blotting paper for pressing our ferns i feel anxious to get back to barili for i did not expect to be away more than three weeks my girls write me that they are doing well and everything goes on nicely they visit my patients with my interpreter who is a woman sixty years of age and she takes great care of them barili september twentieth home again in barili and busy as usual as our work increases our needs increase also and i feel that i must have a hospital and dispensary the most convenient and suitable place adjoins our mission premises and is owned by the nawab of rampore a mohammedan prince but it will hardly be possible to purchase this property as i am told a mohammedan ruler never sells landed property that belongs to his inheritance mr drummond the commissioner of barili is much interested in our medical work and has been looking around to see if a suitable place is available and has finally suggested that we make a personal request to the nawab respecting this property which adjoins ours mr drummond has learned that the prime minister of the nawab will soon come to barili on business and he says he will speak to him about the property and find out from him if he thinks we might present a request for the purchase of the property if we could secure one acre of this land it would meet our need twenty seventh we are informed today through the prime minister that the nawab invites us to visit his city and that he will arrange for our journey to rampore if we will notify him what day we would like to come this looks favourable for the nawab knows our object in wishing to see him october eighth on the morning of october third our party consisting of mr and mrs thomas myself and the native christian gentleman a convert from mohammedanism who understands royal etiquette set out on this important business having previously notified the prime minister of our intention he had made all arrangements for us a fine carriage with coachman two grooms and outriders and twenty-four horses were supposed to be necessary to convey us into the domains of eastern royalty the horses were changed every six miles for doing duty at once and as we approached the city three cavalrymen met us to escort us to our stopping place which was a house just outside the city kept by the nawab for european visitors and travellers breakfast was awaiting us and servants stood ready to give any needed assistance mr and mrs parker of our mission had come from moradabad to meet us arriving some time before we did our breakfast consisted of twenty-four different dishes to which we did ample justice our long drive having given us good appetites our surroundings the expression of our hopes and fears 
and above all our faith and confidence in him who has assured us that he will withhold no good thing from those who trust in him may the hour at the table one long to be remembered after breakfast we knelt in prayer asking our father who had opened our way thus far to still be our leader and not only grant what seemed so necessary for our work but to remember this earthly prince and his people who were at that hour engaged in the worship of their own faith when the nawab received news of our arrival he sent a messenger to say that he would not be able to see us that day as he was especially engaged in his prayers for our entertainment he sent two music boxes and some trained athletes who performed some wonderful feats then came a play a burlesque on english officials which not only showed their power of imitation but their keen appreciation of the foibles and defects of others after dinner two carriages were sent to take us for an evening drive to a country palace where the nawab spends a part of his time during the hot months just in front of the palace is a beautiful tank of clear fresh water this to me with the fine trees and beautiful garden was more attractive than the palace itself the next morning early the carriages were sent for us and we were driven to several palaces and gardens before reaching the royal palace as we entered the gates five royal elephants gaily caparisoned saluted by lifting their trunks and touching their foreheads we were escorted into the presence of the nawab who arose and greeted us cordially and assigning us seats entered into friendly conversation after a few minutes the prime minister advanced to his highness and spoke in a low tone and he signified his assent to the words upon which the prime minister turned to mr thomas saying that the nawab would listen to his request mr thomas said that he wished to procure on some terms a portion of the estate belonging to his highness which adjoined our mission premises in barili for the purpose of establishing a hospital for women and children before he had time to finish his speech the nawab said take it take it i give it with pleasure for such a purpose we were unprepared for so generous a gift forty acres in the house and were not a little surprised at the nawab's immediate and hearty reception of our request and we accepted the gift with gratitude not to this prince alone but to the king of the universe who we believe put it into his heart to give it to us our interview with the nawab was a short one soon after the matter of business was over he arose bowed to us and left the room the prime minister showed us some of the apartments of the palace which were beautifully and tastefully furnished and arranged but to our regret we were not invited into the women's apartments december twenty second you can perhaps imagine the joy and gratitude of our missionaries when they heard of the generous gift of the nawab forty acres when we had hardly dared hope to be able to purchase one some of the native gentlemen of the city were very much pleased too and promised assistance so i resolved to circulate a paper stating our plans and asking for contributions and i shall be able to report to conference that i have seven hundred rupees subscribed from native people the house on the estate is old but well built and needed some repairs to make it suitable to live in the nawab expected us to use this for a hospital but the style is unsuitable for native ladies with their ideas of seclusion so we have decided to use it as a home for single missionary ladies and their assistants and to build the hospital more on the plan of a native house our repairs are nearly completed and we hope to take possession of our new home soon 
january twenty two eighteen seventy two my report of the work of the year past and the good news of the success of our undertaking in the matter of the hospital encouraged the ladies of our conference to estimate for the amount necessary to begin our buildings feeling sure that the society in america would respond to our request for the money the building committee sanctioned the plan which i laid before them a plan which with the assistance of a native architect i had worked out as suitable for the use intended materials for the dispensary are being negotiated for and we shall begin to build as soon as possible it will contain six rooms a clinic room where patients will be received and prescribed for an operating room back of it an office in the right wing a room on the opposite wing designed for a lecture room when i have another medical class and two small bathrooms this plan seems to me quite complete and suitable for the purpose for which it is designed end of chapter five recording by shenna ser fresno california Chapter Six of A Glimpse of India, from the Letters of Doctor Clara A. Swain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Six, Busy Days, Bareilly, India, March Three, eighteen seventy-two. My dear Doctor Green, I am writing in our new house, the King's Palace, as Doctor Butler calls it miss sparks and i moved in on the first of january and were nicely settled before conference which was held this year at moradabad mrs h one of our missionaries came here on the fifteenth of january from budaon and her baby a nice plump boy arrived on the thirtieth of the same month the dear little baby was baptized in our drawing-room this evening the missionaries living here in the station and a few native christians were present and it was a deeply interesting occasion after the baptism we had tea together then mr jude gave a short exhortation and prayed for each one of us and for the great work in which we are engaged mr jude and his wife take the charge of the orphanage this year and miss sparks conducts the educational department the lord was with us at the conference all the missionaries seemed thirsting for a deeper experience and many were blessed and returned to their work with greater love for it and for the salvation of souls we are having good meetings here and a few have professed conversion i have received such a good letter from a bengali gentleman whose home is in bareilly he went to calcutta on sick leave for a few weeks and left his family in my care during his absence he had twice come to us in great distress of mind and asked us to pray for him but he was not willing to acknowledge christ as the son of god and saviour of the world just before he went away he called and asked me for a history of the christian church he said he would take with him the bible that i had previously given him and would read it daily he writes that he is now reconciled to god that the society of brahmans and hindus and his conversations brought him no relief and he turned to the word of god his wife has been convinced of the truth for many months i carried her husband's letter to her and explained it and asked her if she was willing to follow her husband the tears filled her eyes as she said i do not like to leave my mother i am her only child turning to the mother who is a widow i asked are you not willing to become a christian too and all walk together you believe that your idol worship will save you but the religion of christ will certainly be sufficient for you
she has been a very devout hindu fasting worshipping and denying herself as is required of widows her remarkable faith and earnestness have led me to respect and admire her and i have often felt that both she and her daughter would make excellent christians the mother waited a moment then said if christianity is good for my daughter and her husband it is good for me and where they go i will go the women have promised to come to us today for instruction how this pays for coming to india it is better than the world or friends can give march fifth my dear sister i spend two to three hours every day with my class which i intend to present for examination as fourth grade doctors i hope to keep them or some of them at least after they graduate as i feel that they should have some experience of hospital practice before they go out to take up work by themselves a theological school for native students is to be opened here the first of april and several of my girls will marry native preachers who will come here to study so i shall still have them under my supervision we expect to have an artist here this month and i will have a picture taken of our house and grounds as you cannot come here i will send you a copy i must not forget to tell you that i met miss thoburn at conference in january and had a good visit with her she is one of the choice spirits may sixth thirteen of my medical class passed their final examination on the tenth of april in the presence of two civil surgeons of the station and reverend dr johnson of our mission they were granted certificates for practice in all ordinary diseases eleven of them have since married and left the orphanage one has gone to moradabad to practice medicine and one to almora where her husband has charge of the commissariat department in the leper colony five of them remain here as their husbands are students in the theological school rebecca one of dr humphrey's medical class who came to me at the close of the rainy season last year is now my assistant in the dispensary i enclose photos of my home and of my class i am sure you will like the house it is a real oriental house such as the rajas and nawabs live in but quite unlike the houses of natives in general which are generally enclosed by high walls the people standing in front of the house and on the veranda are the members of my class and the servants of the household if you look very closely you will see the old water carrier with his great leather bag all the water that we use is brought in this goatskin bag how would you like to drink water from it i was quite disgusted at first but do not stop to think about it now miss sparks and i occupied the upper part of the house and at present i am using one of the rooms as a dispensary some of our native helpers live in the basement rooms which are very comfortable now that our dispensary building is actually under way i feel quite content to put up with inconveniences for i have the assurance of better things in the future the reverend mr jude is overseeing the workmen and as he is a good manager the work is going on well there is quite a little army of men women and children all very busy in their own estimation though i can see from my window that now and then some of them linger over their loads or sit down behind a pile of boards to take a whiff from the hookah they call their hookah smoking taking a drink from the pipe june tenth eighteen seventy two my dear m do you realize that i am on my third year in india how quickly the time has passed 
the weather has been very hot for six weeks past hotter than i have known it since i have been here we shall welcome the rainy season and are looking longingly for it the rains usually begin about the middle of june but are sometimes delayed my patients sometimes send me food and sweetmeats such as they like themselves and the native lady has just sent me a jar of mangoes pickled in mustard oil some mango preserves and a variety of food and sweets another native friend lately sent me a milch buffalo which are very common here the milk used the same as cow's milk i already had a cow which had been sent me by an old patient and i had also bought one so we have quite a dairy the cream is churned in a bottle and worked over with a spoon and we get very good butter we continue our social visits at the homes of many of our former patients who though not needing medical aid are still anxious to see us occasionally these visits are always pleasant to us and we trust are profitable to them they ask many questions about our mode of living and we listen to their talk about their family affairs then we read to them from the bible or some religious book and sing and explain the hymns they listen attentively though we are sometimes inclined to feel impatient at their slowness in receiving the truth but when we stop to think how deeply enshrouded their minds are in darkness and superstition we are led to work and pray more earnestly for their salvation asking our father that in his own good time many of these people may be brought into his marvellous light and be witnesses for him december twenty second miss sparks and i give the christmas dinner this year you know that there are three missionary families here the scots the judes and ourselves and it has been the custom to have the christmas dinner together and to have it as homelike as possible one of my native patients has sent me two fine turkeys and a mohammedan friend has sent three chickens for our baradin great day as they call our christmas in addition to our poultry there will be for our dinner peas lettuce cauliflower and other vegetables from our garden and plenty of delicious golden oranges our trees are loaded with them the garden is at its best or approaching it there are three men at work in it all the time the mali or head gardener gets two dollars and a half and the other two one dollar and seventy-five cents each a month of course they take fruit and vegetables for their own use and probably some to sell but we cannot help that there were some fine fruit trees on the estate and we are getting custard apples and guavas too this season this is a most delightful country to live in after one gets used to it for six months after the rainy season is over the weather is all that could be desired we are just beginning to have a fire in the grate in the drawing-room as the evenings are chilly but it is warm enough without fires during the day and the sunshine is so brilliant that it is positively painful to the eyes my dispensary building is going up gradually mr jude has made over the whole business to me and i enjoy directing about the work the building will be convenient and a real blessing i am sure three native ladies are anxious to come to me as patients as soon as there is a place ready for them the hospital buildings will be begun soon after conference which will meet here in barili on the sixteenth of next month we shall entertain all the ladies of the women's foreign missionary society and two missionary families besides if they would rather be in our house than to live in tents we all look forward to the conference with great pleasure it is usually the only time during the year that we meet the missionaries from other stations 
june eighth eighteen seventy three my dear sister the dispensary building was completed early last month and formally opened on the tenth of the month the friends who have visited it are much pleased with the arrangements and congratulate me on having so desirable a place to receive patients the dispensary opens for work at six o'clock every morning except sunday and some mornings we have as many as sixty patients we have cards on which the prescriptions are written and numbered and these cards are printed in three different characters hindi persian and roman urdu and on the back of each is a text of scripture so that every new patient receives with her prescription a portion of the word of life she may not be able to read it but possibly some one of her family can read it for her this is one of the very simple methods of circulating the word of god in the families of those who come to us and by his blessing it may be the means of bringing someone into the truth a passage of scripture on a card given to a patient is often the subject of our morning lesson for all who come and are willing to listen a while until their prescriptions are ready for them two of my medical class are valuable assistants in the dispensary emma who married one of the students in the theological school and jane paul so with my faithful rebecca at the head everything goes smoothly the hospital buildings will probably be completed this year much care has been taken in the arrangement of them that the taste and convenience of native ladies may be suited and their seclusion according to their custom be ensured our plan was to build just what we needed and no more and we have followed native ideas as far as possible so that patients may feel perfectly at home and be enabled to carry on their plan of cooking and living the same as in their own houses the plan is much like that of an eastern sarai or inn only with more of a view to home comfort a piece of ground two hundred and fifty feet by one hundred and seventy five is enclosed by a wall eight feet high at the front of this stands the dispensary buildings the front entrance is from the general compound and the back veranda opens into the hospital grounds thus making the dispensary a part of the general plan at the right of the dispensary within the enclosure is a row of dormitories one story high extending nearly the whole length of the wall and across the end opposite the dispensary is another row more commodious designed for patients requiring larger rooms dormitories will be built on the other side of the enclosure when needed a front veranda extends the whole length of the dormitories and another at the back will serve as kitchens as there are partitions arranged so that the occupants of each room can cook their food outside their living room the rooms are twelve by fourteen feet in the centre of the enclosure is a fine large well where each modern rebecca who comes to us can draw water for herself with her own bucket and rope as is the custom of people of caste in india the grounds are tastefully laid out and in due time will be beautified with some of india's lovely roses flowers and shrubbery december twenty three eighteen seventy three my dear sister perhaps i told you that at the beginning of the year i had employed two native christian women as bible women and teachers they have each taught regularly in nine different families visiting them three times a week and teaching them to read sew and knit it is not always an easy matter to persuade a hindu woman to learn to read they say that their religious books forbid it teaching them that some great calamity will come upon them if they learn to read 
we tried to persuade one of my patients after her recovery to allow us to teach her to read but she was unwilling saying when i was quite young i began to learn to read and after a few days my brother died our priest and all our friends said that it was because i was learning to read so i stopped and have never dared to begin again we told her of several hindu families where the women are reading and no harm came to them but she still hesitated though she begged us to continue our visits and to come very often i told her that would not be possible as we wished to go to those who wish to learn and improve themselves that we come to this country to do her people good and that i want as far as i can when not attending the sick to teach them about our religion which is a religion of love i told her that one of our teachers would come to her three times a week if she wished to learn and that mrs shehe and i would come to see her as often as we could she thought a moment and said she would see about it a few days later as i was passing her house on my way to a patient i called in to see her and was warmly welcomed she said she was intending to send for us that very day as she was in great trouble and wanted me to do something for her she had been crying and was very sad when i asked her about her trouble she said i am ashamed to tell you that my husband is making arrangements to take another wife i thought if you knew about it you could go to the magistrate and ask him to forbid my husband to take another wife for we are very poor i explained that i could not do that but i promised to talk with her husband and ask him to wait a while before bringing another woman into the home and i said if you will consent to learn we will come often to see you and bring you books to read and you will learn to keep your house more tidy when your husband finds that you know something and can talk with him when he comes home about what you have learned i am sure he will be pleased and perhaps he will care more for you and will give up taking another wife with more spirit than i had ever seen her manifest she exclaimed i will learn when will you send eliza to teach me she never more needed urging but was always ready with her book and quite astonished us by her quickness in learning to read and in her efforts to improve the appearance of her house her husband also became quite interested and assisted her in having the walls of the house and court whitewashed and the floor laid with brick he gave up the idea of taking another wife and seems quite content with his present family mrs shehe has had the supervision of the bible women during the year and every month she visits each family under instruction and directs the bible women in regard to their teaching and their course of reading among the women she also holds meetings with the women on the sabbath and finds some interested hearers and so the work goes on End of chapter six Recording by Shena Sayre, Fresno, California. Chapter 7 of A Glimpse of India From the Letters of Dr. Clara A. Swain This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 7 General Work Barili january twenty ninth eighteen seventy four my dear sister i have three of my medical class with me as bible women this year nelly bain who married william peters libby husk now libby joel and harriet richardson the wife of joshua soul the courtship of the latter was unique mr soul informed miss sparks who has charge of the orphanage that he wanted an educated wife but he did not want a dark woman it happened that a few of the older girls were together in the compound and miss sparks indicated to him 
one or two whose marriage arrangement had not been made but none of them seemed attractive to him just then harriet came across the compound and joined the group there exclaimed soul that is the girl that i will marry miss sparks told him the girl's name and her attainments which was quite satisfactory to the suitor and he left after being told that he could come in the afternoon for his answer harriet was informed that mr soul wished to marry her and she consented to meet him and that afternoon the two were introduced to each other in miss sparks office and an engagement was effected as the husbands of these three young women are students in the theological school they will probably remain with me for a year or two and i shall be able to give them needed help in their medical work and arrange for them a course of instruction in books calculated to give them more enlarged views and ideas in regard to their work and influence among their hearers another of my girls jane paul was lately married to the son of one of our oldest preachers william plummer jane's husband is a clerk in a government office and is an active christian and jane is assisting in the medical work in moradabad where they now live sarah mead too married and is now sarah odell she has been appointed medical bible woman in pauri where her husband is the native doctor they have a small dispensary and sarah is using her medical knowledge to advantage almira blake who was the first girl received into the barili orphanage was appointed to the orphanage in pauri and as matron will have just the work her heart delights in the care of little ones in one of my letters i told you of a woman who consented to learn to read in order to make herself more agreeable to her husband who was planning to take a second wife she has improved very much in her reading and is now studying the old testament in hindu she reads a chapter over several times and when the bible woman visits her she asks her to explain anything that she does not understand she said to me one day before i began to learn i used to go from house to house to hear my neighbors talk and tell stories and see their jewels but now i have no time for that i hurry to get my work done and if any of the neighbors come in to talk and tell stories i feel impatient for them to go the stories in my book are better than any they can tell at our request she invites the women and children of the neighborhood once a week to her house and we have a meeting with them she and her daughter had learned to sing many of our hymns and to repeat the lord's prayer in hindustani and they are quite a help in these little gatherings her home shows the change in her mental condition formerly it was very untidy deplorably so but now everything is clean and in order and it is a pleasure to visit her her husband is an educated man but he had never thought his wife capable of anything beyond cooking and attending to his wants but now that he sees the improvement in her he seems quite proud and fond of her june tenth my dear m you have been so much interested in my work and my plans for the hospital that i am sure you will rejoice with me over its completion it was ready for occupancy on the first of january and it was with glad hearts that we received our first indoor patients some of whom had been waiting for us to let them know that we could accommodate them soon we had many of our rooms occupied by hindus mohammedans and native christians all having their own separate apartments it would amuse you to look in upon us a patient seldom comes alone to the hospital a poor woman brings her children and sometimes her mother-in-law or a widowed sister who may be living with her 
it would be considered a disgrace for a high caste woman to come alone so her husband accompanies her and oftentimes they bring not only their family and several servants but a yoke of oxen a horse and conveyance a goat their food and cooking utensils and their furniture we are not always particular to limit the number of persons who accompany the patient providing there is room and that they are willing to abide by our rules for we hope to do them good in a social and friendly way they are no expense to us in the way of food for their caste would not allow them to take food from our hands the benefit of a zanana dispensary and hospital is readily apparent women who would suffer in silence rather than have a native doctor called to them even though he did not look upon their face are glad to come to be treated by a lady doctor a motley collection of conveyances may be seen in front of the dispensary almost any morning bullock carts in which a whole family has come ekas or pony carts carefully covered with a cotton covering a more pretentious wrath with a beautiful white oxen from some one of the better homes of the city a palanquin or two and the little dollies which are simple string cots so small that it is a puzzle to imagine how a woman can sit in it though truth to tell i have seen not only a woman emerge from one but two or three children besides there are other women who come on foot sometimes leading a very old or perhaps a blind person such a contrast the most of these people are to our neatly clad white-robed christian women and the orphanage girls in their gingham skirts and white chadars the hindu and mohammedan women wear the chadars or mantle too perhaps i have told you that it is a sheet worn over the head and thrown up over one shoulder the women pull it closely over the face and are very particular not to expose their features to the gaze of men a bride on going to her husband's home does not uncover her face before her mother-in-law until she is told to do so at first we find it a little difficult to persuade the women to let us examine them even to get at their pulse or to see their tongue but this reluctance soon wears off and some of the women now in the hospital have lost a good deal of their shyness and meet us freely it is so also in the zananas that we visit old and young sit down together and listen to the teaching and ask questions apparently without constraint we still have a great many calls to patients in the city and adjacent villages and my medical bible women have many opportunities to practice what they have learned they appreciate this as it is giving them excellent preparation for the work which will come to them when they go with their husbands to their appointed fields of labor people in moderate circumstances sometimes offer me a fee for each visit a dollar or half a dollar but many are not really able to give money they would i think if their means would allow it is sometimes pathetic to see how desirous they are to show their gratitude sometimes offering a few native sweets on a leaf probably costing less than a cent sometimes a few oranges or guavas which really cost them next to nothing a few times i have received an adequate fee for one visit but nothing for subsequent visits though the patient may require medical services for weeks the husband evidently thinking that one gold mohur equal to eight dollars ought to bring his wife back to health all fees received are used to buy medicines and defray expenses for medical work natives are very fond of their money and do not part with it easily but i have heard that native princes have given large sums for a surgical operation or when a favorite member of the household has recovered from an illness the hakims or native doctors are shrewd enough to get pay for their services
a hakim will agree to cure a patient for a certain sum if he is a little doubtful as to the result he requires payment in advance but if the patient does not recover he will not refund the money of course his reputation suffers somewhat for the injured family are eloquent in proclaiming their wrongs september eleventh i have a visit of several days in lucknow every month lately miss monell m d who was appointed to lucknow received a call to hyderabad which she accepted and as there was no one to carry on the medical work which she had begun i was requested to take the supervision so i go to the zananas and visit the sick and prescribe for those who are brought to me at the mission house i find many who need my services and am glad to do what i can for them one of my medical students lives in lucknow and she looks after my patients in my absence how my heart rejoices over these young women who are taking up this work nearly all of my class are active workers combining their medical knowledge with their christian work among the homes of the people they visit susan hamilton one of the class has written of her experience in the first place she went to after her marriage she was a good student quick to learn and so thorough that she would never leave any point until she thoroughly understood it overflowing with good nature she was one to make her way anywhere and we were interested to know what her experience of life would be her husband was appointed to kera bajera and susan began at once to visit in the zananas where work had already been opened and she found her medical knowledge and skill a great help in opening other homes a great many came to her also and she had many opportunities to give physical relief and spiritual comfort but poor susan had her trial a leading hindu who had been loyal to the government during the mutiny received many favors from individuals as well as the government and this aroused the feeling of jealousy and he had many enemies among the people of the place so when he fell ill he distrusted every one and would take no medicine fearing that the native doctor might be bribed to give him poison charms and enchantments failed and in despair of saving his life his friends sent to susan for medicine she sent him a dose of quinine but it was too late to help him and he died of course the enemies of the mission took advantage of this to cry out that the christian woman had poisoned him and they succeeded in turning the poor widow against susan who had been quite a favorite with her and so bitter were her feelings that she ordered the girl's school which her husband had supported and which susan visited closed against her so that for a time the work was stopped the widow's rancor subsided after a time and the school was opened and the native pastor's wife gained an entrance to the home but she declined to see susan saying that she had not been careful to give the proper medicine this was discouraging for the unoffending woman but she is hopeful that the way will yet open for successful work december twenty ninth looking back over the year's work i find that i have fifty new families on my list some of whom had never been visited by a christian woman there were some among them who were willing to be taught and my four bible women and mrs sheehy have had a busy year the work is among all castes rich and poor sometimes the young women meet with great opposition from their mothers-in-law who fear the result of christian teaching but the bible women usually succeed in overcoming all prejudice and retain their pupils in some instances the older women who opposed the introduction of new ideas into the home become the most interested listeners to the reading and exposition of the scriptures 
we have held meetings on the sabbath in the home of one of our pupils for all in the neighborhood who were willing to come and have sometimes had a good audience they were generally respectful and attentive during the bible reading and prayer but occasionally some old woman would steal quietly away while we were praying fearing that if she listened she might in some way be made a christian against her will a few of the families pay for the books which we furnish them and also pay a small sum toward the teacher's salary we require all who are able to pay for their books for then they are taken care of there is not much variety in our work from year to year as you see yet after all we do see some improvement and are encouraged to believe that some of the good seed sown is taking root we cannot wonder that the work is slow when we reflect that for two thousand years and more this people has been following in the footsteps of their ancestors without improvement either in art or science it is a matter of rejoicing that some men are becoming enlightened enough to really wish to have their households taught though certainly the most of them would prefer to have the religious part of the teaching left out but that of course cannot be february tenth eighteen seventy five my dear m since receiving your letter i have visited the famous taj mahal in agra dr and mrs humphrey spent a few weeks with us here in bareilly before leaving for america and as they were intending to visit agra on their way to bombay they urged me to accompany them which i was very glad to do we arrived in agra in the early morning and after a rest and breakfast at a hotel went directly to the taj the gateway at the entrance to the grounds is a beautiful structure but we were anxious to see the dream in marble as it has been called and what a beautiful sight greeted us as we passed through the gateway we stood entranced for several minutes opposite the entrance was the taj a pure white marble tomb inlaid with mosaics of different colored marbles you have probably read a description of this lovely tomb built by shah jahan for his beloved wife's last resting place it is said that the building covers an acre of ground and that twenty two thousand men were twenty years in building it the cost was twenty millions of dollars i cannot vouch for the truth of this but it is the current statement here and does not seem impossible as one notes the fine and delicate carvings of the marble screens the exquisite bas-reliefs and other sculpture designs which must have required years of careful workmanship to accomplish we tested the echo by singing one line of the doxology at a time waiting for the whispering return of what seemed like sweet voices from unseen ones hovering over us in the great dome this beautiful structure stands in a garden of thirteen acres on the banks of the river jamna the garden itself is a beautiful sight with its fine trees luxuriant shrubbery flowers of every hue and roses of every variety and color there are marble walks and fountains in which the lovely pink lotus grows and though the fountain jets were not in action the placid waters added beauty to the scene one cannot wonder that this quiet spot was a favorite resort of the beautiful queen and that she often came here from her royal home in delhi it was for this reason probably that shah jahan built here the tomb which embodies her dying request build for me a monument whose beauty shall command the admiration of the world the next day dr and mrs humphrey resumed their journey to bombay and i returned to bareilly rejoicing that my eyes had beheld this perfection of beauty the day in agra amid new scenes and with change of thought was refreshing and i returned to take up my work with renewed zeal and courage we have had a very interesting bible reading with the dispensary patients this morning some of them were unusually attentive 
the entrance of thy word giveth light how this encourages us to pray that the word given so faithfully by our dispensary bible woman may find a place in the heart of some hungry soul how it would comfort these poor women if they could only believe that god is a loving father ready to help them at all times instead of always having the fear that they may do something to displease their deities and incur their wrath god has said that his word shall not return unto him void so we may hope that the good seed of the word which has been sown this morning may spring up and bring forth fruit in his good time these people come to us with the utmost confidence believing that our medicines will cure their ailments whatever they may be or of how long standing and while we endeavor to heal their bodies we are trying just as earnestly to minister to their souls end of chapter seven recording by shena sir fresno california chapter eight of a glimpse of india from the letters of dr clara a swain this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter eight as m saw it barili february twelfth eighteen seventy five my dear sister our conference last month was as usual a season of spiritual refreshing as well as of pleasant social intercourse you can imagine how delightful these annual gatherings must be for those of our missionaries who are in isolated stations where they hardly see people of their own color half a dozen times through the year constant intercourse with the natives must have more or less of a depressing effect no matter how much one may be interested in her work and these days of social and religious intercourse are the source of pleasant anticipation for weeks before we come together and of renewed interest in the work as different phases of it are discussed by different missionaries i find something of this same feeling among some of the higher class of women who come to the dispensary they get tired of the seclusion of their homes and are glad of any pretext to come out among others if their friends do not absolutely forbid it their motive is not like that of the missionaries a desire for spiritual refreshment but a longing for a change of some kind to relieve the monotony of their lives and these visits to the dispensary certainly give them food for thought and they carry away with them ideas which may develop into broader views of life a few days ago a bright little woman came to the dispensary closely concealed in her covered conveyance and after receiving her medicine anxiously inquired which road led to the railroad station this was rather startling and we asked why she wished to know she laughingly replied it will be a long time perhaps before my husband will let me come out again and i am determined to see the railway carriages and the engines and things that the english people talk about i will bribe my servants and my husband will never know about it one of my bengali patients in the hospital said to me before she left may i not come here and stay a while every year even if i am not sick i like to walk out in the garden and go to your bungalow i am not afraid to go out here but if i should walk out at home my neighbors and friends would think badly of me i do not care to see fine houses or anything that man has made i love the trees and flowers and the pretty green fields i afterward visited this native lady in her home and found everything clean and orderly there were pots of rare geraniums in the courtyard which she cherished equally with her jewels while she was with me 
her husband came to see her and spent two or three days with her in her rooms in the hospital he belongs to the brahmo somaj an organization among the hindus who have given up idol worship and profess to worship god only but they do not believe in christ or in a spiritual change we talked with him about his religious views he said he loved to pray his idea seemed to be that one should spend as much time in prayer as could be spared from daily business while here he used to arise early in the morning and drive out to a mango grove some distance away and spend some time in prayer he said he got an inspiration from his surroundings and he could better fix his mind on god when alone under the trees or out in the open field others of his faith have given a similar testimony Barili, march seventeen eighteen seventy five my dear m your letter asking me to give you some account of my daily life and work is at hand and i will ask you to imagine that you are with me for a day accompanying me on my visits here and in the city we will first visit the hospital patients in the first room at the right as we enter we find a mohammedan woman who has been here for some weeks ask her a few questions she will tell you that she has been very ill but allah god has heard her prayers and now she is almost well enough to go to her home in the next room is a poor woman from a village brought in from the country in a very low condition she is a native christian and as you see too ill to be much benefited by medicine but we are glad to have her here where we can give her nourishing food and the care she needs to make her comfortable our next patient is a young eurasian girl who has been deceived by the brother of the woman with whom she lived her mistress brought her here to await her confinement and has come several times to see her and seems very kind to her although this woman is a leper she goes about where she will and seems to get some enjoyment out of life here are two hindu women in this next room they have come from the country one of them is a very bright young woman a widow who has come with her sister-in-law to remain while she is under treatment it will appear more respectable to their hindu friends to have her here as companion than for her sister to remain in a strange place alone this woman's fingers on both hands are covered with jewels which is remarkable for a hindu widow but they may have been put on for the occasion you will be pleased to see this next patient who is a lovely native christian woman from Kanpur, the daughter of a native minister she is a well-educated woman and as you see has charming manners but she is very delicate we hope the change will do her as much good as medicine now we will visit the european ward in one room is a woman from burma in the next one from naini tal such a distance apart have they lived and here they meet on the same errand the pursuit of health the next room is occupied by a lady from allahabad the wife of a civil engineer she spends some time with her husband on his district work and though she enjoys camp life she has found it necessary to come here for rest and light treatment and now i must take you in to see mrs shehe who has been a valuable assistant to me for so long it was a trial to me as well as to her when her eyesight began to fail and she was obliged to give up her work but she is a true christian and has borne her affliction patiently 
i have had her eyes treated by a surgeon from the bengal infantry and he has just performed a most successful operation removing a cataract from one of her eyes he watches her case carefully and feels sure that she will quite recover her sight it is pleasant to see how he appreciates our hospital and grounds he says it is quite a relief to come here where everything is so clean and orderly and the compound so beautiful with its shrubbery and lovely flowers but now we must go into the dispensary you see we have this clinic room and here back of it is the operating room this is the office and the room corresponding to it in the opposite wing is the lecture room then there are the two bathrooms we have quite a crowd of people here this morning most of them are from the city but a few i see are village people do you notice how patiently they wait and how attentive they are to the reading of the word by the dispensary bible woman who is so faithfully trying to interest them some of their questions show that they are really trying to comprehend what they hear some of them enjoy the hymns and prayer i have told you before of rebecca her training under dr humphrey has fitted her to be of great service here she will prescribe for the more simple cases and the more serious ones will wait to be examined and prescribed for on my return from the city these people are never in a hurry they always have time for all they want to do while we americans worry because we have not time to accomplish all that we want to do in a day but our courage is at the door and we will continue our morning's work the half-mile drive through the bazaar will interest you for it is a phase of life that is quite unique here you see truly all sorts and conditions of men and conveyances of every description we pass through this large gateway and turn to the right through this lane which is hardly wide enough for our courage our first call is on a mohammedan woman who comes to the dispensary when she is able but now she is too ill to come they are poor people but they seem to make an effort to make the best of what they have and the house is more tidy and comfortable than many of the places we visit as a rule the mohammedans are not as neat as the hindus this woman's husband is a mechanic earning four or five annas a day equal to eight or ten cents of our money let us see what we can do for this poor woman have you taken the medicine as i directed i ask yes miss sahiba she replies i took the powders as you told me and i ate the papers too we must not let her see us smile though you are inclined to do so i see i am glad you took the powders but it is not necessary for you to eat the papers how about the fever i ask my fever came on as usual but not so strong was her answer so i will leave more powders with the injunction to throw away the papers they are wrapped in across the street is another of my patients the wife of a wealthy hindu banker this woman has been ill for several months with an incurable disease from which she cannot recover she is resigned to her fate but begs that i will visit her often as she says it is a comfort to talk with someone who knows how i suffer her husband is very kind to her although she has never had any children and he has taken a second wife but his first wife is the one he loves you can see that she is of a more refined nature than the other who just now passed through the room now i must take you into another part of the city a region where low caste people reside my patient here is a boy who is recovering from smallpox i was not called to attend him until he began to recover 
then i found his case to be a serious one i fear he will never be strong enough to wait upon himself even it hardly seems possible that human beings can exist in such a place as this so many people crowded into so small a space yet this is common in the cities and is often the case in the villages also one of my bible women visits several families in this mohalla or ward and a number of people come together to hear her give the bible lesson some of the women and girls are learning to read the medicine case is useful in opening the way for the gospel the neighborhood gets interested and when we suggest that the children be taught there is frequently a ready assent then where we have the girls the mothers are almost sure to come in and this leads to an invitation to their homes we will walk back to the entrance to the lane where we left the carriage and i will stop to see a little mohammedan girl who has been very ill with typhoid fever she is a mere skeleton but she is determined to live i fancy that she is well married and that may be the reason that her people are so anxious for her recovery she needs better care and better air than she can get here but the family are not willing to bring her to the hospital there is another case near by that i must look after this is a young married woman who is seriously ill but i trust she will recover for the sake of her child who is such a treasure to both mother and father a son is always warmly welcomed in a hindu family and this is the first born the little woman is well inclined and has a desire for improvement but she belongs to a caste that is not considered respectable and she can never associate with any one of higher caste than her own unless she becomes a christian i love to tell these people that god loves them just as much as he does a brahman and their souls are precious in his sight that he needs them and has a place for them in his service one more visit we must make before we turn homeward there are several in this family suffering from an epidemic and i will take a look at each of them and perhaps change the medicine but we must not stop to answer the many questions that they will surely ask on seeing a stranger all are doing well i am glad to see and now for home and breakfast it is half past ten o'clock a busy forenoon do you say yes but not out of the ordinary and there are dispensary patients yet to be attended to after our breakfast you know they will have enjoyed a comfortable rest in our absence september twenty seventh my dear sister you would be amused over some of the arrivals this morning a woman came to the hospital with the evident intention of remaining some time as she was accompanied by her husband three children a widowed sister and twelve servants there was an ox cart with their furniture and they had brought food cooked and uncooked to last some time and there were the three conveyances in which the family came the woman needed treatment and of course we were glad to have her here and i could appreciate her wish to have her children with her but i asked her why her husband came she made several excuses she would be afraid to stay here without him their friends would give her a bad name if she were separated from him it would not be respectable for her to remain in a strange place without him and so he stays the poorer classes seldom come to stay without bringing some member of their families with them and it sometimes happens that the number of the attendants or companions is greater than the number of patients in the hospital by putting up some temporary arrangements each family lives quite separate and their seclusion is assured 
we are glad to have the opportunity to give them all some new ideas and they seem to appreciate our sanitary system and some really take pride in keeping their rooms clean and orderly for nearly three months we have had families of christians hindus bengalis and mohammedans staying in the hospital and often the women from each family would be present in our prayer meetings we did not require them to come but always invited them and the hindu women seemed to enjoy the meeting the mohammedan women always appeared to be afraid lest we should make christians of them against their will december twenty ninth another year nearly gone as i look back over the twelve months of service i think i can truly say that it has been my best year in india although i have at times been so physically unfit for work the dispensary work is very absorbing both of time and strength but it has nevertheless been very satisfactory we have had more high caste patients than heretofore probably because we are better known in the city so that they have less reluctance in coming to us we have had abundant opportunities to do good both to the bodies and souls of the people and we have reason to believe that our efforts have not been entirely vain of course some neither comprehend nor seem to care for the truth presented while others really seem deeply interested and really anxious to learn something of our religion we have had six high caste women in the hospital also during the year shy and modest and gentle-mannered the most of them and very appreciative of our care and attention when mrs sheehy was laid aside from work i was fortunate in securing the services of a very capable young woman to oversee my bible women and go with them to examine their work in the schools and zananas she says she finds the women are generally attentive and take an interest in what is being taught them those who can read the urdu or hindi character are reading the bible in those languages and others are being taught to read and write and also to do some kinds of needlework there are about forty houses which are visited twice every week i have been interested to notice that we have treated nineteen hundred and twenty nine patients this year and have given out just a few less than five thousand prescriptions there have been more paying patients than in any former year the fees amounting to five hundred and sixty six dollars a sum which materially helps out our medical work february five eighteen seventy six although my five years of service had expired i did not feel at liberty at our conference session to ask leave for a change to america even though convinced that i really need a rest there is much anxiety as well as responsibility connected with medical work resulting in weariness of body and mind and it was with a feeling of relief that i heard that the society is sending out a medical lady who will probably reach here early in march this makes it possible for me to take the much-needed rest and change and i have decided by the strongly emphasized advice of the surgeon who has sometimes given his assistance in some of my cases to leave for america as soon as i can make it convenient to do so mr and mrs Sherrington, with their little one will sail about the first of march and i shall be glad to go in their company you will probably hear from me again before i reach america end of chapter eight recording by shenna sayre fresno california chapter nine of a glimpse of india 
from the letters of dr clara a swain this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter nine second journey to india liverpool england october tenth eighteen seventy nine my dear h there were so many things to attend to during the last few weeks before leaving home that i did not find time to write to you so i take this opportunity while waiting for a steamer to let you know that i am well and glad to be on my way back to india i left castile on the twenty fifth of september and sailed from new york two days later on the steamer celtic arriving in liverpool on the seventh of this month the weather was fine and the voyage delightful i am travelling alone as our society is not sending out missionaries this year but i find some friendly people among strangers and get along nicely the agents of our mission board attend to my luggage and engage my passage so i have only to go to the steamer when it is ready to sail one of our missionaries will meet me at bombay and attend to getting me through the custom house and i shall be well taken care of there our steamer sails to-morrow if we have a prosperous voyage we shall be nearing the suez canal by the time this reaches you i know you are disappointed that i decided to return to india but knowing so well the need of workers among the poor and destitute women of india i cannot but feel that my work is among them while i have strength to work anywhere and i would much rather go back and die on the field than stay at home from a selfish motive my greatest trial in leaving home is the separation from you all bombay november eighth i am sure that you will rejoice with me that i have reached india safely in spite of the winds and waves and the many dangers of the sea after we left malta we had one very stormy day the waves washing over the main deck and the great ship rocking like a cradle no one can appreciate the rocking in the cradle of the deep who has not experienced it we reached port said at the entrance of the suez canal the fourth day from malta and the twelfth from liverpool the canal is ninety miles long and we were two days passing through as we could sail only six miles an hour and always stopped at the sidings from sunset until daylight one beautiful moonlight night we anchored in the lake not far from the spot where the children of israel crossed it is said we arrived at suez sunday morning and who should come on board but the colored evangelist amanda smith of philadelphia and miss drake of boston sent out by dr cullis i had never met her but had met amanda smith at the depot in canandaigua so i went to them at once and introduced myself and for the rest of the way found them most delightful companions our eleven days sail from suez to bombay was very pleasant as the sea was calm the most of the way but it was very hot in the red sea lucknow november seventeenth i intended to finish this letter while in bombay and send it by the first home mail but the days were too short for all that i had to do i was there five days staying with one of our missionaries there were meetings every morning and calls during the day and two days i had to go to the custom house as my luggage was not all brought off the steamer at once we arrived in bombay on the sixth of november just thirty-nine days after leaving new york but four days and a half of that time were spent in liverpool on the eleventh i started for Cawnpore alone arriving there on the afternoon of the thirteenth dr waugh and mr mesmore 
met me at the railway station and after spending two days with the was i came here on saturday to have a little visit with miss thoburn before going on to barili miss thoburn sent a telegram of welcome to me at bombay and met me on my arrival here and i am sitting with her in her room enjoying myself and happy in the thought that i can rest here until next thursday i found several letters of welcome awaiting me from the good friends in barili mrs thomas wrote that she would come to lucknow to accompany me to barili not because i cannot be trusted to travel alone but because she wants to have the first visit with me she says so we expect her this evening i have met several of my old lucknow patients and all seem glad to see me a native woman who has been associated with miss thoburn since we came to india ten years ago came in this morning to give me a word of welcome she did not speak but embraced me and passed into the next room after a while miss thoburn went into the room and found the woman crying and asked what was the matter oh miss sahiba she replied do you not see how miss swain has changed if you go to america i am afraid you will come back looking as she does the great cry is how thin you have grown i never dreamed that there were so many people interested in the amount of flesh that covers my bones i tell them that i am the same it is only the house i live in that has grown smaller and taken on a look of age and dilapidation but the tenant within is stronger and wiser and better fitted to work among them than when the outside had a better and stronger appearance i can never tell any one how good it seems to me to get back here i feel now that i can never leave india again i have such a home feeling and such a love for the people fills my soul that i cannot refrain from saying this is my country the land to which my father has called me these are my people these simple-hearted people living in their mud huts with clothing hardly sufficient to cover their nakedness with the spark of immortality imparted to them by the divine being buried so deep under their wickedness and idolatry i must i must help them december seventeenth my dear sister since my return to barili i begin to realize the weariness of my long journey i am staying with miss sparks who with her assistants occupies a bungalow across the road from the orphanage mrs mcgrew has charge of the medical work and she and her husband are living in my old home as it was necessary that she should be near the hospital i have nothing to do these few days before conference but just rest and i feel the need of it i assure you i appreciate the beautiful winter weather we have in this part of india such days of sunshine and such a cool and refreshing atmosphere i am sure the patients in the castile sanitarium would not need to be urged to sit out after meals if the climate there were like this i am longing for the time to come when i shall be settled in work again i do not know where i may be appointed by the conference miss thoburn hopes it may be luck now but i think i can do better work in barili and it would be my choice to return to my old home and work i have only to wait a few days longer to know the decision of the conference which will meet on january seventh january eighth eighteen eighty we left barili on the sixth the missionaries from budaon having come in the night before to accompany us at shahjahanpur dr and mrs johnson joined us and at lucknow mr and mrs badley and other missionaries were added to our company 
we had one of the intermediate railway carriages to ourselves and we had quite a social time enlivening the hours with singing and recitations other missionaries had arrived at Cawnpore before us conference opened yesterday morning with most of the missionaries present and in the afternoon the women's missionary society convened in the parsonage drawing-room with seventeen lady missionaries and a few visitors present after singing a hymn mrs amanda smith led the devotions then the officers for the ensuing year were elected and the hours for the daily meetings fixed each of the ladies present reported the amount of missionary money raised by the native auxiliary of her station the largest amount given by any one auxiliary was eighteen rupees and the total amount from the nine auxiliaries was eighty-four rupees each auxiliary has the privilege of deciding for what purpose their money shall be used and i noticed that one auxiliary had assumed in part the support or a teacher for a low-caste school in their own city another devoted a part of the money to the purchase of books and scripture texts for the city sunday schools a portion of the barili money provided conveyances for the bible women who have sunday schools and prayer meetings among native christians in different parts of the city an estimating committee of six ladies was appointed to consider what amount of money would be needed for the work of the ensuing year and when this is settled the estimates will be presented to the finance committee of the men's conference which will pass upon them and return them to the ladies then the corresponding secretary will forward them to the secretary of the general executive committee in america great care is taken in preparing these estimates each lady having previously considered what amount will be needed for her current work and any new work which she proposes to open a committee on special business was appointed also which will report today ninth after the devotional exercises this afternoon the time was occupied by the discussion of the report of the special committee which related chiefly to the arrangement of a revised course of study for bible women their salary and the time they should give to their work there were also suggestions regarding the assistants and several of the ladies then gave a report of their work for the year these reports will be continued until each station has been heard from fourteenth our conference closed on the twelfth and the most of the missionaries left as soon as possible after receiving their appointments every day was filled with business discussions of plans of work and of further expansion and every evening after dinner we had an hour or more of spiritual intercourse mrs amanda smith gave a fresh inspiration by her most excellent talks her singing and her soul uplifting prayers i received my appointment to barili and mr and mrs mcgrew go to conpor as soon as our house is vacated miss sparks and i will move back into our old home and i will take up my work again as you are so much interested in mission work and the meetings of your society at home i thought you would be interested in these details of our work here it was quite a pleasure to meet amanda smith again and you will be interested to know that miss drake who was our travelling companion has married w b osborne an american missionary who came to india to take up english work he met us at the steamer and gave all needed assistance Barili, april sixth i took over the hospital from mrs mcgrew as soon as i returned from conference leaving opportunity for her to make the preparations for moving to conpore 
during my absence from india bareilly for nearly two years had the services of dr green who arrived from america soon after i left in eighteen seventy six and after her marriage to mr cheney and departure for naini tal mrs mcgrew who was in charge of the medical work in moradabad came here and has had two busy years in hospital and city work it has not been an easy matter to find time to write since my return after getting settled in our home i had some needed repairs to attend to and there was a great increase of patients because of the terrible fever scourge following the famine rebecca my faithful assistant of other days miss yerbury a young english lady who was at one time a patient of mine and is now studying with me and lorraine and matilda two of mrs mcgrew's medical students have all been overcrowded with dispensary work filling prescriptions for those who come and to send to those who are not able to come so that to them the days are more busy than ever while my calls to the city are continuous and i am frequently called to outstations it has all been a great tax on my strength and just now i am suffering from a severe attack of neuralgia which it seems impossible to conquer i am advised to go to the hills for a time and am making preparations to leave my work and take a short rest barili october three eighteen eighty my dear dr green the hot weather came on so early that my strength was soon exhausted especially as an obstinate attack of neuralgia could not be overcome so i was obliged to flee to the hills for change and rest i soon recruited in the delightful climate of naini tal and almost felt that i might go back to my work on the plains though it would hardly have been wise to go from the altitude of naini tal to the heated plains and i was strongly advised to remain until the end of the rainy season there is plenty of work for willing hearts wherever one may be and i soon began to have calls to attend the sick in their homes and to look after the native christians around us so i could feel that while enjoying the fine climate and regaining health i was at the same time making myself useful to others but our pleasant summer in naini tal ended in sudden and terrible disaster miss sparks had come up to the sanitarium for a rest and we went out together to make a few calls but the rain soon drove us home this was on the sixteenth of september and it rained so hard that i thought no one would come in so i busied myself with packing some things that i had bought for the hospital and had the baskets placed in the dining room ready to be carried down the hill for i had engaged conveyances for amanda smith and myself for the twenty first i put some extra garments that would not be needed into my trunk and then settled myself for the night it rained hard all night and all the next day the storm increasing in violence every hour it seemed to us i went to bed but awoke about one o'clock feeling troubled and wondering if there was danger the uneasiness increased and a little later i got up and lighted my lamp and looked about but saw nothing wrong so leaving the lamp lighted i went back to bed a few minutes later the window in my room burst open with a terrible crash letting in a rush of water and shale my dressing-table was near the window and was thrown over and it and the lamp buried under the shale i was alone in the room and got out as quickly as i could and groped my way to the door opening into the sitting-room but found that the jar from the crash and the rush of shale had closed it so tightly that i had great difficulty in opening it i finally succeeded 
and got the front door open and went to the next suite of rooms where i found mrs mudge trying to rescue her children's clothes from the rushing stream she had but one lamp so i went to the next room where miss layton and miss sparks were trying to rescue some of their things and found that they could not help me as they had but one small lamp mrs thomas was able to give me a lamp and i went back to my rooms the water was running out of the front door like a small river and some of my things were floating on the stream i caught what i could and pressed in to see what i could rescue all my toilet arrangements were in the shell and under water fortunately i had put my watch in its case on the mantelpiece near the head of my bed so that was safe i lost a number of valuables in the way of instruments my two batteries a box of medicines and my nice medicine case that i bought in boston but this was only the beginning of troubles the men assisted us down the hill to the mission house where the box were living and mrs buck provided us with some dry garments but just as we began to feel a little comfortable the men who had been working hard to save mr buck's house came in and said we must pack up things there as quickly as possible as the water was gaining on them so rapidly that there was no hope so we all set to work pulling up the carpets and packing mr buck's library and other valuable things until about one o'clock when the water began to pour into the house and we saw we should have to leave everything and fly mr thomas said we must leave at once or the road would soon be gone and our escape cut off so we hurried down the hill to our mission chapel where we found a number of native christians and our servants who had taken shelter there as their houses were falling we sat in the veranda wondering what we would do if the water came there for the chapel was not far below the mission house i said to mrs thomas i think the assembly rooms over there near the lake will be as safe as any place if the water comes here we can go down there just then i looked up toward the hill back of the sanitarium and noticed the trees shaking and in an instant down came the hill demolishing a large hotel a large department store which stood below it and the assembly rooms which a moment before had seemed to us a place of safety not a trace of either building could be seen two minutes after the catastrophe two hundred natives and fifty europeans were buried beneath the ruined buildings and not far from a million dollars worth of property destroyed the mission property consisting of three houses a church and schoolhouse a large building occupied by native christians and a number of servants houses was in what was considered about the finest locality in naini tal but today it is in a ruinous condition the hill above it is cracked and it is feared that another hard rain will bring it down when it seemed no longer safe for us to remain at the chapel and we saw people rushing in all directions to find a place of safety word came to us that we must leave immediately and we all started together down the road which was so cut up into deep gorges that we were often deep in water but we finally reached the outlet of the lake but were prevented from going further as the bridge was in danger of being swept away any minute so we sought shelter in a house near the european hospital it was not a very desirable place for they were bringing into the yard and hospital the dead and wounded who had been rescued from the ruins however we remained there overnight and in the morning sir henry ramsay the commissioner of the district sent us word that we could have a cottage of his on the other side of the lake where we would be quite safe 
we gladly took possession and soon got our native christians over and began to send back for our things and in due time we were able to set up housekeeping but in a very primitive style the roads were so bad that there was no hope of our leaving for barili on the twenty first as we had planned but we were so filled with gratitude over our escape from the peril that had threatened us that we were not inclined to murmur over the derangement of our plans i came down to barili last thursday glad to get back to the plains where there are no hills to fall but we found here a disastrous flood the river ganges had risen and swept away thousands of people and whole villages were destroyed and the railroad was so washed out that it will be weeks before trains can be run over it poor india has been visited with one calamity after another famine and the fever scourge carried off thousands then came cholera and now this flood god has a purpose in it all but the people are slow to learn so far as we know not a native christian has been lost in the flood it is a time of general thanksgiving with those of us who have been so wonderfully delivered from death mr thomas remained in nainital to see what could be done about the mission buildings getting the mud and shale cleared out and saving as much of the materials as possible and he reports that the houses are still standing there is such a panic among the people who own property there and those who have lost all that they possessed but their grief is as nothing compared to those whose families were lost in the terrible landslip december thirty eighteen eighty my dear sister you have read the account of the land sleep in the letter which i sent to dr green and i am sure you will be glad to know that notwithstanding all the exposure i have not lost one day from my work since my return to barili we have from fifty to eighty patients every day in the dispensary besides the many patients that i attend in their homes my good assistants do all they can to help me though of course the care and responsibility come upon me but i have learned to do the best i can and leave the result with the higher power and not spend any strength in carrying my own burdens or worrying over things that i cannot make better i believe we cannot do this and honor god in our work as it is our privilege to do we have treated nearly twice as many patients at the dispensary this year than any former year and the visits to the outstations and neighboring villages have been more frequent some of these have been most interesting to us as we have had the opportunity to tell the story of the lord jesus to some who have heard it from our lips for the first time during my absence in the hot weather rebecca took charge of the entire work to the satisfaction of all some weeks she was called to see patients in the city nearly every day the two medical students have done good service in compounding medicines and looking after the sick in the orphanage and hospital and miss yerbury besides her work in the hospital and dispensary has given the morning bible lessons to the patients while they were waiting for their prescriptions i have been looking over the list of hospital patients and find we have had twelve christian women thirty-one girls from the orphanage nine girls from the lucknow and budaon schools and two little christian boys besides a number of mohammedan and hindu women and ten europeans there were six deaths among our city patients five of them from cholera but our hearts have been cheered by seeing some seemingly hopeless cases restored to health and strength i have received six hundred and forty nine dollars in fees and have given out eleven thousand eight hundred and forty prescriptions the number of patients treated being just nine less than six thousand 
End of chapter 9. Recording by Shena Sare, Fresno, California. Chapter 10 of A Glimpse of India from the Letters of Dr. Clara A. Swain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 10 Visitors from America Barili, February 13, 1881. My dear sister, our conference met this year in Barili, and we had with us several Americans who added interest to our meetings it is always pleasant to have a bishop from america at our conferences and bishop merrill was as warmly welcomed as were other bishops who had come to us in former years besides bishop merrill there were the round the world evangelists reverend mr inskip mr macdonald and mr wood with their wives and two new missionaries of the woman's society the ladies of the inskip party attended our lady society helped in the devotional meetings and gave us words of cheer which were much appreciated on invitation bishop merrill conducted the devotions at one of our afternoon meetings and made a fine address for which the ladies gave him hearty thanks i have had a delightful family all winter and some very nice hindustani patients staying in the hospital several of my english patients are quite well now and have gone to their homes and others will go this month native patients are beginning to come in again from out stations i am expecting a bengali woman today from shahjahanpur she is the wife of the station master to whom i was called last week to examine her case and i had great difficulty in persuading her to come to the hospital to a hindu woman who has never left her secluded home or ever looked outside her own premises the distance between the two cities appeared very great and it seemed a dreadful thing to her to come so far away from her home and friends i am sending you a report of the mission work in the charge of the ladies of our society in it you will see my medical report and will notice that my fees amounted to nearly my yearly salary my health is as good as ever it was and i find myself just as well able to work i think i travel six miles a day on an average for i have so much running about and so many separate buildings to look after and then if any one outside our grounds is sick that means extra work there is nothing like having plenty to do in india i am sure we should all die if we had no definite aim in life bishop merrill was astonished to see the vastness of our mission work he had no idea that we had such a christian community so many churches schools and sunday schools he was surprised to see how well versed the children are in the scriptures and says he thinks them far ahead of the children in america his presence added much to the interest of the conference meetings he is such a solid and wise man and sees things so correctly you will find quite a full account of our meetings in the indian witness which i am sending you i will send it every week if it will interest you it may perhaps answer in place of a letter sometimes december fifteenth we have had some interesting and intelligent women among our dispensary patients of late and our hearts have been gladdened many times as we have observed the interested faces as they have listened to the morning lesson in no former year have i received so many sincere expressions of gratitude from native patients especially some who were unable to give any pecuniary compensation for their treatment but have nevertheless 
managed to bring some little gift after their recovery one poor woman to-day brought an offering of oranges almonds and raisins a few of each saying she was poor but she wanted to give something in return for the benefit she had received another patient who lives in a village not far from naini tal brought twelve ears of green corn and a bottle of honey he said his was a small gift but he wanted to offer something as his life had been saved he believed by the medicine sent him these simple gifts indicate a spirit of gratitude and appreciation which is very encouraging to us who work for them i have just had an interesting case of a high caste hindu woman who has been fasting for eight months because of the death of the head of the family one of the leading men of his caste and a man of considerable wealth since his death all the women of his family including distant relatives have taken food once in twenty-four hours only while they have been fasting themselves they have been feeding the poor daily as a work of merit for the dead when on my way at evening to see my patient i have noticed on both sides of the road leading to the house quite a company of poor people receiving food from the household servants the woman i was called to treat had been to the ganges to bathe and perform some ceremonies and had taken cold and i found her seriously ill she begged me to give her something to cause her death saying she was not afraid to die but she could not endure such pain i asked her if she would take liquid medicines oh no she replied will you take powders i asked and again she answered no how can i give you medicine then i asked i will take medicine that can be applied externally was her answer but that will not be sufficient i said you are very ill and if you will not take either medicine or food i do not see that i can do much for you her son who was standing by said do come to see her again your presence will be some help to her so the next morning i went again and found her still suffering an old man a relative of the family sat by her and he said to me i think she will take dry medicines this morning if you can truthfully say there is neither wine nor beef in them i replied i have treated hindu women in bareilly for several years and i assure you that i have never put either beef or wine in the dry medicines i have given them their confidence began to increase and i at once prepared a powder and asked her to take it before me which she did and from that hour she never refused to take any medicine which i wished to give her but on no account could she take food as the time of her fast had not expired i attended her for ten days during which time she did not take more than a pint of milk i have never witnessed such self-denial as exists among hindu women of high caste this woman seems to have led a very pure and holy life according to her religion Barili, january twenty five eighteen eighty two my dear m there is a great deal of cholera in the city and we have been obliged to stop the work of the bible women and teachers for a time my own work goes on and will increase if the epidemic breaks out among the native christians there has been but one case among them so far Today a woman was brought to the dispensary who is just recovering from smallpox i have been exposed to it many times since i have been in india but have never had any symptoms of it i am living in our house again this winter you remember that i lived in the hospital last cold season and went to naini tal in the hot weather 
the house has been whitewashed inside and out and with new mattings and floor cloths we are very clean and nice miss kelly has charge of the zanana work in the city and she and her assistant are living with me and i have one assistant and one student so we are a family of five in addition to my medical work i have been building and repairing all winter and at times have had fifty and sixty persons at work masons carpenters plasterers and coolies the masons receive twelve and a half cents a day and the coolies three and a half cents the others get six cents a day my house servant calls all the men women and children together when the day's work is done and writes down the numbers of each class of workers and on saturday he gives me the account for the week receives the money from me and pays each one according to his or her earnings the last payment was nine dollars and a quarter for a week's work you would be surprised to see how many persons it took to earn that amount in a week i go out every morning to direct the work and in the evening take a look to see what has been accomplished a missionary ought to understand all trades have engineering ability be a good financier and accountant and ready for anything for we have a little of all sorts of work to do one of our missionaries came in the other day and seeing the work that was going on said if you had been a man you would have made a general no indeed i said i would have been an engineer i am having a new well dug and when that is done i hope to have a little rest from brick and mortar june twenty fourth rebecca who has been so many years with me in the dispensary left just as the hot season began and i was left alone with the helper who knew almost nothing about caring for the sick but mrs parker has just sent her native doctor shuluk who was also trained by dr humphrey to assist me and i am quite relieved the rains have begun and everything looks fresh and green and beautiful no place is more lovely than india in the rainy season that is my opinion others may not think so the mangoes are just in their glory so ripe and delicious i bought a hundred this morning for fifty cents i wish you could help me eat them peaches too are abundant and are very fine this year we have had some profitable meetings in the hospital nearly every patient who was able came in and all listened with great attention to the lessons one old hindu woman reads the bible and finds great comfort in believing its words and when she tells me what it means to her i feel that she has come into the light just now there is a very interesting woman here who says that when about fourteen years of age she was sold to a mohammedan who has several wives she has been ill for some time but could not get treatment where she was living one day a religious devotee came to the place and told her that there was a lady doctor in barili who could cure her so she got ready and has come seven hundred miles with the hope of regaining her health she has been trained as a dancing girl and wears the dress peculiar to that class the skirt of her dress has one hundred cores and is thirty yards wide when she whirls in the dance the skirt stands straight out yet some of the folds fall about her limbs she seems inclined to lead a different life but thinks it would be difficult as she has been taught to feel that her present life is the one ordered for her i trust that while she is with us she will learn that there is a better life for her i wonder if i have ever told you of my leper patient it is the custom for a crowd of beggars to go to the bungalows occupied by europeans to beg for pies 
and every sunday morning we find them in front of the house waiting for the servant to appear to supply them among them is an old man who has been coming for about five years he is a leper whose nose ears fingers and toes have disappeared because of this terrible disease he is a hideous object but his very helplessness appeals to our sympathies and we are glad to bandage his sores and give him what help we can for his special need at the same time giving him a word of comfort and pointing him to one who is able to cleanse the leper he ought not to be allowed to go about among people but there is no law to hinder or restrain such people from going where they will there are mission asylums in the hills for lepers if they will go one of my medical class developed leprosy and was sent to the mission asylum in almora where she has been well cared for and she is glad to be doing something for others who are more helpless than she is a few mornings ago a woman came bringing her sick child the only surviving one of seven the bible woman spoke words of comfort to her telling her of jesus who went upon earth took little children in his arms and blessed them and that now he is near to heal the sick and comfort the broken-hearted she assured her that the six little ones that she had consigned to the sacred river were safe with him and she would see them again if she would believe in him and trust in him for salvation we prescribed for the little one praying that the dear father would spare this one and that the good seed sown in the mother's heart might spring up and bear fruit unto eternal life many people believe that these people have little natural affection but some touching instances of their care and love for each other have come to our notice both among low and high castes a hindu who has a wife and four children called me to visit his wife who was very ill he is employed in one of the government schools receiving ten dollars a month and when i visited the house he offered me a dollar as a fee which i declined to accept as his means are so limited i give it gladly he said my wife's life is more to me than money another man with an income of three dollars a month offered me one dollar for my visit which of course i refused to take but when his wife's improvement was assured he felt like giving all that he had and insisted on my taking two dollars and a half leaving them only fifty cents for their food i might tell you of similar instances which have occurred in my practice showing that a hidden man is capable of loving and caring for his kindred december eighteenth four of our hospital patients have died this year one of them a village woman who was converted to christianity three years ago and baptized by our native pastor the reverend joel janvier was with us for two months and during the time bore her sufferings with great patience and resignation and in her last hours gave evidence that for her to die was gain for she was departing to be with jesus last june mary angelo a christian widow came to me asking me if she could have a room in the hospital for a time as she had no home i was very glad to give her a room on condition that she would read and talk with the sick in the hospital every day in their rooms and she did this very acceptably later i gave her a place in the dispensary as compounder and she has learned the work so quickly and is doing so well that i am now paying her four rupees a month and expect to have her as a regular student next year the girls of the medical class taught by dr dees have given good service in putting up prescriptions in the morning clinics 
the second decennial conference is to meet in calcutta on the twenty eighth of this month and many of our missionaries are planning to attend it this is a conference of missionaries of all denominations in india the first one was held in allahabad in eighteen seventy two with one hundred and thirty six members present representing nineteen missionary societies but it is expected that the number will be much larger this year i shall try to tell you a little about it in my next letter end of chapter ten recording by shena ser fresno california chapter eleven of a glimpse of india from the letters of dr clara a swain this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter eleven decennial conference at calcutta barili february seventeenth eighteen eighty three my dear m on the twenty fifth of december our party of missionaries from the north india conference started for calcutta to attend the decennial conference by special arrangement the railway company allowed members of the conference to travel in second-class carriages at intermediate class fares and the carriages put at our disposal consisted of two compartments with sliding doors between and five sleeping berths in each the two upper berths were put up in the daytime and the doors opened between the compartments giving us a good-sized room so that we could have prayers together every day and make visits to each other in the different carriages there were eight married missionaries with their wives ten missionaries without their wives nine single ladies besides bishop foster dr and mrs reed and mrs lore who with her daughter had come out to india to spend a year with her missionary daughter mrs mcgrew the other methodist conferences too were well represented the conference opened on thursday morning the twenty eighth the honorable sir henry ramsay as president giving an address of welcome in a most comprehensive speech which contained allusions to the different departments of mission work a prayer meeting was held every morning at half past seven o'clock continuing an hour and on sunday the thirty first there was a united communion service every day there were papers speeches and discussions on various topics participated in by missionaries of the different missions and the morning session of the fourth day was given to the ladies for the presentation of their special work there were four papers read one of them by miss thoburn on the education of native christian girls following the papers were short speeches by several ladies on their own line of work mrs mcgrew made a neat little speech on medical work in which she referred to me as the pioneer woman medical missionary in india and said that one of my medical students has been carrying on in her old station a medical work larger than she herself had in hand she also mentioned one of them who had given valuable assistance during the cholera epidemic in barili to whose obedience practical insight and general efficiency the civil surgeon gave unqualified testimony dr thoburn spoke several times very effectively on preaching to the heathen development of native agency development of spiritual life and enthusiasm in the churches of india all of which are subjects in which he is deeply interested bishop foster was an interested listener but did not speak and dr reed the senior missionary secretary of our board in america 
spoke only at the public missionary meeting but they afterward expressed their pleasure in having the privilege of seeing such a body of devoted missionaries and hearing what had been accomplished in the past and what was being planned for the future after so many days of intense and high intellectual enjoyment it was natural that the physical nature should demand relaxation and our calcutta friends arranged to give us opportunity to see some of the sights of the capital city of india one delightful day was spent at barakpur twelve miles from calcutta we went in boats finding it very hot on the river and immediately on landing made our way to the great banyan tree the largest in india covering a great space of ground with its offshoots which form perfect arches and galleries it is said that sixteen thousand people can sit beneath its shade to dine it is very old but continues to throw out roots from its numerous branches the roots are really cared for each being placed in a hollow bamboo as it shoots downward to the ground upon which a little mound of earth is built up to receive it when it begins to grow rapidly until it forms a straight trunk which in turn sends branches from which other roots shoot downward this process may go on for centuries if care is taken we made our coffee and partook of our late breakfast under this tree feeling that nature's dining room was a most delightful one but this gigantic tree was not the only attraction in the gardens there are beautiful lawns and shrubs palms and an endless variety of plants roses in great profusion heliotrope and other sweet plants fountains playing in marble basins and a great variety of richly colored crotons i brought home some small croton plants and have them growing in pots in the veranda after the seven days of the conference and two days of sightseeing the most of us were ready to return to our work i have not mentioned that dr thoburn's church in damtola street was selected for the conference as the most commodious central and suitable place in calcutta arrangements for our entertainment among the methodist families of the city had been made previous to our arrival and we made some most delightful acquaintances and fast friends among them this year there were twenty-seven different missionary societies represented by four hundred and seventy-five members among them were three veterans the rev mr bennett of the baptist mission who came out to india in eighteen twenty nine rev george bowen of our methodist mission and dr murray mitchell of the free church of scotland who read a farewell in verse of his own composing and dr newton who came to india only five years later than mr bennett each of these veterans made speeches which brought tears to many eyes and i am sure inspired the younger missionaries present to renewed interest in the work of evangelizing this dark land february twenty second my dear sister we had such a good conference at lucknow this year it opened on the eleventh of january with bishop foster of america presiding dr and mrs reed from new york were present and mrs lore who has spent more than a year in india she and mrs reed added much to the interest of the meetings of the ladies society and they in turn were much interested in our business sessions bishop foster and dr reed were invited to address us on monday which they did much to our edification several of our missionaries go home this year mr and mrs parker who you remember were home thirteen years ago mr and mrs badley 
Mrs. Hoskins with her little Willie, and Mrs. McGrew with her three children, her mother and sister, Mrs. and Miss Lore. Mrs. Hoskins goes to be for a time with her two boys, whom she left in America over five years ago. Mrs. Johnson will probably go in this company, and they will have with them Mrs. Anandabai Joshi, a cousin to Pundita Ramabai. Mrs. Joshi goes to America to study medicine. Bishop Foster and Dr. and Mrs. Reed are visiting our most important mission stations and are much pleased with what they see of the work. We have enjoyed their visit here very much. The bishop was greatly touched and affected by the sight of so many half-clad and poorly fed people as he sees everywhere. He says he does not see how we can get used to it. He thinks our sympathies must be constantly wrought up by the conditions around us. I do not know what he would think if he could go with me into some of the houses in the city. There is great need of more missionaries in this part of India. Every day the way is opening for more schools, more zanana visiting, more of all kinds of mission work. Nearly everyone in our mission is really overworked. We are training some good helpers from among the Anglo-Indian population who will be able to relieve us in some parts of our work in the future. The third young woman has come today to join our medical work. You will remember that I mentioned in some of my earlier letters a Miss Jor, who was a teacher in the orphanage. She was with us seven years, living a part of the time in our family. Two years ago, she married and went to Simla to live, and last June, she came to me as a patient. She died here before I went to Calcutta. I called three physicians for consultation, and they declared it a very critical case, and there was no hope for her recovery. When I told her this, she said, It is all right. I have trusted the Lord for many years and I can still trust him. And she passed away perfectly resigned to the Lord's will. We are having the coldest weather that was ever known in Barili, so people say. There has been very heavy snow on the mountains. In Nainital, the snow is five feet deep. From our veranda, we can see the snowy mountain tops quite plainly on a clear day. March 15th we have just been through the process of house cleaning and shall be nice and clean for about two weeks at the end of that time spider webs dust and insects innumerable will accumulate and the doors windows and curtains will be so soiled that a stranger might wonder if there were a housekeeper on the premises i take a glance into all the rooms occasionally to see if the bearer does his work properly and when things get too bad we turn everything out and have another cleaning day we all go out to our work early in the morning and come back to breakfast at eleven o'clock by that time we are too tired to care very much how things look our drawing-room is usually beautified with flowers which makes it look fresh and pretty and the gardener generally has flowers for the dining table and we have some lovely ferns on the veranda october first the dasara meetings begin on the seventh of this month and we are all planning to attend the rev dr phillips will have charge of the meetings you may have met him when he has been in america on furlough he is a grand christian man beloved by all who know him the phillips family were among the oldest of the missionary families and dr phillips and his sisters are of the second generation we expect that dr and mrs butler will be at the meetings what a pleasure it will be to them to visit their old mission field and see the wonderful progress that has been made since they left india fifteen years ago 
December 28th. During the last six months, it has been our lot to care often for the dying and to point the bereaved to him who is able to make sorrow a blessing. We have had some changes in our course of workers, one leaving to engage in other work and another coming to take her place, also a young woman to join Dr. Dees's class in the dispensary and give what help she can wherever needed. Many of our patients have come from villages twenty and thirty miles distant. We are always glad to give them something to think about as well as to prescribe for their physical ailments. During the year we have had opportunity to give the gospel to thousands, some of whom have listened gladly. Only he who knows all hearts can tell the results of the year's work. In some instances, we have visited in their own homes those who have been patients in the hospital and spoken words of comfort to them. One of these visits we can never forget. A little boy of two years, who had been a patient of mine since he was a few months old, was brought to the hospital one morning, and after a few hours he died. He was the last of five children, and the grief of his parents was terrible. No language can describe the hopeless lamentations of his mother or the look of desolation on her face. We tried to comfort her, but our efforts were vain. After she had gone to her home, I went to see her, taking with me one who knew the woman and her sad history. When we sat down... She began to talk about her boy, and we said, Let us tell you where he is now. And we began to talk about heaven and its inhabitants, where her little ones are now safe. A look of intense eagerness came into her face, and she said, How do you know this? What proof have you that this is true? We replied, God has told us, and we will read about it from the book he has given. Then she said, Let me call my mother-in-law, that she may hear also. So the mother and father and grandmother and some of the neighbors listened eagerly, while we read and talk to them of the place where their treasures had been gathered. The description of the new Jerusalem caught their attention. The twelve gates, each gate one single pearl, it seemed incredible. They thought of the large gates in their own city, and wondered how there could be a pearl large enough to be one gate, and then twelve of such gates. Natives are very fond of pearls, and this description pleased them. It was worth the journey to India to witness that poor mother's interest in what we read, and the comfort which we could give her. We are praying earnestly that the light which has begun to dawn in her heart may grow brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. Barili, January 18, 1884 My dear sister, I have just returned from our conference at Kanpur and have come back disappointed that I could not get Miss Hyde to help me in my work here this year. We need two doctors here in Barili. The work has become so large and there are so many outside calls that it is really beyond one person's ability to care for it properly. But I shall have to work alone for another year. It was a great pleasure to have Dr. and Mrs. Butler with us at conference. We all enjoyed Dr. Butler's sermons very much, also Mrs. Butler's presence in our women's meetings. We are having a very cold winter, so cold that the flowers do not blossom as usual. Everything has been touched with frost. Even our vegetable garden does not yield us the usual supply for our table. The days are much like late autumn days in America, just before the snow comes, but they are very bright and clear. There has been no rain since early in September, and our vegetables and flowers have to be well watered to make them grow at all. 
i suppose you have had this beautiful evening glow in america we read of its being seen in all parts of the world some nights it is very red and the sky is so clear that the effect of the glow is beautiful february thirteenth last month i came very near being killed i was called out in the country about one hundred miles away to visit the family of a nawab and went part of the way by train and then across country for thirty miles in a native conveyance i got out there very well but coming back i rode an elephant one of the men of the family was celebrating the marriage of his son and had invited five thousand guests so every conveyance was in use for the marriage procession and the best they could do for me was to give me an elephant my native assistant and i mounted the elephant and just as we were passing out of the yard the driver said we must lower our heads or we would get hurt the yard was enclosed by a high wall and had a gate fifteen feet high with a beam across the top i thought my head was as low as i could get it but the beam caught me under the chin and at the side of my head my assistant screamed and the driver backed the elephant at once thus saving my head but it was black and sore for some days one of the governors of north india was killed in this way december twenty ninth many times during the past year when very poor and suffering women and children have been brought to us we have rejoiced that we have so comfortable a place in which to receive them i am quite sure if those who twelve years ago gave so liberally toward the building of the hospital were to see how much comfort it has brought to hundreds of women who in their own homes have known only hardship and privation they would realize that their investment has yielded a valuable dividend at present the patients in the hospital are of the most needy class one is a beggar whose only home is a little hut on the shore of the ganges others from villages whose chief characteristics are poverty and disease and others are some of the most wretched poor of our own city sufficient food to satisfy their hunger would in itself be a luxury but when to this is added clean rooms comfortable beds and kindly ministrations it must seem to them as if they had entered into a new world my ganges beggar and her husband were professional beggars the man died and since his death the woman who is blind has been going on her rounds led by a boy apparently eight years of age one morning she appeared before me with twin babies in her arms saying she had come to give me her babies i saw that she was blind and examined her eyes then i said if i take your babies you must stay and nurse them for me i will treat your eyes and give you your food for taking care of them for me i asked her if she would give me the other boy oh no she said he has to lead me about but if i cure your eyes you will not need him to lead you i answered she consented to be treated and i gave her a room in the hospital at first she would disappear for a few days to visit her old friends by the river but she became more contented to stay as time went on and now the sight of one eye is partially restored i told her of the boy's orphanage at shah Jahanpur, and of the widow's home there where she could care for her baby boys till they were old enough to go into the orphanage and she consented to go there so we are arranging to send her soon there have been four deaths in the hospital this year rebecca gowan who had served so faithfully in the dispensary for ten years came back to us very ill but we hoped 
by change from the hills and good care she might regain her health but it was too late and after suffering patiently for three months she passed away quietly trusting in him whom she had loved and served nearly all her life in her death the mission has lost an exemplary christian and a faithful worker we are just beginning to build a little church at aonla twenty miles from barili with the one hundred dollars which our cousin mrs day and her sunday school class have sent me dr d and i went out there to purchase the land and he has arranged to have the church built of unbaked brick with windows and two doors and a grass mat for the people to sit on it will cost perhaps fifty dollars more besides the price of the land but this is already promised if needed and the building will meet the need of the congregation for a long time there has been a good number of converts in this place during the past year and it seems necessary to organize a church and send a native pastor to teach them and keep them together i can hardly realize that i have been so long in india as this date indicates end of chapter eleven recording by shena sayer fresno california chapter twelve of a glimpse of india from the letters of dr clara a swain this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter twelve call to rajputana ketri rajputana may eighth eighteen eighty five my dear m last february a native gentleman secretary to the raja of ketri rajputana called on me in bareilly and asked me if i would go to ketri to visit the wife of the raja if i should be sent for officially he said he had visited two lady physicians before coming to me and had learned of their ability and success and was taking his report to the raja he could not tell who would be chosen i did not suppose that i should ever hear from him again however i told him that if i should be sent for i could arrange my work so that i could spend a month with the rani as was desired about the first of march i received a telegram from the secretary asking me to be ready to leave for ketri in ten days i arranged my work as i had promised and on the ninth day the secretary arrived to escort me he wished me to take an english nurse my cook and any other servants necessary to my comfort saying that i was not to regard the expense so i thought i was justified in taking a native christian teacher and a young lady friend as companion for the secretary told me that there were no europeans nearer than the railway station seventy-two miles away there were seven in our company beside the escort when we reached the end of our railway journey we found very elaborate arrangements for our transport across the country there was a camel chariot drawn by four camels two palanquins carried by seventeen men each two riding horses and a few miles out from ketri we were joined by two huge elephants there was also a unique conveyance called a rath drawn by two beautiful white oxen this was for the native women there were more than one hundred men servants sent for our service i need not tell you that this was a very novel and enjoyable journey though it was slow and rather wearisome for with all our different conveyances and the changing from one to another there was not much bodily comfort our chariot had not easy pliable springs like a home carriage the elephant shook us up and down 
and when we were in the palanquins we were swung as in a hammock and fearfully shaken the first twenty miles in chariot and palanquins were quite long enough to make us hail with pleasure our camp where we found a tent ready for us and a most enjoyable breakfast prepared by my cook who with the other servants had gone on in advance we rested through the day and about four o'clock started on the next stage of our journey arriving in the early morning at koth a large mohammedan city in the khetri state where the rajah had a rest house before we resumed our journey in the afternoon we mounted one of the elephants and rode through the city the elephant was told to kneel and a ladder was placed against his side for us to mount when we were seated in the howdah the elephant raised himself on his front legs and we held on tightly to the sides of our little carriage while with a mighty heave the animal gained an upright position the mahout or driver sat on the elephant's neck and guided him with his feet and an occasional endearing word it soon became known that one of the ladies was a doctor and when we returned to the house we found quite a number of people who had come to make their salams and ask for medicine it was quite three o'clock when we started for khetri the longest stage of our journey it was as tiresome to the men as to us and my cook fell asleep on his horse and slipped off without awaking after a while it was noticed that his horse was riderless and one of the men went back and found him asleep in the sand we ladies several times during the forty miles changed from palanquin to chariot and to elephant to rest our weary limbs but like all things our journey had an end and in due time we were housed in a tent in khetri and we remained in the tents until the twentieth of april we were told on our arrival that the rajah and rani had gone to a place three miles distant for a change so we felt secure of a few hours rest before being obliged to meet them they returned before noon and the messenger was sent to us with their salams and the request that we would come to them at four o'clock we went at the appointed time and were received by the rajah in his palace after a short conversation he showed us his library and then conducted us to the rani's palace and presented us to her in a simple and courteous manner the rani rose and extended her hand to receive us with her face uncovered she led me to a chair beside her with the other two ladies next me while the rajah seated himself at her left and talked to her and to us in a very pleasant manner fourteen of the court women stood just behind the rani seven on each side ready for her service they were very handsomely dressed after a little time the sister of the rajah came in and going to the rani bowed to her and was then presented to us and the rajah immediately took his leave leaving us to enjoy the society of the ladies unrestrained as this was a formal call we did not remain long but took our leave after i had made an appointment to visit the rani professionally the next morning after i had been here about two weeks and the rani showed signs of improvement the rajah proposed that i remain as physician to the women of the palace this was most unexpected 
and required much thought and prayer before i could decide to leave my work in barili and the missionary society which had cared for me for so many years but each day as i became more acquainted with the people and saw the grand opening for missionary work a field comprising so many thousands of people with no missionary or religious teacher in this part of the country i began to see the hand of the lord in bringing me here and the more i prayed the more i saw the lord in it all and i accepted the proposition on condition that the young lady who had accompanied me as companion be allowed to remain with me and that we both be allowed to work among the people as christian women the rajah make no objection to this so i have engaged to remain here two years after which i will be at liberty to go to america if i wish both the rajah and rani are very kind and say that they would like me to remain permanently though they will not urge me to stay longer than the two years for which i have engaged to remain they say that my name will always remain on the palace register and they will regard me as their own as long as i live i would not have accepted the situation for the salary only for i have enjoyed my work in the mission but there is a great opportunity for missionary work here without expense to the society in america and it seems to be an opening of which some christian should take advantage so as i have been called here i see no reason why i should not be the one to start a work here i have had very good success in my practice since i came and i find it very pleasant i like living out among the natives they are very kind and friendly and we visit among them freely i believe this is the best way if we hope to reach them and win their confidence as soon as i could conveniently do so i spoke to the rajah asking permission to open a school for girls and he not only gave full consent but said he would use his influence to induce his people to send their daughters to us so we have now eighteen bright little girls coming to us every morning the rajah gives them a pound of wheat flour every morning to encourage their attendance this being equal to what they would earn as a day's wages he also gave to each a new skirt and head covering so that they could come to school in clean clothes and he promised to give an extra pound of flour every saturday to those who are not once absent through the week miss pannell my companion teaches the girls and the rani has engaged her to teach her and some of the court women we find the rajah and rani most interesting people noble and generous and so kind and considerate that we can hardly realize that they are not christians if we might only be the means of bringing them to christ how glad i should be will you not join us in prayer for their conversion all things are possible with god i am sure that there is someone here to be saved by our coming the rajah and his secretary are the only english-speaking persons here besides ourselves we brought a good number of religious books portions of scripture and hymn books all in the hindi language and these we distribute as we have opportunity i suppose there are more than thirty persons here who are already singing our hymns for we have taught them to all who are willing to learn some of the hymns are very popular and the singing women in the palace sing them to the rani every evening the rani says our hymns are purer than theirs and she likes them much better think what a change this is for some of their hymns are so vile that we would not listen to them now christian hymns reach every woman in the palace we find that we can sing religion to these people when we cannot preach it openly 
i do pray that we may see some fruit from our labor here and that we may be very faithful in improving every opportunity to present christ a house is being repaired for us and we hope to move into it soon as it is getting to be too hot to remain in tents much longer it is a native house without a window in it and we shall probably not enjoy it very much but it will be arranged so that we can endure it for a while until the new house which the state will build for us later will be ready for occupancy the place is a pleasant one it is situated in the valley and surrounded on all sides by low hills on one of the highest of these are a fort and palace in which the seven wives of the late raja live he died at the age of twenty-seven years leaving nine widows all i believe childless the present raja is an adopted son and was educated for the position which he now fills he has but one wife the rani is a very bright and beautiful woman about twenty-two years of age i have not met so charming a native lady since i have been in india the raja is well educated and the people seem to respect and like him as a ruler i enjoy my work here i have opened a dispensary for the women and children of the city and surrounding villages but have not had many patients coming there yet as the people seem afraid of us not having been accustomed to meet white people they lack confidence in us and seem to fear to take anything from a christian's hand we are the only christians in this native state but there seems to be a number of good hindus here who practice self-denial and pray often to their gods believing that by long prayers and bathing and abstaining from meat they are working out their own salvation i quite enjoy spending an hour with the rani she is very good and sincere and she talks so much like a christian that i sometimes think she is not far from the kingdom she sits at her prayers for two or three hours every day besides attending to all the bathing and ceremonial purifications that her religion enjoins upon her june tenth i returned to bareilly on the twenty fifth of april and remained there just a month settling my affairs and making over my work to my successor it was not an easy matter to leave my home and all my interests in bareilly i did not quite realize what it would be when i accepted this situation but now that it is all over and i am back in ketri i feel quite at home and watch with new interest the opening and development of the work the people here are rajputs and are different from the people of northern india in their language habits and food their temples too are quite different we have a very good house but think of it all this hot weather we have been without doors except the one at our bedroom all the other entrances are covered with straw mats which can be rolled up we are having doors made and they will soon be hung the birds squirrels and lizards have full liberty all through the house but we do not mind them unless they make too much noise or get into our food july twenty eighth eighteen eighty five i hope you are less anxious about me now that negotiations apparently satisfactory have been concluded between england and russia i do not think we should be in immediate danger even if there should be war india is much better protected has more english soldiers military stores and railways than before the mutiny and the natives are more loyal to the government than at that time fancy my learning to ride an elephant yes and the camel too i took my first ride on the camel ten days ago and rode with ease about four miles 
the camel driver sat in front and i sat behind him on a side saddle tied on the back hump of the camel the camel kneels down for the person to mount and alight and the motion then is something dreadful you are thrown back when the animal unfolds his four legs and thrown forward when he raises himself on his hind legs i can ride on the elephant with almost as much ease as in a carriage so you see i shall be quite ready for a speedy flight if war should come i called last evening on the families of the prime minister and his brother the former prime minister one of them has a wife and four children the other has two wives who are sisters but there are no children both families are wealthy the women were weighted down with jewels they know no other life than the seclusion of their homes sitting on their cots chewing pan admiring their jewels and being waited on by their servants we asked if the little girls might attend our school and the ladies said they could not allow them to come with the children we have but they would like them to be taught if we could come to them the eighteen little girls in our school are learning to knit and are interested in their work as well as in their lessons the rani has a lesson regularly every day often for two or three hours she can write an english letter in a very good hand and read short sentences in english she says her life is much happier because of our being here she has longed for a friend her court women are all in the position of servants to her july tenth eighteen eighty five my dear m i have had a visit from the rajah's secretary who came with a request that i would celebrate my birthday which occurs on the eighteenth of this month in the american fashion he said that the rani and several of the ladies from the palace would like to come for a little visit and that some of the native gentlemen would like to come and pay their respects it is the custom here to make a birthday anniversary a high day visits are paid and valuable presents sent i am told that the rani is having a very beautiful gold chain or necklace made for me and she wishes to come and put it on my neck herself i told the secretary that i was not accustomed to wear anything of the kind and i would prefer that the rani would not do it but he said that it will give the rani great pleasure to present it to me and i must not refuse so i suppose i must accept it and wear it sometimes when i go to the palace i am trying to think what i can do to please the women on the great occasion i might follow a german custom and have a bran pyramid with the proper number of wax tapers august fourth my birthday party was a success i think for all seemed to enjoy it our sitting-room upstairs has white walls panelled in blue and the white lace curtains at the doors were looped with blue ribbons a thin white floor cloth was spread over the blue and orange striped carpet showing the colors through giving quite a pretty effect i borrowed a white marble stand from the rajah's secretary and wreathed it with myrtle and on it was placed my birthday cake which i made myself heavily coated with white frosting about four o'clock the rajah and his suite came to call the prime minister and principal men came upstairs with the rajah and the others remained below the rajah offered congratulations and said it was a happy circumstance that my fiftieth birthday should occur in khetri and he hoped that i would see many more with them other complimentary speeches were made the prime minister referring to my successful work among them a little time elapsed after the gentlemen retired before the rani arrived 
accompanied by the chief officials of the state who remained below while the rani and her women came upstairs the rani made a pretty little speech of congratulation and said how happy she was to have me with her and what a benefit to the women and children of the state was my presence and my medical knowledge you are to me in the place of a mother she said with a charming smile she commented on the delicate appearance of our white room which she said gave her pleasure miss pannell and i made an effort at general conversation to include the women and i distributed pan among them a point of native etiquette which we are careful to observe that for the rani was wrapped in gold leaf and for the others in silver leaf this visit lasted about half an hour and when the rani rose to leave she fastened a beautiful necklace about my neck then all made their salams and retired the state band played outside all through both visits after all this ceremony was over miss pannell and i sat down to enjoy a quiet cup of tea and a slice of the cake which had graced the party and so ended my fiftieth birthday the most unique of all my birthdays for had not royalty shed lustre upon it have i ever told you that we are living in a tomb it has been repaired and remodelled sufficiently to make it a habitable house the person for whom it was built was cremated and his ashes were carried to the ganges and sprinkled upon its waters we never think about its being a tomb unless someone mentions it to us it stands in a garden and it is quite artistic with its arches and pillars prettily carved supporting the domed roof it is built of stone and has a stone floor formerly there were no partitions but it has been divided so as to make two small side rooms one of which we use as a pantry and the other for a storeroom for trunks and clothing the rest of the space we have converted into three rooms by hanging curtains in the arches the walls are frescoed each room being done in a different tint the dome is blue the sky tint and shades down into a rosy flush to meet the white walls which look as delicate as porcelain it is really a very pretty place and we very much enjoy our cozy home september fifteenth early this morning i went up to the palace to see the rani and found her getting ready for her worship when i saw all that had to be done before she was ready to say her prayers i could not help wondering how many of our people would pray if they had to go through such a process the maid whose duty it is to prepare everything had washed the room in which the water was heated as well as the one in which the rani bathes which must always be done just before her prayer time the rani put on a clean yellow silk sari letting loose her hair which flowed over her shoulders she looked very pretty and the very image of simplicity when quite ready she enters a large brass cabinet in which are placed all the articles required in her worship and there she sits without having taken any food until three o'clock in the afternoon saying her prayers over and over and bathing in wine a little image of krishna about a teaspoonful of wine is poured over the image which is about two inches in height and then she drinks this wine the rani had previously told me about this worship and said that it was not the same that she was taught in her mother's home when she was married and came to ketri to live a pundit was sent to teach her the form of worship observed here she said that she did not like it that it seemed foolish to her and she did not get any comfort from it only that she was obeying what she was taught to do 
she said that she wrote to her mother describing the worship and she wrote back telling her that she must stop it at once as they were teaching her to drink i am trying to persuade her to take a glass of milk before she goes to her prayers as she is not strong enough to go without food so long every day and i do not see how she can be benefited by the treatment unless she keeps up her strength the rani has some fine dresses and elegant jewels which she showed us the other day one of her state dresses is a wonderful production it is a delicate yellow in color and of very thin material but the skirt is so heavy that i could hardly lift it from the floor it is cut in small gores and is seventy yards wide trimmed around the bottom with silver lace a quarter of a yard in width a jacket of the thinnest gauze material with a veil of the same completes this lovely costume and with it she wears pearls on her head neck and arms she is small and has a bright pretty face with large black eyes and is very refined in her manner no one sits in her presence until she invites them to do so and no one goes into her apartments without having received permission to enter i do not know when we shall learn all the ins and outs of native court etiquette we have made several mistakes i am sure but the rani overlooks them december fifth last month we had a very pleasant visit to jaipur the rajah was obliged to go to meet the viceroy and as he intended to take the rani with him he invited us to accompany her we were delighted with the prospect of this novel journey of a hundred miles across country with such a procession as we knew there would be for the royal people in india never travel without a host of followers there were three hundred soldiers a brass band and one thousand men it took one hundred men to carry the flagstaff which was in one piece unjointed there was a palanquin for the rani one for her sister-in-law who is spending a year with her one for the little princess and one for me there were seventy-five men to carry the palanquins then there was an elephant for the raja one for the princess and her attendants and one for miss panel and me when we wanted to change from the palkis there were over two hundred camels some for riding and others for carrying the luggage and for the servants the tents with their furnishings were carried on seventeen ox carts to complete the cavalcade there were two hundred horses and ten native conveyances covered with white cloth and drawn by fine-looking white oxen for the women attendants of the rani and for the twelve schoolgirls we were taking with us six camels drew the three gun carriages on which were guns to fire a salute as we entered the towns on our way i must not forget the treasury cart which carried the money for our expensive journey perhaps you can imagine something of the appearance of such a procession the men were all dressed in oriental costume the long upper garment and pajamas or drawers and the sash of red cloth their turbans were red yellow pink or green such a variety of color made our procession look quite gay among the green fields through which we passed we marched from twelve to thirty miles a day and were five days making the journey we stopped at night and the camels were unloaded tents put up beds made and our food cooked and eaten and after a refreshing sleep were always ready for the next day's journey we enjoyed it all very much and happily no serious accident occurred now and then an unruly camel would run away and throw off his load 
a few chairs were broken and my cook grieved over his quilt which had been torn by a biting camel it was amusing to hear the remarks made by the men who were sitting outside our tents talking over the adventures of the day some of them had very funny experiences natives enjoy a joke or anything funny more than we do if that is possible i could almost write a book about this journey and our stay in jaipur where we remained a full month the reception of the viceroy was grand if i had time i would write you all about it but even then you would get but a faint idea of the affair the floral decorations and the illuminations were beautiful we had a fine large house not far from the palace where the rani stayed we had taken with us everything that we would need for housekeeping so that we were very comfortable the rajah gave us a carriage and pair for our own use and we improved the time in sightseeing for there is a great deal to see in jaipur the city is about one hundred and fifty years old and is called one of the finest native cities in india with its palaces and fine public buildings and its beautiful gardens the public garden has a large collection of rare and beautiful trees and plants and there is quite a zoo connected with it at ten o'clock on friday morning the twentieth i called by appointment on her excellency lady dufferin at the residency where the viceroy and party are being entertained the very cordial reception i received relieved me from all embarrassment and we had a delightful chat for nearly an hour about medical work she was especially interested in some of my experiences in this department her idea is to form a national association with the central committee and the central fund with branches all over india managed locally to promote female medical tuition and medical relief and the establishment of hospitals for women all over the country and to raise subscriptions for this object ketri february twenty two eighteen eighty six my dear miss g i wish you were here to-day to see my cosy little home and to sit down with us in our little drawing-room over a jar of coals to have an old-fashioned visit this evening i have two women with me this winter one for the dispensary and one for the school both are very pleasant and companionable we have fine times these lovely days going out into the country on excursions and occasionally we go out with the rajah's party on a hunting trip it gives a little variety to a rather monotonous life and the young women enjoy it exceedingly i do not dislike it myself for comfortable arrangements are made for us and we have a good elephant to ride we keep at a distance from the shooting party and are only onlookers a few days ago we went out tiger shooting we could not ride all the way on the elephant nor even on the horses up the steep mountain side when we arrived at the place where the tiger was supposed to be the rajah placed the men at certain distances and gave us seats a little way behind himself with men on each side of us who were ordered to fire if the tiger came in our direction then about one hundred men surrounded the place and made a great uproar with drums and horns screaming loudly and presently a huge tiger sprang out from under the bushes in the ravine and started up the hill opposite us when it was in just the position for a good shot the rajah fired and the animal turned its course toward the gun and came in our direction the men all fired and continued to do so until the poor tiger was so wounded that it was glad to lie down and play dead for a while when he began to show signs of life again a few more shots ended his existence it took fifty men to bring the huge beast home to ketri 
this shooting affair occurred only about four miles from our house as soon as the tiger was dead the rajah sent a messenger on horse to tell the rani that it had been killed and would be brought into khetri at once for her to see the new year finds us pleasantly situated with the satisfaction of feeling that the time we have spent here has not been without good results our acquaintance among the high caste families has greatly increased and is to us a gain in influence among all classes i hope you have seen the letter i wrote to m about our visit to jaipur we took twelve of our schoolgirls with us and they had lessons regularly every day seeing their pleasure in the trip quite added to our enjoyment miss pannell took them all to the public gardens one day and they were much interested in the strange animals and birds they saw in the zoo although monkeys are common enough where the girls reside those in the zoo were particularly interesting to them there being several varieties from other countries the antics of these sagacious animals caused many a hearty laugh the girls enjoyed wandering through the lovely garden but they did not touch a flower much as they admired them on our way to and from jaipur i found opportunities to give medicine and advice in the villages that we passed in one i gave a little book to a man but on our way back he brought it back to me saying that he was afraid to keep it last week the rajah came to examine the school and he expressed himself much pleased with the progress the girls are making some of them are very bright and read quite fluently they are themselves very proud of their attainments they like to take a peep into our rooms one day miss pannell was using the sewing machine and a little girl who was looking on said oh miss sahiba what a wonderful thing you must worship anything that does such wonderful work miss pannell said no indeed we worship the one who gives the brains and the skill to make the many wonderful things that are in the world we should worship only the one great god april tenth we have had a little patient here for two days a little girl who was stolen from her home by a wicked woman who took the child's jewels off her and threw her into a well fortunately the water was only about two feet deep and the poor little thing crawled into a crevice on the side of the well and so escaped being killed by the stones which were thrown in after her she was in the well all night and being afraid to answer the woman when she called to her she was supposed to be dead in the morning two of the rani's servants went to the well to bathe and as they let down their brass vessel to draw up water the little girl caught hold of it and called out take me out of the well they drew her out and brought her to me i did not find her badly injured only a few flesh wounds and her nerves shaken from fear and from being so long in the water she kept in bed for several days refusing to get on her feet but finally began to rally from the shock and to-day is almost well the rani has been very kind to the child she arranged to have her taken to the palace yesterday and gave her the worth of her jewels in money and two suits of clothes the little girl is the daughter of a poor widow who lives in the city the wicked woman who stole her has been put in jail april twelfth news came to-day of the death of one of the wives of the late rajah she was the foster mother of the present rajah the only mother he ever knew as he was given into her care in his infancy this rani had gone on a visit to her relatives was taken suddenly ill and died before news of her illness reached khetri the rajah started at once to perform the ceremonies due from a son and carried her ashes to sprinkle upon the waters of the sacred ganges 
immediately after the news of the rani's decease reached the palace it was communicated to the head men of the towns and villages of the state that all the heads of families might shave their heads which is the sign of mourning among the hindus at the same time an invitation was given to the feast in honor of the deceased rani on the twelfth day after her death at the appointed time about five thousand men and boys arrived and when all were assembled they were seated in rows of fifties on the ground with a broad passage between the rows for the servers of the feast to pass on such occasions the feast consists of a sweet made of crude sugar ghee or clarified butter and some kind of grain formed into balls and each individual receives three of these balls the three weighing a little less than two pounds a number of men were appointed to distribute these from baskets handing three balls to each individual until all were served this was an interesting sight to me everything was done so quietly and so systematically and in two hours it was all over and the people were ready to return to their homes a number of the relatives and friends of the late rani had been invited to come in and mourn and condole with the family and every day these village women gathered in the library adjoining the rani's apartments where they sat on the floor for hours weeping and wailing and speaking of the good works and the kindness of the departed rani one day the rani asked me to speak to the women and tell them how wrong it is for them to destroy the girl babies that are born to them when they feel that there are more girls in the family than they want or can afford to marry off quite a crowd of women were assembled and the rani quieted them and asked them to listen to what i had to say i spoke through an interpreter as they would hardly understand my hindustani and they listened very attentively and occasionally remarked to each other about something that was said i told them of the great sin in god's sight of taking the life of a little one that he had given them to take care of for him and this seemed to give some of them a new idea poor things they had never thought of it as sin for it had become a custom among their people the expense attending a marriage is a source of great evil and where there are several girls in one household to be married the family is in many cases ruined financially the rani has told me that in the case of very poor families in the state the rajah gives a certain amount toward defraying the marriage expenses hoping that this terrible custom of girl infanticide may be done away with of course the marriage of a poor girl would not be very expensive as the arrangements would be simple and not much expected in the way of dowry the natives say a girl takes but a boy brings End of chapter 12. Recording by Shena Sayre, Fresno, California. Chapter 13 of A Glimpse of India from the Letters of Dr. Clara A. Swain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain chapter thirteen a summer resort mount abu april twelfth eighteen eighty seven dear m we have been away from khetri since last september spending some months in agra and returning to jaipur where the rajah had some business to attend to on the fifteenth of february and on the twenty sixth of march we left for abu road where i received your letter the rajah came on with his camp a week before we did as we were to come by rail 
he engaged three private carriages for us and a luggage van and truck for our belongings our carriages were separated from the train and left at a distance from the railway station and we went into them at night the women being carefully shielded from sight so that none of the servants saw their faces the rani was carried to her carriage door in a small covered conveyance borne by her men servants and a red cloth was so arranged that she could step from the conveyance into the carriage where miss panel stood to receive her the windows and blinds were closed but as soon as the train was well started and at a distance from the station all were thrown open and the rani enjoyed a full view of the fields on each side bathed in the lovely moonlight and they were kept open in the day also when the train was in motion we had strict orders to close the windows at the first signal of approach to a station and the orders were obeyed the rani thinks it is delightful to ride in a railway train in the daytime when she can have all the windows open and see the lovely green fields and trees it is the only time that she ever sees much of the outside world we left the train at abu road where we remained for a week in the house of a native prince which he placed at our disposal until suitable arrangements could be made for so large a party to come up the mountain the palace women had each a queer little conveyance carried by three men to take them the fifteen miles up the mountain the rani miss panel and i had each a palki with twelve men and our luggage was carried by coolies and camels when we came to a spot where we could get water we stopped and our cook made tea and toast for us of which we ate seated in our palkis i quite enjoyed these simple ways of living with a few dishes which we carry in our lunch baskets we can sit down anywhere and take our food under a tree or by the roadside it does not matter much we have been on this sacred mountain of the hindus twelve days you have read in the history of india of mount abu its temples and sacred lake which tradition says krishna one of the hindu deities dug with his fingers thus making it a holy bathing place for his followers the lake is one mile long and half a mile wide with several small islands in it on which are rocks and palms making it look quite picturesque the famous jain temple is two miles from here it is not known when it was built but it was repaired in twelve o nine it is said that it cost eighteen million rupees it is white marble with fifty-two life-size statues of the goddess that the hindus worship the carvings on the ceilings and the pillars are quite wonderful and well worth travelling far to see this is the most ancient of the several jain temples here the climate is delightful the pink and white rose hedges are in full bloom just now and there are also several varieties of geraniums which make the place look like a bit of fairyland many years ago this mountain was the resort of devotees who wished to spend their life in seclusion and devote their time to the performance of religious ceremonies they lived in caves and among the rocks and subsisted on berries seeds and wild fruits tigers and bears abounded then as now and occasionally one of these devotees would be devoured by them a native man was today killed by a tiger about four miles from here we are living in a house owned by the maharaja of jadpur it is well furnished and the garden is pretty and bright with roses and many other flowers the raja and rani are in a house near us which belongs to the same maharaja on the fifteenth of the month his son the young prince of jadpur will arrive and he will occupy a part of this house with his tutor an english gentleman and we will go to a hotel to board 
Abu is the sanitorium for the English soldiers of Rajputana, and there is a school here for the daughters of soldiers. The barracks make the place appear quite populous, and the church is well attended. The agent general of Rajputana and many Europeans have their summer homes here. Ketri, February 10, 1888 Dear Sister, your letter giving me an account of Hattie's condition has decided me to leave for America as soon as I can arrange to do so. It will take a little time to settle up my affairs and secure my passage, but all will be done as soon as possible. The Rani is quite well and I feel that, as far as she is concerned, my work as a physician is accomplished. She is not at all happy at the thought of my leaving Ketri, she says she thought i would stay with them the remainder of my life still she says i know that your sister is nearer to you than i am and that your heart is with her i have learned to love the rani and her dear little daughter very much as well as some others here our stay in ketri has in many respects been very pleasant the rajah has kept his agreement with me to the letter it is now three years, or will be on the ninth of next month, since I came here, and I have become accustomed to my work and my surroundings. Our frequent trips to the country and distant villages have relieved the monotony of what would otherwise have been a lonely life, and though there was much to enjoy in them, there was usually a call of need for my services, and I have been able to benefit many suffering ones. I hope to secure a passage early in April. Our little school has been a great pleasure to us both. The girls are chiefly of the servant class, children of men under the Rajah's jurisdiction, and nearly all of them were betrothed when they came to us. They have been leaving one by one to go to their husband's homes, but what they have learned here will not be easily forgotten. We are thankful to have had nearly two years of seed sowing in these young hearts. We cannot hope to make much impression on the adult population who are so grounded in their own religion that they have no desire to learn of anything better. But we can see that our three years here have won us the confidence of the people and opened the way for more effective work in the future. Each of our pupils, as she lives, is given a gospel a hymn book and her school books together with pen and paper and we tell them that we want them to write to us and let us know about their life in their new homes we are hopeful that each of them may be able to teach others something that she has learned and so become a light in her home and in the community where she lives glasgow scotland may ninth eighteen eighty eight my dear sister, I left Ketri March 10th and went direct to Agra, intending to have a little visit with friends there before rejoining the Rani in Jaipur, where she was to meet me. Miss Knowles, who is to be my traveling companion to America, met me in Agra and as soon as my business there was over, she accompanied me to Jaipur, where we spent ten days very pleasantly. The Raja placed the courage and pair at our disposal, and we visited all places of interest, for Miss Knowles had not been there before. One evening, the Rani gave an entertainment to which we were invited. We found her sitting in state on a dais, surrounded by her women. She invited us to sit beside her, and we had some pleasant conversation before the entertainment began. It was a notch, a dance by professional dancing girls, a favorite entertainment with natives. The Rani was beautifully dressed and looked quite happy as she talked about her little girl and her hope that I would come back to them. The day before we were to leave, the Raja announced his intention to take the Rani to Bombay to see us off. He had engaged private carriages on the train, one for the Rani, and one for Miss Knowles and me. I sat with the Rani several hours each day, returning to Miss Knowles before evening and for our meals. 
a house had been engaged in bombay for the raja and rani and we went to our friends in the mission when we went to the steamer the raja got a carriage for the rani who went to the dock but did not alight her carriage was covered with a red covering and when we went to bid her good-bye at the carriage door the cover was partly drawn so that we could speak with her the raja went on board with us and was shown over the steamer and was much interested in all that he saw he said to me i shall go to england some time when we arrived in liverpool the steamer on which we expected to sail for america was just going out of the harbor so we were obliged to wait for another and we took advantage of the delay and went to the lakes returning to glasgow instead of liverpool as we found we could transfer and sail from this port boxes of curios and other things had been sent from india for the queen's jubilee and though the great exhibition was over we were in time to see some of the things we expect to sail for new york the day after tomorrow. letter from the rani of ketri received in america agra india december eleventh eighteen eighty eight my dear miss swain i have written two letters to you and the huzur sahib has also written to you but we have not yet received an answer we will hope to hear from you soon i am very anxious to hear from you about your health please let me know how you are i hope the rest and change are doing you good and that you feel stronger i trust that you will be able to return to india soon we want you to come back to us and we will be glad if you will bring your sister with you so that you may have her company and not be alone Catherine will not seem like home to me without you i am feeling pretty well and shall be glad when my troubles are over it is very cold in agra bai is getting to be a clever girl she can read and write hindi nicely and has written a letter to her father in jaipur she will write you a little letter in hindi to enclose in this letter she is learning the english alphabet and can print the letters nicely from a book with my love and salams and bai's love i remain your loving betty s k bai princess betty daughter brindisi italy november thirty eighteen eighty nine my dear sister just a month today since we left new york we are waiting for our steamer which is due here tomorrow morning and will sail in the evening reaching bombay probably december sixteenth the journey has been very pleasant so far though we have sometimes we read of the long railway journeys in liverpool we arranged to take cook's tourist tickets and after a few days rest we went up to london and spent five days in sightseeing visiting the dore gallery of which i must tell you another time from london we went to paris arriving just after the close of the exposition but we visited the eiffel tower and went up in the elevator when we reached the second landing three hundred sixty feet i stepped out but the rest of the party went to the top it is a magnificent structure after four days of enjoyment in paris we went to lucerne in switzerland where we remained three days we went by steamer to the foot of mount rigi and up the mountain five thousand five hundred feet by train on the steamer we met mrs hannah Whittle smith and her daughter who invited us to join them the view from the top of the mountain was grand the glaciers in the distance the high peaks around us and the soft feathery clouds below us with now and then a green mountain top on which were houses made a lovely scene it was warm and bright in the sunshine where we were but at lucerne it was dark and cloudy the great cloud hung over the town and lake like an umbrella 
Lucerne must be one of the loveliest spots on earth in the summer time. One evening and the next forenoon were all the time we had for Milan, where we arrived on the 25th, but we went to the cathedral and then started on to Venice, the city of canals and gondolas. Our stay there was delightful, but too short for all that we wished to see. When we had been to St. Mark's Square and Church, the Palace of the Doges, the glass works and the lace factories we congratulated ourselves that we had seen some of the wonders of the old world we passed over the bridge of sighs but the door leading to the prison was walled up we three unprotected females arrived in venice at night and fortunately found an official at the station who spoke english he inquired what hotel we wanted engaged a gondola for us and attended to our luggage and before we had time to realize our situation we were gliding softly through the grand canal to our hotel which we reached in about twenty-five minutes the hotel people were so kind and so glad to see us that we felt at home at once every one seemed desirous to make our stay pleasant i must tell you a little more about the lace works we saw the women making the lovely point lace sets which are so expensive in america and so much cheaper here at the factory a number of women from the prison are employed in making lace without remuneration and as the factory belongs to the government naturally the lace can be sold much cheaper than if made by paid labor there are many girls who are learning and these must work three years before they begin to earn anything there are a few women who get six cents a day the overseer said that most of the learners are girls from good families who do not need to work but are learning for their own pleasure he showed us some pieces of lace one yard of which took one person six months to make the distance from venice to brindisi gave us twenty-four hours of travel we saw the beautiful olive groves which line the shores of the adriatic on the left brindisi looks like an ancient town and the people seem poor and ignorant their houses look very uncomfortable but i noticed that there seems to be plenty of wine and beer here as elsewhere in italy our hotel is not a pleasant one it is cold and not very clean and the food is wretched the farming country around is beautiful and we have quite enjoyed our rides bombay india december eighteenth eighteen eighty nine we sailed from brindisi on the second of this month and reached bombay on the sixteenth i am resting a few days at the mission house before starting on my journey up country we had pleasant weather all the way except that a head wind impeded our progress somewhat and made it a little unpleasant to sit on the hurricane deck in the daytime we travelled second class from brindisi as the expense is much less but the table fare was not the thing for me the first sight that met my eyes as we came up to the dock was two happy faces from ketri one my old and trusted servant and the other a servant of the rajah who had been sent to make arrangements for my journey i was very glad to see them and felt irresponsible at once after receiving their salams and the good wishes of the rajah and family with a letter of welcome i left everything in their hands and drove with the other ladies to the mission house glad enough to get where i could have good food and a bed that does not rock with the waves of the sea miss knowles left us yesterday to visit friends in Pune for a few days then she goes to calcutta miss waugh left last night to join her parents in allahabad when i am ready to go up country i will go to agra to spend christmas with miss yerbury and i hope to attend the north india conference which will meet on the second of january end of chapter thirteen recording by shena sir
Fresno, California. Chapter 14 of A Glimpse of India From the Letters of Dr. Clara A. Swain This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 14 Return to Ketri Ketri January 3, 1890 Here I am at last in the house which was my home so long, tired and worn from my long journey, but I shall soon get rested and be all right again. Miss Pannell, the young lady who was my companion when I first came here, was quite ready to come back to Ketri with me. We traveled alone with fifty native men who had been sent to escort us across the plains and were out two nights in tents, traveling by day as it was safer for us with so small an escort. I was so late in arriving in the country that the Raja and Rani were obliged to return to their state, but they arranged for my journey so I had no trouble at all. It seems good to be back but I miss home friends and church privileges more than ever before. I found my house in order for me, curtains up and carpets down, and everything arranged as well as they know how. We were warmly welcomed. The Rani seems very happy to have us back again, and we are delighted to see the sweet little girl baby who was born while I was in America. February 10th yesterday was sunday and we had such a good time all by ourselves studying our bible lesson i have taken up hannah Whittall smith's method for this year and find it most interesting i think that we shall gain as much bible knowledge if we continue on this line as we would if we were to listen to a sermon every sunday I have been a little lonely and homesick since the excitement of meeting old friends has passed away. We see a great work to be done here in Ketri, but the soil is dry and hard. One needs a faith that will remove mountains to make an impression. Yesterday we fasted and prayed for more spiritual life and for four persons whom we very much wish may become Christians and work with us. Will you not join us in our prayers for these persons? We are having delightfully warm days, and the birds are singing merrily around our house, doing what they can to cheer us in our work. Our Polly says, Thank you. Call the doctor. Polly is sick. Give me a kiss. And then she whistles a quick waltz tune, which she has learned, but she generally breaks down in the midst of it. There are but a few sick people to look after these days. The prevailing disease just as this time is smallpox, and many children have died from it. The Hindus worship the goddess of smallpox and seldom use medicines for it. Occasionally, a Mohammedan or a low-caste person comes for medicine for a child. I vaccinated myself last Friday, and my arm begins to sting and pain me. I fear I shall be quite upset by it. February 24th I miss the church services much more than I did when I was here before. We had ours yesterday which warmed our hearts. Miss Pannell read two of Moody's sermons from his book entitled Heaven, while I listened and enjoyed them. In the evening, a Hindu gentleman called and was greatly interested in another reading from the same book. He said he would like to buy a copy for the truth was given so simply and plainly that he could understand it. He seemed affected by Moody's view of the life hereafter and his thought of this life as a schooling place for heaven. On Friday, I was called to see two wives of a high-caste Hindu. Poor women, they are sighing for children. There have been four childless wives in that family. Not to have children is considered a great calamity. The elder wife cried as she said, 
if god would give us even a little girl we would all be quite happy while i was in america these two women went on foot up to the snowy mountains an old religious mendicant whom they consulted told them that if they would walk all the way to badrinath they would surely have children they must sleep on the ground without shelter in order to attain their heart's desire they suffered all this hardship but are yet disappointed february twenty sixth last evening we were invited to dine with the rani at the palace a parsi woman from bombay was among the guests the rani's apartments looked very light and pretty with the many brightly lighted lamps and the little tables for each of us were well filled with all sorts of native food all sat on the floor on mats or cushions but i was honored with a stool the rani took occasion in the presence of all the guests and servants to pay me most elaborate compliments she spoke of the time when i came to her and she was so ill and after a time her dear little daughter was born to her and now she was in perfect health in real oriental praise she said the miss sahiba is so white that if she were in the most dense darkness her face would be a light this custom is like ours of giving toasts after dinner we have had some excitement this month a company of balloonists from america came here to give an exhibition and made a very successful parachute descent coming down very gently about half a mile from the palace gardens from which they ascended it was a pretty sight and i think all the hindus repeated the name of their gods which expressed their prayer for the safe return of the men the state gave them a thousand rupees and the rani sent a young man who assisted a present of one hundred rupees with this message try and get into some other business soon which will not endanger your life so much she thought his mother and friends at home must feel very anxious about him after this exhibition there were sports in the garden three elephants ran a race and one of them smoked a native pipe and took a prize this was our elephant which we ride she is very clever she can carry a lantern and she fans herself by holding the fan in her trunk she dances and makes a salam to us march second the rani's little girl has been ill with a touch of bronchitis and as soon as she was well enough we started for awa the home of the rani's mother about two hundred miles from jaipur i stopped in a rest house near the railway station while the rani and her suite went on into the country about eleven miles to her mother's place which is a small native state yielding a yearly income of about two lakhs of rupees the state was much larger at one time but through constant warfare with other states several villages and much land have been lost the third day after the rani left me she sent for me to come out and spend one day and night at her mother's house so a carriage and pair was sent for me with an ox cart for my luggage there was also a rath for my women servants and a camel for the men we had a pleasant ride and in due time reached the little city of awa consisting of a fort a large hindu temple the palace and about three hundred houses built mostly of stone we were taken to the fruit garden where we found tents pitched for me and my servants very soon everything was nicely arranged for housekeeping and comfort my cook made a charcoal fire in the little furnace which we always carry with us and in a few minutes brought me a cup of tea so refreshing after the ride in the heat and dust the next thing to be done was to send my salams to the rani and her mother to let them know that i had arrived and my messenger soon returned with the request that i would come to them in the evening food was sent from the palace to be cooked by my servant for my breakfast 
a messenger came for me in the afternoon and i went to the palace where i found the rani in full dress seated in the court with a crowd of women attending her it was her brother's birthday and twenty-four guns were fired in his honor he came to be introduced to me the rani's mother her father's sister her brother's two wives and other women were then introduced and after this ceremony we all sat down and looked at each other the brother said that it was very kind of me to pay them a visit and the rani's mother said you have become a mother to my daughter i replied that in one way i had but that she was the true mother the young wives did not speak but looked at me with their hands over their mouths they were richly dressed and sparkled with jewels and gold lace their husband excused himself to go and hold a reception for his gentlemen friends who had come with presents for him some brought money others fruit at eight o'clock my dinner was sent the rani asked if i would eat there where we were sitting and when i told her that i did not like to eat before so many i was asked to go up three flights of stairs to a very pretty room where a little table was brought in and my tray of food was brought and placed upon it i sat upon the floor washed my hands and began to eat a crowd of women came to see me use a knife and fork for these necessities are as much a curiosity to them as some of their customs are to us my dinner consisted of twelve or fifteen different dishes prepared by my cook these people put so much red pepper in their food that i cannot eat it and for that reason i prefer to have my cook prepare my meals another large tray of food was sent up to me from their cook-house for which i expressed my thanks and then it was taken away soon after finishing my dinner i begged leave to withdraw to my tent promising to call the next morning before leaving the next day i was up in good time ordered my breakfast and had my things packed for the cart and when everything was ready i drove up to the palace to bid the good people good-bye they gave me hearty greeting and trays of fruit were brought and placed before me and the rani's mother presented me with one hundred rupees in gold i refused them at first but consented to take them when i found that they would be offended if i did not this is a custom among wealthy natives march sixteenth there has been a great deal of sickness here since january and of late influenza has made its appearance i have had five cases this week the patients suffer such extreme pain that it keeps me busy nursing them as well as giving them medicine they live in small huts near us so i can go to them any time in the day when i am needed i am glad the hot weather is so near at hand the poor people have so few comforts in their homes that it is very hard for them when they are sick i hope this influenza will pass away with the cold weather i am having very good success with my cases the only trouble is that when they are first taken the pain in the left lung is so very severe that for about three days i am obliged to keep up fomentations and then when the crisis comes there is great prostration it is a difficult thing to tone up a patient with the poor food they have and there are their hindu restrictions about diet no meat no eggs no animal food of any kind i am planning to go seven miles out into the country to-morrow to the place where the state is building an artificial lake or reservoir for irrigating the fields in that vicinity there has been a great deal of sickness out there and i shall have a busy day many have died from pneumonia and influenza but the trouble is less than it has been miss pannell will go with me 
our cook will go out to-night with the things needed for our stay and will have our breakfast ready for us when we arrive we shall go out on our elephant leaving here about five o'clock in the morning for our two hours ride april third miss pannell and the parsi lady went with me to see the works at the reservoir and we spent the day there seventeen hundred people men women and children are at work digging the earth and there are twelve hundred animals also for carrying the loads it was a sight to see so many people at work digging and loading and the children driving the animals with their sacks of dirt hanging on each side of the animal like saddle-bags the rajah's secretary has built a pretty little house on the top of the hill near the works and we stayed in it and had our breakfast and afternoon tea and at five o'clock we mounted the elephant and had a pleasant ride home taking a different road from the one we took in the morning we found a number of sick people and i attended a good number of cases and tried to help all who seemed ailing in any way april twenty sixth we have had a slight shower to-day which has cooled the air and made it very pleasant this would have been a fine evening for a ride but the rajah has taken our elephant with him and has gone to attend a wedding about thirty miles away a little girl was married there three days ago and her people being wealthy they made the great wedding inviting hundreds of people the rajah and his staff went and for the wedding present they took one male elephant several horses and some jewels and money when the rajah's daughter is married these same people to whom these valuable presents have been given will be expected to give as much in value to him so their wedding presents are simply an exchange i believe that one hundred thousand rupees are to be expended on the wedding of this little girl may twenty second it is really a blessing to us to have eyes in this hot weather the rajah has a camel post to bring it from rewari seventy two miles and we have four pounds a day enough to cool the drinking water and give us ice cream twice a week yesterday we had jugged wild hare for dinner one of the takurs at the palace sends us one every week skinned and dressed ready for cooking we have plenty of musk melons and pineapples one hot evening last week we dined at the prime minister's the rajah and rani were there and about one hundred women we were all taken up on the house top which is a flat roof with a high balustrade around it so we were quite hidden from view here and there were small openings in the wall through which we had a fine view of the city and the surrounding country the gentlemen sat below in an open veranda and in the courtyard there were about two hundred of them but only certain ones were invited to dine i was requested to send my cook to prepare the food for miss driver and myself but i preferred to have it cooked at home and sent there to us we had a table by ourselves in one corner with our own women servants to wait on us our cook had made some ice cream for us which was better than all the food on such a hot evening the lady of the house sat with her other guests while we were taking our dinner about half an hour after dinner we begged to be allowed to leave thinking that the others would rather eat their dinner without us the rani dined at twelve o'clock and came home at three o'clock in the morning she must have been very tired for she was burdened with heavy jewels and sat in the midst of the women on a cushion to be gazed at the rani's baby made herself very attractive whenever she caught a glimpse of me she called out nani which means grandmother sometimes she wakes in the night and calls for nani she is a dear little one and very clever may twenty fifth 
i have had such pleasant news about one of our former schoolgirls she was the oldest and brightest among them but shy and modest when miss pannell was giving out the books the first morning of school she did not seem willing to take one but when the others had taken theirs she put out her hand slowly to receive one and miss pannell saw that she was crying a few days later when the girls had become a little accustomed to their white teacher miss pannell said to her naraini why did you cry when i offered you the book the other day oh miss sahiba she replied your hands are so white that i thought you might be a leper and i was afraid to touch it she was the daughter of one of the cooks at the palace and her marriage arrangement had been made with the house servant of a nobleman of another state and when she had been about two years in our school her husband came to take her to his home she had not been long in her new home before the nobleman's wife heard that she could read and sing and she sent for her to come to her naraini went and was asked to sing she sang one of our hindi hymns which pleased the lady so much that she had her come often to read and sing to her when she left school we gave her the books she had used and also a hymn book a gospel and other books among them the indian pilgrim on the plan of pilgrim's progress and religious wade both of which have been very helpful in mission work all over india and we are rejoiced to know that one even of our girls has such an opportunity to use the knowledge she gained with us to benefit others my word shall not return to me void but it shall accomplish that which i please said the lord end of chapter fourteen recording by shena sare fresno california chapter fifteen of a glimpse of india from the letters of dr clara a swain this librivox recording is in the public domain chapter fifteen a new companion ketri may twenty seven eighteen ninety my dear dr green i still feel that it was god's will for me that i should come back here it seems to me that my work for these people is not yet done i have much to encourage me the people are much more accessible than they were during my former stay among them they come to me in such a childlike way to be taught and to be cared for a hindu pundit called on me one evening and before he left he asked me to repeat to him the blessing that we ask before eating and when i had repeated it and explained why we use it he wrote it down and also wrote the little children's prayer now i lay me down to sleep the next morning he came again and brought it for me to read in hindi saying that he had translated it and would teach it to his five-year-old daughter several weeks ago i lent him moody's book on heaven which made a great impression on him he read it to some of his friends and some parts of it he read to the raja every one who has heard it seems to be favorably impressed a parsi gentleman to whom i lent it said that he liked it so much that he now wanted to read the life of christ he bought a gospel of matthew at a railway station and has read it with great interest he brought it to me and i opened it and read a few verses from the last chapter and told him that this was our lord's command to go to all nations and tell all people how they might be saved from sin and that this is the reason why missionaries leave their homes and friends and go to other countries to teach the people of christ and his love for the world he asked me if it was a sin for a person to change his religion this man really seems to be a seeker after truth i gave him a bible and marked some passages for him to read 
we are praying that he may find what his soul is hungering for will you not join us in prayer for him i do long so much for some one among these people to accept christ and become a worker among them we feel that there are several who might come out if only one of them would have the courage to start my dear friend and companion miss pannell who has been with me all the while until the last two months was obliged to return to barili as her mother is not well she will remain there until cold weather a lady from the church missionary society in agra is with me at present whose coming was providential as otherwise i might have been alone all through the hot season miss driver was a stranger to me but i find her a most desirable companion she was very desirous to come to me to take treatment for rheumatism she is a true missionary improving every opportunity to speak to and teach the children and the people she came to india from the mild may deaconess home in london where she had been a worker for several years a good preparation for work in india the good father remembers me in every way even before i ask the heat has been intense this week on monday the thermometer stood at one hundred nine degrees in the evening on the veranda and in the house it was ninety eight degrees the grass mats at the doors were kept wet and three large fans hung from the ceiling were kept in motion all the time the next day the thermometer on the veranda registered one hundred five degrees but to-day it is cooler as it rained last night and there was a high wind this hot season i have things more comfortable than ever before the rajah has made arrangements for ice to come from delhi for himself and us and he has camels out at eight different points from here to the rewari railway station every nine miles a man is stationed with a fresh camel this enables us to send to the station for bread and other things so we now have more variety in food the rajah and rani seem very happy their baby is such a little treasure to them her father takes great care of her and enjoys her clever little ways a servant brings her down to our house nearly every morning or evening when it is cool enough the dear little pet likes to come to see her nanny as she calls me july tenth i have had a number of patients to-day some very disagreeable cases from among the multitude of the unwashed but it is better to have work even if it is not very pleasant i must tell you of an outing we took on the day the rains began while i was in america the rajah built a house about seven miles from ketri on the top of a hill about fifteen hundred feet above the city he thought it would be a cool resort for his family in the hot weather he has several times suggested to us to go out and spend the day saying that we could stay there for a while for a change if we found it cooler we waited until we felt sure that the tiger and leopard that had been seen early in the season had disappeared and then decided to go out for a day the rajah had large fans put up in the room and grass mats hung at the doors and sent out everything that he thought we would need and gave us his secretary and two men on horses as an escort and twelve men six for each palki we also had their elephant but she could not go all the way as she was too tall to pass under the low branches of the trees on each side of the road our cook made arrangements for our meals and started on ahead in order to have our breakfast ready by the time we arrived we rose at three o'clock had our bedding rolled up and started the coolies off with their baskets and bundles and at five o'clock we mounted the elephant and set off with a train of men we had not gone far when suddenly 
a dark cloud appeared and a dust storm broke upon us we descended from the elephant as quickly as possible and got into our palkis and closed the doors when the wind quieted a little we told the men to go on but we had not gone more than a mile when down came the rain and we and all our things were thoroughly soaked so we turned our faces homeward by the time that we reached ketri it was bright and clear again and we began to wonder what we should do for breakfast as the cooking utensils and the food were all on the way to the country house after considering the matter we concluded to try again so the men were called and we started in our palkis we enjoyed winding around the mountain paths the scenery is exceedingly pretty and seemed new to me although i have been over this narrow road several times most of the way there is a steep precipice on one side and there are only two places where conveyances can pass each other we reached the house about ten o'clock with fine appetites and the cook soon appeared with the breakfast of a savory dish of mangoes and onions with rice after breakfast we inspected the house and courtyard and the surroundings the men had placed our cots under the fan in the large room and we donned our dressing gowns and laid down for a sleep but sleep would not come we had brought frances willard's glimpses of fifty years so we read a little of her spicy life to break the monotony for we were in the most lonely place one could imagine not a human being near except our company we even had to send two miles for drinking water you will not wonder that we concluded that we would rather stay in ketri in the heat we dined at five o'clock packed our things and sent them home and started on our return journey at six we had covered three miles of the road and were just entering the valley road when a terrible storm of wind and rain came upon us our men could not stand with the palkis so they set them down and guarded them on the lower side to keep them from blowing over the water came down the hill in torrents there appeared to be two streams one from the hills on the right and one coming down the road in front of us and they rushed along with such force that it seemed as if we must be swept away the secretary's horse had become frightened at the lightning and he had to dismount he ordered the coolies to take up the palkis and go on but they refused declaring that they could not carry them against the stream as it was the only thing to do i told the men that i would feed them well if they took us home safely and this put new strength into them they took up the palkis but it was almost impossible to get up the hill the water came down with such force we had only one lantern for the whole procession so we had to keep close together and pick our way the men were very careful and with thankful hearts we passed the dangerous places in safety i was reminded of the landslide in naini tal when we had to wade through the water on the roads and were carried across the mountain streams on our servants backs we reached home about nine in the evening and i gave out tea for all the men and coal for a fire to dry their clothes and they were made happy with a gift of ten cents each they seemed to think that the rain had served them a good turn we felt a little rheumatism for the next few days but neither of us was really ill all this made a change in our life but i do not care to have the same occur again while the rainy season lasts seventeen feet of water came into the new reservoir of which i wrote you today i have been giving a lesson in cooking to the prime minister's cook the man brought all the materials and i told him how to put them together the minister is ill and i have been treating him for about four months he has improved so much that i am hopeful of his full recovery nearly all of the hindus here show me great kindness even those who at first were opposed to my coming here i think it was just the thing for me to come back here for a while 
a brahman widow has just come in and sat down on the floor behind me she is saying over prayers on her beads and will continue her occupation until i finish my letter and here come the rani's little ones with all their servants so there will be no more quiet for me the children are both lovely dear baby is such a treasure october sixteenth i wonder if i have told you of our meetings here i began a sunday morning service in august two parsi gentlemen with their wives and children and a hindu gentleman formed our first congregation afterward others joined us so that now we have quite an audience for our first lesson i took the story of the creation and found that only one of the listeners with the exception of my own household had ever heard of the creation of the world and of mankind as we have it in our bible you can imagine how interested they were as i told the story of adam and eve in their purity of their sin and their punishment then of the promise of a redeemer the story of abraham's call and of his life and of his descendants becoming god's chosen people interested them very much we have had the genealogy of the christ the promised redeemer his birth and his early life last sunday we had a lesson on john the baptist who came to prepare the way for the christ and the story of christ's baptism and next sunday we will have the temptation and compare it with the temptation of our first parents the pundit said to me once i find that these bible lessons help me very much in my own religion at five o'clock every sunday afternoon we have a meeting for our servants and any others who will come and we use the same lessons that we had in the morning we have the men read the lesson and give us their understanding of it and after they have given us their thoughts about it we give them ours we teach them to sing and they enjoy our hymns there are three men among them who would make good teachers for their own people if they should become christians at seven o'clock miss pannell and i go up to the palace and have a meeting with the rani and her women sometimes these meetings are very interesting and sometimes quite discouraging it is hard for earthly royalty to submit to the requirements of the king of kings they require submission from their own subjects but their religion teaches them that they may do what they please their position in the world saves them the rani admits that this is not reasonable and i am trying to show her from god's word that there is no other way to be saved but by christ that he and he alone can forgive sin and make us ready for heaven we are praying that the holy spirit may become her teacher in this great mystery which has puzzled so many end of chapter fifteen recording by Shena Sayre, Fresno, California. Chapter 16 of A Glimpse of India From the Letters of Dr. Clara A. Swain This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 16 A Pilgrimage Ketri november four eighteen ninety my dear sister i would like to live in tents the most of the time in the cold weather it is such a good way to get strong yesterday morning we got up early to have our photographs taken on the elephant the photograph was a failure but we had a long ride which gave us a good appetite for our breakfast these rides are very invigorating miss pannell is back again so we are a family of three besides the parrot the dog four guinea fowls and a few hens we keep the fowls under high baskets in our front yard where a man stands day and night on guard not to watch the fowls only he is our regular watchman 
we have five men appointed for this duty who change every two hours day and night so we are never left alone for an hour yesterday was the anniversary of my sailing from new york twenty-one years ago we celebrated it by giving a party for our native lady friends and their children the rani came the prime minister's wife two parsi ladies each bringing one child and the pundit's wife and daughter with numbers of attendants with each lady we had all the drapery looped back so that our three rooms were thrown into one i sent to the palace for wall lamps to light the house every room was prettily decorated with flowers and the verandas were enclosed with tent walls and were furnished with floor cloths chairs and the organ miss driver had planned some games for the entertainment and we had the band outside to play at intervals when we wished for the two parsi ladies and ourselves we had tea and cake the parsis have no caste prejudice so they eat with us pan rolled in silver leaf was prepared by a brahman for the rani and the other hindu ladies we had a very pleasant time and the ladies enjoyed it exceedingly it was such work to receive them and send them away all the men servants were banished until we got them under a cloth canopy into their conveyances the last one went away about eleven o'clock this morning i distributed sweets among my servants and a few others who do us little favors and bring us flowers sometimes it is customary on such occasions to give to the servants also but i had not the time to do it yesterday a great many hearts have been made happy these little acts bring us nearer to the people and cause them to feel the interest we have in them our sunday services are well attended and some of the people manifest considerable interest agra wednesday december twenty third miss panel and i left khetri over a month ago our camp is in jaipur but we are expecting the rani and family here in a few days in the meantime i have been visiting some of my old friends in the mission at kanpur lucknow and bareilly and i attended the camp meeting at chandausi now i am here with my former student monsieur berry the rajah and rani have started on a pilgrimage to benares calcutta and jagannath i am hoping that they will be willing for us to remain here while they make the journey we have had a most interesting time in khetri since i wrote you last a very clever religious devotee from lahore spent some time in the city giving instruction in his religion then good old andreas a converted devotee who accepted christ twenty-six years ago came here on my invitation and remained with us a while he came filled with the spirit ready to give his experience and tell the people why he became a christian we had a meeting on our veranda every morning and at evening he preached in the city and sometimes spoke in the palace on sundays we had service morning and evening in our house and the rajah and his men came every one liked the old man though at times he spoke very plainly about the idol worship of the hindus he sang and played on a native instrument and his singing of christian hymns was very effective and brought tears to many eyes andreas was with us two weeks and gave the gospel with power to many hearers the lahore priest had left before he came for which i was sorry as he might have been interested in this good man's experience we shall continue our services as usual when we return to khetri and i trust there may be some permanent results 
three of our best servants are with us here and all of them are interested in reading the bible christmas day i wonder how you are spending this christmas day we have been to the english church and heard a good sermon and joined in the communion service it is a mission church and the clergyman is a plain earnest christian and a good preacher miss yerbury has a great many presents from her patients today christmas cards trays of fruit and vegetables besides other things of greater value the presentation of a tray of fruit or vegetables is an oriental custom and is a very easy way for the poor people to express their respect and gratitude for medical attendance when they are not able to give a fee for the doctor's services calcutta march one eighteen ninety one we have traveled many miles since we left agra and already we have been twenty days in calcutta when the rani's first child was born the parents made a vow that she should be taken some time during her childhood to jagannath below calcutta to have her head shaven this religious act had been deferred much longer than the parents intended for the little girl is now about seven years old and the rani began to think it time to fulfill their vow they wished also to visit some of the ancient hindu shrines which they could easily reach on their way to calcutta a number of poor people of the state who expressed the same desire were invited to go with them and others who would be company for the rani there were altogether two hundred persons including the servants we left agra early in january going first to allahabad the capital city of the northwest provinces and one of the sacred bathing places of the hindus where we remained four days all the men of the party went to the river to bathe and have their heads shaven a number of them became ill with colds and fever and some with pneumonia and for a while i had many sick people to care for from allahabad we journeyed to benares the sacred city of the hindus all over india it is a city of temples and places for the pilgrims who throng the city every day of the year i stayed at the government rest house and the rest of the party went into the city among the temples and near the river ganges the rani became very ill here several of the company after bathing and worshipping in the temples asked permission to return to khetri and the remainder of the party took the train for gaya the ancient centre of buddhism now in ruins the celebrated buddhist temple is the one thing of interest there our stay was only of a few hours then we came to calcutta we are stopping in a wonderful house which will accommodate more than five hundred people it cost six hundred thousand rupees it is built like two houses joined in the middle with a large open court for each and a fine veranda on all four sides i am in the second story which is like the one below the rani's rooms are opposite mine and the raja and his suite occupy the lower rooms there is only one shrine which they wish to visit here the prime minister and another official have gone to jagannath to take a lock of hair to present before the idol which will take the place of the child's visit and the shaving of her head the rani has not enjoyed the shrines she says they are such filthy places i think her faith in all these things is much shaken in one way it has done her good she realizes how very little she has gained in comfort or satisfaction after all their trouble and expense she has never required me to accompany her to any of the shrines in each city i have either stayed with friends or at the government rest house and have had a pleasant time i have been to visit miss knowles here you remember she came out to india with me i have also dined at bishop thoburn's 
Yesterday, the Rani went in a closed carriage to the temple of Kali, a few miles from Calcutta. On her return, I asked her if she had a pleasant time, and she replied, No, I stayed just so long, measuring on her finger. She said the place was so filthy that she could not go in but turned away at once and got into the carriage, saying that she was quite ready to return. She was disappointed too in what she saw in Allahabad. At Faizabad, she invited me to go with her to the bathing ghat. The place was enclosed, but the water was so muddy that she would not bathe, but she said that her little daughter might bathe if she wished. Agra, March 9, 1891 Our trip to some of the shrines of the Hindus was quite interesting in a way, and the journey has done me much good. If I were a Hindu... I should probably think I had been cured of all my infirmities by my visits to these idol temples. We were twenty days in Calcutta, then returned to Agra, and shall probably leave this week for Khetri. The Rani is living in another house at a little distance from us. One evening, Miss Yerbury gave an at-home in her honor, and there were twenty ladies present. The rooms were beautiful with an abundance of flowers and the table decorations were lovely. The Rani enjoyed it all very much. She came into the room where we were taking refreshments but of course could not eat with us. Some fruit was provided for her and was sent to her carriage to be taken to her house. Today we are to have a picnic in a lovely garden in which is a celebrated tomb. As this is a government holiday, Miss Yerbury does not go to her dispensary, so we take the opportunity to have a day out of doors. The air is delightful just now, but we shall be glad of the shelter of a big tree at midday when it will be much warmer. 10th We had a fine time at our picnic yesterday. There were six of us, two young clergymen, three lady doctors, and a married lady. The garden is outside the city and borders on the river Jumna. It is a pleasure garden with beautiful lawns and flowers and with the number of masonry platforms arranged for picnic parties. We sat on a carpet spread on the lawn and had our refreshments, and when it was cool enough, we had a game of badminton, which is an especially good exercise for ladies in this climate. Our whole party was invited to dine in the evening with another lady doctor who has just come out from Ireland to join the Lady Dufferin Hospital here. I am getting rather tired of this long holiday away from my home and my work, though it is very pleasant here and I always enjoy coming to Agra. Ketri, April 6, 1891 We arrived here March 29th after four months of travel, staying at rest houses or visiting friends. It seems good to be at home again. Miss Driver and I are trying to divide up our time so that none may be wasted, for we want to make the best possible use of each hour of the day. We have begun the Chautauqua course of reading and shall spend an hour together each day with this. Then we have Geeky's Life of Christ, two volumes, which we hope to read for an hour each evening. With this and our Bible readings, teaching the servants, my dispensary work and city visits, and the many visits to the palace, I shall not have much time to be lonely. I have not mentioned the hour or two each day that must be given to writing. Then the bath and meals must have their time, and there are frequent callers from among the people around us. There ought to be time for going out for an airing and exercise too. Eighteenth, I have had quite an interesting clinic at the dispensary this morning. A woman came to me who said she had no children. I asked her how long she had been married, and she said 
five years have you never had a child i asked oh yes she replied i had a child four years ago but it died then i asked her age and she said she was fifteen years old fifteen years old five years married and had a child when she was eleven years old i told her that she was not old enough to be a mother she thought it very hard that i should turn her away without doing anything for her on saturday a little hindu woman came in from the country to be operated on for ascites i performed the operation and took away four gallons of water from her i found that she had an ovarian tumor but as i had no assistant i could not operate for that though i was sorry to let her go out of my hands without the second operation in the afternoon miss driver and i went out on the elephant to make calls in the city i am sure you would have been amused to see us mount a new pad had been made for her which brought our howdah up so high that we had to have a longer ladder than usual and such a tip as we had when she rose on her feet we hung on as well as we could and had a good laugh over it afterward we had some very pleasant calls on the native people at one place the man of the family we called on seemed very friendly and the next day he returned our call and said his wife might come to see us some day if i would send my palki for her may fifteenth our nearest neighbor brought his only daughter over to our veranda to see me this morning her nose had been pierced by a hindu jeweler in order to have her marriage jewel inserted i applied cocaine to lessen the pain but the child cried and screamed most pitifully she is not yet six years old but the first marriage ceremony has been performed she is now allowed to wear a skirt and chatter and looks like a miniature woman up to the day of the ceremony she wore a little jacket and drawers and a cap like a boy she will now be taught to read and write on tuesday of this week the rani and her children and another native lady spent the evening with us by looping back the curtains our three well-lighted rooms were thrown into one and the place looked really fairy-like lacking only one or two fountains and some flowers to make it truly oriental the rani was very cheerful and enjoyed her visit we showed her books and pictures and miss driver played on the organ and amused the children with games the pundit had tea made for the rani at his house and sent it in and it was served to her on a small table by one of her own servants we sat at another table in the same room to drink our tea and it seemed very sociable this is the coolest season for this time of the year that i have ever experienced in india the people say that it is unfavorable and we shall have drought for only a normal hot season is followed by plentiful rains there is now very little water in the wells and the people in the city suffer from lack of water those who come to the dispensary these days are filthy for they have no water for bathing june seventh we had a most interesting bible class yesterday six nationalities were represented and we used the bible in bengali urdu and english for our congregation included a bengali parsi hindu and six or seven goanese besides miss driver who is english and myself an american our lesson was the eleventh chapter of matthew when we came to the last three verses the invitation of jesus i told them that the invitation was for them and for all people of all nations today just as it was for the people to whom jesus spoke they were quite touched and when i explained about the rest 
which Jesus gives and the burdens which we all carry, until we accept the invitation and take upon us his yoke, which is easy, they seemed to take it in and get a fresh inspiration. At evening we had service in Hindi on the veranda for our servants and others, and seventeen persons were present. Six children also came in, and they helped nicely with the singing, which they always enjoy. They are quite as attentive to the lesson as the older listeners. Some of our servants take as much interest in the service as they would if they were converted men. One of them reads his Bible every day, but he has not declared himself a Christian. It is a hard step for these people to take, for it separates them from their families and all their old associates, and often it means to them literally giving up everything for Christ's sake. June 16th My dear H., the Raja and Rani have just completed the marriage arrangement of their youngest daughter, who is two and a half years old. The boy is five years old. It seems too bad that she should be given away so early, but the people have their own customs. She will remain with her parents till she is fourteen years of age. Then the marriage ceremony will take place and she will go to her husband's home. The cost of this first part of the marriage arrangement, which we would call the betrothal, was 18,000 rupees or $6,000. We returned from our winter tour on the 29th of March and had our house cleaning done, carpets taken up, cleaned and mended, when just as they were down again and the house nicely settled, the hot winds began to blow and everything was covered with sand and dust again. The carpets are only stamped cotton cloth, but they look very well when they are clean. Would you like to know what we had for breakfast this morning? I wonder if you will appreciate it. First, there was a curry of mangoes and cucumbers cooked in butter with spices. This we ate with boiled rice, and it was delicious. We had bread nicely toasted and finished our breakfast with a fine musk melon. I feel sorry for you poor people in America who cannot get anything to equal our curry. I get up about five o'clock every morning and go out in a bullock cart for exercise. The conveyance has no springs and the roads are rough and stony, so you can imagine what a jolting I get when the bullocks run. It does me good, however, and gives me a good appetite. I went down to the gardens this morning for my early ride and found that the grapes, both purple and white ones, are nearly ripe. They are very abundant. July 18th I had intended to have a birthday party for a few native ladies and to give a dinner to the Rani, but it is so hot that I have decided to wait until the rains come and then celebrate. The Mohammedans are earnestly praying for rain. A few nights ago, my cook with a number of others went away to the top of a steep hill some miles distant and remained all night praying that the rain might come, and this week they went out into the jungle on the same errand. Today, the Mohammedans are observing one of their festivals, the Bakhar Eid. A male goat is sacrificed in every family that can afford it, and after it has been offered in sacrifice, it is divided among the friends of the family and portions given to the poor. This festival is in remembrance of Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac. The Rani's eldest daughter is here reading her English lesson to Miss Driver. She is quite clever and is getting on fast in her studies. After her lessons are over, she learns a verse of scripture and she is learning to play on the organ and sing hymns. She has quite a talent for music and loves it. It will be a great boon to her when she goes to her future home, 
where she will live in seclusion. She sees the difference between the teaching she gets from us and what she learns from their books, and often gives her opinion about it. One day she said, Miss Sahiba, our books are not good like yours. I spoke to the Rani a few days since about Bai's lessons and said, Rani Sahiba, Bai can never be a sincere idol worshipper. She has learned too much about our religion for that. The Rani replied, I know that, but your religion is good. Twentieth. We had an interesting service yesterday morning. The lesson was the 17th chapter of Matthew, the story of the transfiguration. All seemed interested, but a Parsi gentleman was particularly attentive. The service lasted an hour and a half. After the lesson, anyone is at liberty to ask questions, but we do not enter into any argument. The natives are very fond of argument, and if they begin, I tell them they must argue with men, not with me. The wife of a native gentleman, who attends our meetings occasionally, said to me one day, My husband is a much better man since he began to come to your meetings. He treats me better and does not get angry at little things as he used to do. We see a change in others too. There were twenty-five present at the evening service. We explained the ninth chapter of Matthew and sang a number of hymns. Five men from the native band brought their instruments and played a hymn which they had learned through the week. Some of them could read so I gave them a Hindi hymn book and they promised to learn more hymns. I have sent to the Mission Publishing House in Lucknow for Bibles, tracts, and other books, for I like to keep a supply on hand to distribute to those who would like them. It is really wonderful to be able to work so freely among them, to have them ask for books, and to be willing to come to hear and be taught by us. There was a slight rain last night, which has cooled the atmosphere a little. The thermometer stood at 122 degrees in the sun yesterday, and it must have been 110 degrees in the house. September 19th Another Saturday has come round, and I am reminded that a letter for you should be on the way to Bombay. The time seems to pass more quickly each year of one's life. The days are never long enough for all that I wish to accomplish. We have had more rain since I wrote you, 16 inches in all. The average rainfall here is 24 inches. The fields are looking much better. Crops grow fast after a few showers, but it is too late for them to mature well before it will be time to sow again. Two or three crops are raised on the same land in one year. Just now, Miss Driver and I are especially interested in chickens. We have some fine large English hens, which are rare in this country. One has recently hatched five chickens, and another four guinea fowls, beautiful little creatures. We keep them in a cage on the veranda, and go out to feed them two or three times a day. A few nights ago, a snake, a cobra, killed four of the finest ones. We were sorry to lose them, but thankful that we and our servants escaped. Many persons have been beaten here this summer, and I have heard of only three that survived. A few nights ago, as we were retiring, the room seemed so close and warm that I opened an outside door, and there was a snake just ready to come in. There happened to be a stone on the veranda, and I threw it and cut the snake in two. Then I called the servants to find the head part which had fallen off the veranda. We felt rather nervous about going to bed, and I had all the cracks filled with paper before I could lie down to sleep. This was the third snake which has visited us lately. Miss Panel is visiting in Agra. She writes me, 
the twenty dacoits entered the boarding house of the medical class and stood over the girls with clubs raised and demanded their money one of the girls screamed and was struck with the club but the watchmen in the yard heard the scream and rushed in several of the men were injured and one constable was seriously injured and is in hospital but the dacoits got away it is always a dangerous time in india when there is scarcity of food so many are desperate through hunger and they steal and even take life we have never been troubled with thieves here i suppose the people think we have nothing of value the pundit who generally attends our bible class could not attend on sunday as it was the day for the hindus to feed the brahmans and their friends and as many poor people as they can afford to in remembrance of their deceased relatives toward evening he called to apologize for his absence he said he found the ceremony of feeding people in remembrance of his father and mother and other members of the family of great benefit to him for it reminded him that he too must die and it made him question himself about eternity i asked him if there was any idolatry connected with this ceremony for if not i thought it might be a good thing as certainly it must lead a person to reflect upon the past and remember those who had once been with him and it also reminded one of his own future life he replied yes there is a little idolatry connected with it when the food is ready we just offer it to god through one of our deities and this is the reason that i did not send you any of the food because i know that christians do not eat anything offered to idols the house is very quiet my pet dog lies beside me on the floor and the sparrows fly in and out bringing grass to build their nests which the servants carefully destroy every day and the sparrows as persistently renew end of chapter sixteen recording by shena ser cupertino california Chapter 17 of A Glimpse of India from the Letters of Dr. Clara A. Swain. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 17 Distinguished Visitors Ketri, October 3, 1891. My dear Miss G., this has been a lonely day and i should have felt it much more if my home mail had not come in with letters and papers which have filled up my spare time there were not many dispensary patients at the usual hour but all through the day someone has come for medicine a man came bringing a bright-looking young woman who has been insane since the birth of her child six weeks ago I could not go very near her, as she became violent every time I attempted it, but I gave some medicine, hoping it would do her good. I have had several bad cases to treat recently, but have succeeded in helping every one. Since my return, an especial blessing has seemed to rest upon my work. The English lady, Miss Driver, who is with me being treated for rheumatism, finds something to do for someone every day. She is always cheerful and happy, and her influence on the people who come to us and those who live near us is so good that she is really a valuable acquisition. She has a native woman to wait on her, a widow who has been accustomed to work in the fields like a man, she speaks a different dialect from ours and as we cannot understand each other's language we point and make signs and it is quite remarkable how quickly she comprehends she is very religious in her way she calls upon her god every time she sneezes and at night says over her prayers loud and strong 
and if she wakens, begins again. I succeeded in making her understand that her God can hear her just as well if she prays in her heart and does not make any noise to disturb us. She amuses us greatly. Miss Driver gave her a new skirt, and on Sunday afternoon she put it on and came into the room and danced all around, keeping time to her motions by playing a tune by snapping her finger joints. The Brahman widow, whom I told you about in a former letter, is still with us. She goes out to cook her food and worship, but returns at night and sleeps on the carpet by my bed. She is a tall, fine-looking woman and quite intelligent, but very bigoted. We improve every opportunity to teach her the truth and notice that she has more confidence in us than in any of her own people and believes what we tell her. There is certainly a change going on in her mind. One stumbling block with every Hindu is the fact that Christians kill animals and eat meat. This they consider a great sin, and they do not know how to accept the practice of it, even in a person who seems to them good in other respects. We have many talks with the widow on this subject. She says she has learned to pray to our God in her heart since she came to us. When this woman's husband died some years ago, she was persuaded to go to Brindaban where she entered upon temple life. This life is open to all Hindu widows. Some very respectable women who have plenty of means for their support have been induced to go to this city of temples and to give up all that they possessed on the promise that they will be cared for all their lives, not knowing that they were putting themselves in the power of the priests, but on finding what kind of life they were expected to lead, they would gladly have returned to their friends if they could get away or had any means of supporting themselves. For of course they could not recover anything from the priests who had induced them to come there. Not long since an aged widow came to the pundit's house to ask him if the Raja would not let her have a conveyance to get to her village about 14 miles from Ketri. She said she had been away from her home 17 years, traveling on foot with the help of her cane to many of the sacred shrines and eating whatever was given to her. Her clothing was in shreds and she seemed too feeble to move. The pundit told her to remain overnight and in the morning arrangements would be made to send her to her village. But in the morning she was found dead in the place where she had taken shelter. Instead of being carried to her village home, her body was carried to the burning ghat and cremated. Poor woman, she had thought to find rest for her soul by enduring self-denial and hardships, but all in vain. But all hearts are open to him who came to save, and he knows how strong was this woman's desire for salvation. October ninth, My dear M., we are staying at the city bathing tank for a few days. The Rani has been here for several weeks, but we came only three days ago, as the Raja, who had been staying here, has gone out into the country for a few days. Perhaps you remember the photograph of the tank which I brought home with me. It is a beautiful place. On the north are high hills well wooded, which are fresh and green since the rains and on the summit of the highest hill is the fort and an old palace which looks very pretty from here. The arches of our open veranda we have had hung with cloth so we are sheltered from the sun and yet get plenty of fresh air. 
our food is cooked in an open courtyard under a large neem tree. All our servants are with us, so we are well looked after. I attend my dispensary every morning, which is half a mile distant, and get back to my breakfast about ten o'clock. Our breakfast room is in a minaret just at the angle of two verandas. It is an octagon with open arches and it stands out in the water. We have a view of the whole tank and masonry surrounding it and of the hills. At evening, all the servants are sent away, the gates are closed, and the Rani comes out for a walk and sits with us for a while. It is lovely here at sunset. The hills are reflected in the water, and the sky is blue and clear with a few tinted clouds near the sun. I often wish for a painter's brush, or rather that I had a gift for painting and sketching. The change out here has done us all good, for we have been very sad for several days at the news that has come to us of two missionary ladies of our acquaintance who have developed leprosy. One of them is a member of our North India Conference who went home to America two years ago, and when she found that she had this terrible disease, came back to work among the lepers at a place out in the hills. The other is a German lady of the church mission in Agra. The doctors have advised her going to Germany, telling her that there is hope that the disease may be checked. October 28th We are having lovely cool weather now, and we feel quite invigorated and ready for work. On Saturday, we were out about seven miles from the city. Miss Pannell is with us again, and we all wanted her to see the new reservoir, which has been in process of building for three or four years past, and is just finished. We went in style as usual, though it was only for one day. We had a carriage and six horses. Miss Pannell and I rode in the carriage, and Miss Driver went in the palki, carried by eight men. Two Parsi ladies, members of my Bible class, rode on our elephant, and the pundit who had charge of our party rode beside us on a fine gray horse. Our cook, chaprasi, and water carrier were on a camel, and five coolies on foot carried our lunch basket, cooking vessels, rocking chairs and a small table on their heads and a basket with two jugs of filtered drinking water in their hands. The reservoir is a fine piece of workmanship. It was built by the pundit who accompanied us, who is an engineer as well. It covers several acres and receives the drainage of eight square miles. The dam is 60 feet high with a strong central wall. And just in the center on this wall is a beautiful little temple built for the worship of the goddess Debi. She was not to be seen on Saturday, so we went into her temple and sat down. After our dinner, we walked nearly a mile along the canal to see the water let into the fields, which is done by lifting a valve on the central wall which lets the water out from the reservoir into the canal for irrigating the fields. When we returned, we found the little boat ready for us to have a row, so we sent our carriage and other conveyances down to the lower end of the reservoir where we met them after our boat ride. We enjoyed the day very much. We came home in the evening and I rode all the way on the elephant. The air was so delightful and the peculiar motion of the elephant was just the exercise I seemed to need, so I preferred it to either of the other conveyances. November 28th Since I last wrote you, our little girl has been very ill with bronchitis, and I had an anxious time day and night 
until the dangerous stage had passed i had to stay at the palace the most of the time for the rani was so fearful that the child would not recover that she could hardly control herself she never saw any one die and when either of the children is ill she worries herself into a fever and it is almost harder to control her than to control the disease of the child i am thankful that the little girl came through all right she is improving every day and will soon be as well as usual if they take proper care of her the political agent of jaipur was here for two days this week the city was illuminated and the rajah gave a grand dinner in his honor we were invited and our cook had charge of the menu i advised him a little about what dishes to select and made the plum pudding myself boiling it over my oil stove he served soup fish meat entrees roast chicken roast lamb and vegetables a hot cheese course and plum pudding and for dessert a gelatine cream pudding almonds raisins oranges and small cakes the agent poor man has dyspepsia so was not able to do justice to such a dinner there were only three of us at table the guest miss driver and myself the rajah came in during dessert not to eat with us but simply to drink the health of his guest in a glass of light wine the agent returned the compliment and both made speeches as is the custom the table stood just beneath a great shining chandelier and was beautifully decorated with vines and flowers the agent is very easy and pleasant in manner and we greatly enjoyed the evening which ended with a fine display of fireworks the agent general is expected soon from mount abu also the civil surgeon of jaipur to inspect the dispensary in the city after their departure the rajah will invite a native chief the rajah of one of the rajputana states so Ketri will be very gay this cold season this is saturday and i expect a number of people to come to bible class tomorrow so i must stop writing and look over my lesson which is the twenty-fifth of matthew the parable of the virgins camp naranol january one eighteen ninety two my dear sisters a happy new year to you the rani's little girl has been quite ill again she seemed so much better on christmas eve that she was brought down to our house with her mother but she took cold and had a relapse so i have had my hands full our christmas entertainment was very nice i gave a dinner to the rani and her two children and invited three other hindu ladies and one mohammedan lady we enclosed the verandas with tent walls and spread the floor with clean white floor cloths they could not take their food with us in our dining room the veranda looked light and cheerful the rani sent her silver tray and silver dishes and her own table which she uses on grand occasions it had a light standing on each corner and vases of flowers stood between the lights on three sides she sat on her royal cushion of green velvet embroidered with gold and had another large one at her back of the same material she was in full dress which means delicate material and an abundance of jewels the tree for the children was very pretty our house was full there were others who did not take their dinner at our house to whom i sent raw material in the morning and they had it cooked and ate it before they came this is quite common among natives on christmas day we gave a dinner to fifty-four people including our servants two of our servants cooked the food and the people sat down in our yard in rows or companies according to their caste 
each brought his own cup and plate and the food was served to them by our servants it was a pleasure to see them eat one man ate four pounds he said he would not eat again until the next evening he is very poor and had not had a full meal in a month when i found how very poor his family are and that they had nothing to cover them at night i sent them a thick quilt at evening we had a short service and read saint luke's account of the birth of christ and told them why we kept the day and tried to make our friends happy after the service i distributed oranges and nuts to all i left ketri this morning at ten o'clock and have travelled twenty miles on my way to the conference which will meet on wednesday next at Kanpur. i have been tossed up and down for about eight hours for the first six miles i had a phaeton and six horses which with some difficulty pulled me through the sand for an hour and a half then i sent them back to ketri and mounted the elephant and rode four miles but the sun proved too strong for my head and i changed to the palki carried by men to this my first camping place ketri january twenty fifth we are having lovely winter weather a heavy rain has made everything look fresh and green and the oranges right from the trees are simply delicious i have just been out over the hills to see a poor little boy who fell into the fire his face and one hand and arm are badly burned i dressed the burns and hope he may live but i am doubtful about it on my way back i went into an orange garden and bought a quantity of large sweet oranges and had real pleasure in picking some of them myself i returned to ketri ten days ago after attending the north india conference the first conference of missionaries that i have attended since i returned to india the journey and the visit with old friends as well as the good meetings did me a great deal of good and gave me new inspiration for my work i brought back with me two young people children of dr scott one of the missionaries they were delighted with the journey and rode on the elephant nearly all the way from rewari mabel had never been in a palanquin so she wanted to try that for a few miles the raja and rani are pleased to have them here the rajah sent a horse and a gun for wilfred to use while he is here and the boy roams about the hills the most of the time on his shooting expeditions we all enjoy having them with us they are so bright and cheerful february twenty eighth the country is in sorrow over the death of the queen's grandson second heir to the throne the news of which reached india while the agent general was on his way to ketri and as the viceroy had ordered that all government officials go into mourning and that all entertainments be suspended this visit was a quiet one the only public function was the laying of the cornerstone of a reservoir which is being built for the benefit of the people of the city the agent thought he was justified in doing this as it is always the policy of the english government to care for her people in time of need a tent was pitched near the site of the reservoir and a stairway of mud beaten hard and whitewashed led from the street up to the tent which was on slightly elevated ground a red carpet covered the centre of the stairs and flags and flowers adorned the tent in one corner of which was a table containing all manner of good things to be served after the speeches and the laying of the cornerstone it was a very pleasant occasion and we enjoyed it very much particularly the speech of the agent general who is one of england's choicest men End of chapter seventeen 
Recording by Shanna Serre, Cupertino, California. Chapter 18 of A Glimpse of India From the Letters of Dr. Clara A. Swain This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 18 In the Mountains End Cliff, Naini Tal, May 7, 1892 My dear sister, We left Ketri on the 6th of April for this cooler climb. The heat was unbearable on our long journey to the railway station at Rewari. We remained in our tents during the day, traveling at night when it was a trifle cooler. I took a severe cold from using wet towels on my head, so that when we arrived in Barili, we were detained there a week, as I was afraid to come up into the cool air of the hills with such a cold. I stopped with the lady missionaries who are living in my old home, and while I enjoyed being in the old place, I was constantly reminded of the flight of time by the trees and shrubbery which I planted twenty years ago, which have grown so tall and large. The drives through the compound of forty acres are bordered with trees of different kinds, and the lovely flowers and creepers make the place beautiful. We took the early train from Barili to Naini Tal to escape the heat, and reached the foot of the Himalaya mountains at about six o'clock. Here we found any number of coolies ready with dandies to carry us up the hill, twelve miles, to Nainital. The Rani took a house for herself and us, and the Raja secured one near us for himself and his staff, so we are comfortably situated. The location of our house is beautiful. We are just on the spur of a hill, about 500 feet above the lake. We can see all of Nainital on the opposite side and also the whole length of the lake. The view is really charming, and the air is cool and delightful. Such a change from the plains is like being transplanted to another clime. The Rani has never been here before, and she enjoys the change and the lovely views. I purchased a field glass for her the other day, so she can sit by the window upstairs and see nearly all Naini Tal, and this is a great pleasure to her. We have divided the house so that we live almost as if each had a house to herself. In front of the Rani's apartments is a lovely rose garden which she has had enclosed with tent walls so she can enjoy it without being seen. On Wednesdays she receives calls from missionaries and other ladies. She is learning much here and will understand English ways and feel more at home with foreigners. It will do her no harm if she does not take on English customs and go into extravagances. I hardly think she will do this while living with us, for she admires our simple home life. We are all improving in health and hope to remain here until the rainy season begins. Several of our missionaries are here from the plains. The heat came early and so intense, and cholera as well, that many people were driven to the hills. A most fatal type of cholera has appeared in many cities of the plains, and so far, the cause has not been discovered. Miss Layton, who came out to India in January to take charge of the Kanpur English Girls' School in our mission, has just died of the dread disease. She was ill only thirteen hours and suffered terribly till death relieved her. There have been several other victims among the Europeans in different parts of India. We are thankful to be here, though we are not out of reach of cholera, for several natives near us have died of it. Our house is so high up that we get good air, and I am very careful about our food. Soon after I began to write, the Raja sent to ask me to come up to his house and show his servants how to arrange his drawing room. 
the lieutenant governor of the northwest provinces will visit him today a visit of ceremony at four o'clock i went up and found a couple of merchants there who had sent elegant curtains table covers rugs vases and handsome sofas with chairs to match i asked the men the price of the sofa and chairs and they said twenty five hundred rupees a few minutes later i saw a servant standing on this beautiful sofa driving a nail into the wall to hang a picture in the midst of all this elegance i began to work selecting suitable table covers for the tables and cushions for the chairs and sofa i sent for some plush or tapestry for the mantelpiece and in about an hour the room was as attractive as one could wish the governor's visit will not be a lengthy one and by nine o'clock this evening the most of these goods will be on the way back to the shops of the obliging merchants and the rajah will settle down to his simple camp style show with native royalty comes and goes like a breeze june twenty first we expect to go down to the plains in a few days if the rani feels well enough to travel we may take a house in bareilly or delhi for a time if that seems best i have found so much to do since coming up here that there has not been much leisure for letter writing several patients have been treated in their own homes and travelling on men's shoulders from place to place on these hills is slow work my life here in the hills is somewhat different from that in khetri for here besides my medical work and housekeeping i have social duties and the privilege of attending church services both english and hindustani tomorrow my old friend mrs hoskins is coming to spend the day with us she is in one of the mission houses across the lake and we often take a peep at each other through our field glasses the missionaries will soon be returning to their work on the plains for we hear that there have been some cooling showers but i think it is hardly safe to go from this cool climate until the rains have really set in i have a man sitting near me on the floor who is making a thin garment for me he measures and cuts and cuts and measures and i feel sure that if the length of time he takes over it will make it right the garment will fit perfectly barili july twenty five eighteen ninety two our stay of three months in naini tal is over and we are now on our way to mutra where we shall remain for a time i am sorry not to return to khetri where we left such an interesting work we were expecting to have a native minister there during the cold season and i was anticipating visiting several villages and camping among them as soon as the rainy season should be over and the weather would permit but under existing circumstances we may not be able to go home until march we had a very pleasant trip down the mountain for nearly a week on the way about four miles below naini tal there is a rest house situated in the midst of beautiful grounds with several waterfalls i came down the hill before the others and had two days and nights in this lovely place we all like it so much that we want the rajah to buy it for a summer residence if it can be purchased there are about forty acres of ground and three nice houses so there would be plenty of room for us all our next stop was at a traveller's rest house eight miles further down the hill there we remained twenty-four hours and mrs hoskins who had been with us at the former place came here with us and stayed until it was time for her to go on to kathgodam to take the train for bareilly kathgodam is at the base of the first hills and is a very pleasant place to stop for a while the railway company has a commodious rest house in the midst of spacious and beautiful grounds travellers can remain one month here by paying one rupee a day thirty three hundred and one third cents 
and can have a private table supplied by the regular cook of the establishment or they can take their own cook and have him serve their meals this is what we did we were at kathgodam until friday then came on to barili this evening we shall take train for mudra one of the holy cities of the hindus mudra july twenty ninth we are having fine rains and the country is looking fresh and green the people are happy over the prospect of a good harvest after a scarcity of grain for two years we hear that rajputana is having plenty of rain and i am sure there must be great rejoicing among the people for they have suffered much from the drought and many of their cattle have died from starvation we long to go back to Ketri, but cannot on account of the rani's health our home at present is in one of those oriental garden houses which we sometimes read about and see in pictures it is owned by a very rich man a banker who has so much money that he does not know just what to do with it i hear that he secretes large amounts in a temple which he has built sealing it in the stones of the floor or elsewhere and placing an idol over it which no one would dare to disturb so his money is safe from thieves when we arrived here i went to the government rest house for a few days as i thought it would be more comfortable but i was obliged to leave to make room for other travellers i now have upstairs rooms in the garden house eleven of them all to myself there is a veranda all around the house shaded by bamboo curtains or chicks as we call them here they keep the rooms cool and protect us from flies the rani leaves in rooms below would you like a description of my drawing room the room is very large and airy with fourteen doors there are three kinds of carpets two marble top tables standing against the walls with large mirrors hanging above them then there are two small chairs covered with green and pink cretonne and for comfort one large easy chair upholstered with striped blue and cream satin damask a round writing chair and a three-legged table on which i am writing complete the furnishings a staircase leads up to the roof where one can sleep at night if not afraid of monkeys coming to occupy the same bed we have been so troubled with one who seems to think he has a right to all in the house i found my dining-room in such confusion one day this creature had opened one of the cupboard doors taken out a lot of dish towels and strewn them over the floor and opened a box that was packed with table linen and dishes he disturbed everything he could until someone happened in then he ran away in a hurry he is not a bit afraid when i attempt to drive him away but comes at me to see if he can frighten me one of our guards sent me a gun to snap at him monkeys seem to understand that a gun is different from a club and they will run at the sight of one the men have succeeded in driving this creature off to the jungle but he has come back once so i live in constant fear and have to shut all the doors even though i go downstairs for a minute only the other day this monkey stole the dinner of one of the servants he took his bread and the brass dish containing vegetable curry and running up to the top of the house sat down and ate it all and then threw the dish back to the man i have been tempted to poison the old fellow but cannot make up my mind to do it he seems so human i wish i could have you and a few other friends here to-day for a picnic in our lovely garden the walks the trees of many varieties and the hedges are so green and pretty a delight to the eyes there are palms cedars and fruit trees some loaded with luscious fruit and the rose trees and jessamine shrubs with their white star blossoms are lovely this afternoon i am invited to take supper at the training school and deaconess home a fine institution mutra is a large hindu city very well built and quite populous but the people seem as hard as the street pavement it is a difficult mission field still the missionaries are doing good work among certain classes 
yesterday i went with one of the mission helpers to brindaban six miles from here if you look into my book on mudra and brindaban you will get a description of the place and of the temples some of which are unusually fine works of art we visited all of the finest ones also some of the famous bathing ghats and then went to the little rest house belonging to the mission had breakfast and after a little rest returned to mudra on the train it rained very hard on the way home and i took a carriage to our place which is quite two miles and a half from the station the main street in the city was like a river and the water ran so swiftly that i was thankful to get through it and reach home in safety we expect to go to agra on friday to live in the same house we had before agra august thirty eighteen ninety two we are again in the old government house now owned by the maharaja of jaipur who has given us the use of it for the present it is very commodious and is more convenient for our large party than any we could get in mutra it will accommodate one hundred people this is a beautiful place the grounds cover about one hundred and fifty acres and the fine old trees are very beautiful just now in the rains the parrots and the peacocks lay claim to the trees as their home it is a pretty sight to see them fed the servant spreads a cloth on the ground and throws grain upon it and the birds seem to understand that it is their dinner time and they come in crowds it is impossible to count them but there must be hundreds of them the parrots are very beautiful in their raiment of green and gold they are all wild parrots not a tame one among them the maharaja of jaipur allows four rupees worth of grain a month for feeding the birds and he thinks he is doing a very charitable thing life on the plains is to me very enjoyable in the rainy season especially so now that i have had such a time of refreshing in the cool delightful climate of naini tal which has so invigorated us all have i told you that we have a flourishing methodist church there they have excellent preaching and the weekly bible readings are interesting and profitable the interest in bible study is as great i think on this side of the world as in america christian work among the natives grows in importance there has been of late a large gathering into the church from among the low castes among the heathen they are more accessible than the higher classes i have been promised a native preacher to go with us when we return to ketri we have had an encouraging work there for some time a season of seed sowing which i hope may result in an abundant harvest ere long agra september thirtieth the rainy season is over and we are having bright sunny days our camp meeting in lucknow began yesterday i thought i should attend it but have given it up as there is so much sickness and fever there i should not like to run the risk of being ill while the rani is so dependent on me she is keeping pretty well for her the raja is expected to arrive in a few days we are acquainted with the missionaries of the church of england here and also with those of the baptist and methodist missions every monday we meet with one of the missionary family for bible study and on thursday evening we have a mission prayer meeting and a league meeting on friday evenings sometimes during the week we are invited to an evening dinner with our friends my little class of boys come regularly every morning to learn the lord's prayer and the ten commandments one of our servants gives them a lesson for half an hour in the hindi first book a sad case of illness has occurred on our grounds a sick woman was brought to some of her friends living here she had been ill with fever and had lost the power of speech my cook begged me to go to her and i gave her some medicine promising to see her again but that night her friends experimented with their own terrible remedies they said she was not sick but was possessed by an evil spirit so they took strong red pepper and burning sulphur and held it to her nose obliging her to inhale the fumes while they beat her with a thick cord
the poor woman suffered severely and screamed with pain which encouraged her tormentors who said the evil spirit was leaving her i went in to see her last evening and found her lying on the floor alone her husband had gone to call a man who was renowned for his power to cast out evil spirits and had left word that she was not to have medicine or food lest the evil spirit should be made comfortable and remain in her her friends say that the evil spirit was driven out but we believe that the lord heard our prayers for her and relieved her she is an attractive young woman and i do hope her people may get wiser before she is ill again the rani's little girls are learning nicely with miss driver they are reading the bible with her and the older one has learned so much of the scriptures that i hardly see how she can ever be an idol worshipper her father came for a few days visit lately and after talking with the children a little he asked by what she was learning she answered the bible he asked do you read about jesus christ yes some said by and who do you think he is asked her father she replied the bible says he is the son of god how could god have a son he has no wife said the rajah and bai answered god made all the world could he not make a son for himself if he wanted to then the rajah asked her are you going to be a christian i am not a christian she replied but the bible is a good book and i like to read it after a little more talk the rajah went away but he came again in the evening and calling bai to him said do not read the bible any more I do not wish you to read it bai began to cry and came to tell us that her father said she must not read the bible any more we prayed over the matter and left it for god to settle when the rajah came the next day the dear little girl went to him and said father do not hinder me from reading the bible and she began to cry the rani was present and she spoke saying that bible is a very good book i read it myself sometimes when i am in trouble and i get great comfort from it let bai read it it will do her no harm after a few minutes of silence the rajah said well bai you may read the bible but do not read about killing cows nor much about jesus christ and so the matter was settled agra october eighteenth i was just closing my writing case when i suddenly remembered that this is home mail day and i must send you a letter i have been writing since early this morning stopping only long enough to take my breakfast and it is now nearly twelve o'clock my letters accumulate so fast that i find myself quite behind with my correspondence there is no end of letter writing in india nearly all business must be done in writing as a verbal message is not accepted from a native servant if i want a spool of thread even i must send a note to the storekeeper asking for it you see we are still in agra but we must leave this house as the maharaja of jaipur wishes to come here for a time and though there are numbers of vacant rooms not immediately connected with those we occupy it would not do for him to come while we are in his house we have rented a fine large house with fourteen rooms and are having the rooms whitewashed and put in order for us we shall have to rent furniture but that is easily done we are sorry to leave this beautiful house and grounds i have a nice class of boys to teach who live here on the premises and there are many sick people on the grounds and nearby who have called me to attend them i am sorry to give them up and my morning clinics will not be so large in the new place the poor woman of whom i wrote you in my last letter died after suffering greatly from the treatment by her friends the mission bible class met with me on monday evening there were eighteen present we finished the book of jonah which has been quite an interesting study among those present were two baptist ministers one methodist and three church of england clergy with ladies from each mission 
we had a very pleasant and profitable meeting and a social time afterward over the tea and cake just now the lord bishop of calcutta is here i went to the confirmation service on tuesday in the english church when thirty young women and men were confirmed all natives it was a solemn and interesting occasion end of chapter eighteen recording by shenna sir fresno california